It's Sunday in the CDL, and we've got three major matches to close out your weekend. First up, the Royal Ravens with veteran leader Clayster and the explosive oh, wow. rookie win. They try to bounce back against the surge. Next, it's Boston versus Minnesota, and the Rocker are hungry for a win. But the Breach fans are putting their faith in a team who's just been called back up to the big leagues. And our final match is bound to be a banger. Atlanta Faze going up against the New York Subliners. Two top teams battle it out in our Monster Energy matchup. start the show. Alley Cat, can we squash the beef or at least settle the score here? Does country music suck or not? Oh, God, it's pretty bad. 
You right, guys we had a little green room discussion. Haters, now that that's bro. out of the way, we can talk Call of Duty. Name was how you feeling today? Feeling pretty good. You know, I had a green room vibe into some country music this morning. Some Vibing is not the word. Not the word, now we're, bro. Now not we are ready word. to watch some Call of Duty. We got some good matches today, too. And LA Thieves put on a show for everybody in Los Angeles last night. They started hot. You saw Ghosty screaming after game one, but this series wasn't over until round 11 of the search. I think that my favorite thing about that player cam is how calm Nasty is throughout that entire entirety of the chaos of everybody getting on their feet, but that round 11 was insane. We actually got the opportunity to talk to Dan afterwards because he was the lone man on the A site having to fend against the entirety of the Miami Heretics team trying to get this bomb down. So it was a banger of a series if you want to go watch it. Yeah, I thought there was some high-level search and destroy. We get to that game five, and, you know, some as of late, teams are just getting cooked when they get to that game five. Well, no, there were some big adjustments. I think Heretics a little bit too late started to, on their offenses, send Javi out, Vickle, by himself on an island to pick people apart before they could retake. And it was working wonderfully until the last round where Ghosty just finds two huge kills in the plane. And you can see how much this match actually meant to the LA Thieves camp. They've been winless for so long. They get that W, sort of vindicating the, uh, the roster changes they and I love Nate Shot tweeting as well. We won a game five round 11. This means we're winning champs, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Thieves yeah. on the right track. Finally, out of the last position on our leaderboard, they are now currently in 11th. Another team that's climbing on that right side of our leaderboard is the Vegas Legion, who pulled off two victories in their first two matches before falling yesterday. But in those wins, Nero looked like he's back. Attached was playing lights out. This squad is vibing. This is not consistency for Nero at this point, right? Like, we always knew he was capable of that explosiveness. It was just about how many times can he do it back to back. And so far, the franchise of Vegas Legion finally having a 2-0 start for the first time in history in qualifiers. But they are going to fall to Toronto Ultra. But they did have a crazy real search and destroy. And this wasn't the only reverse sweep. Optic Texas had a reverse sweep of their own. They're not often in this position, Nameless, but this one was fun to watch. Yeah, you know, they've been playing some wild Call of Duty. I'm sure they're ready to get some good night's rest and just chill after these nail biters that they've had, especially the controls. But this series, best series of the stage, definitely, possibly of the entire year. Really testing the mental of both these squads. We get to that game five, though. Optic was like, there's no way in hell after these last two matches we're losing this game five, and they've been looking good on Karachi SD. But we got to tip our hats to Minnesota, man. They still look damn good throughout their two seasons. And they're crushing it on social. There is the reaction after choking in map three. And they had the vivid pose ready to go. Falling in that game five, Rock are still 0-2 in our major two qualifiers. But the good news for Minnesota, you got Linz on the team. The rookie of the year candidate, the front runner in a lot of people's opinions right now. Alongside vivid accuracy and awakening. And when this squad was put together, no one said, oh, this is a sexy lineup. But Ant, you said this team has a lot of potential. Yeah, they have a ton of potential, right? It really just sort of relied on the fact of how good Linz was going to be. Yeah. Because the rest of these guys sort of proven commodities. And then we see Linz, who's actually disgusting yeah. this team has real potential it's just like will they be able to get over that hump to be a championship caliber team we already know they're very good but it's at the end of these games they've been folding a little bit so i'm ready for minnesota rocker to sort of take that next step and i really chris i think it hinges on awakening becoming a superstar okay. once again he has been solid don't get me wrong they can win games with him but if he gets the superstar level once again they can win a championship i truly believe that and this guy a big reason why I mean, he's leading the entirety of the Minnesota Rocker team right now when it comes in terms of KD overall. And when they brought, you know, Awakening and Vivid into this roster, Giga is supposed to be that high Slayer rating and unfortunately hasn't found his footing yet in this game. So for Linz, he's still running in for that rookie of the year, but he needs the rest of his team to step it up to help him out. Yeah, you can't have the guy who's your entry player also leading in KD. It's probably the guy who wants to be second or maybe last They've one who's doing that. In the meantime, let's keep rolling about their opponents. They're playing against the Breach, who have had ups and downs. Let's talk about the good side of things, though, for the Breach. You made some roster changes of your own, and with the seam in the lineup, he gets revenge over the Royal Ravens in his very first match. Yeah, you know, Boston, I think even with the last iteration of the roster, they probably would have beat Carolina, given how everybody played. A seam definitely played very good. On the high-rise control was ball out of control, making huge plays for spawns in the invasion hardpoint. It was a great debut match, but they go up against the New York subliners, and you're hoping with the roster change that Boston made, that they were going to be able to contend with some of the better teams in the league. They got cooked. Oh, yeah. It was not close. So for Boston Breach, they still have a long ways to go before we consider them one of our top six teams. 
Yeah, that match versus New York Subliners, to go back and watch it, I mean, like Ann said, it wasn't close at all. In fact, even in that skid row, Boston had the lead for quite a bit, and then New York just changed back-to-back -back hills about four at near the end. Yeah. But I will say for the Breach, I do love their roster change. I think there's a lot of potential, and they're definitely an underdog team currently when it comes to the top four. And you don't remember, slay again. those stats after the Carolina match, way better than the stats after the Subliner match. Because yeah. let's talk about New York, one of the teams that has faced off against three opponents so far, and they're perfect. It hasn't been easy. They had a reverse sweep to kick off things against the Royal Ravens, and since then, they have been nearly flawless. If you watch their most recent performances against the Surge, I mean, Subliner's total command of that series. And then, of course, outside of the first two minutes against Boston, it was the Subliners the whole way through. Yeah, since the beginning of this uh, split, it's just been New York of old, what we expected at the beginning of this season. I will say the only thing I'm kind of waiting for is Priest has been really strong struggling in the search and destroys, and that's been hurting them in these series, uh, especially when they have to go up against a Titan in Atlanta phase today. This is going to be a prove-it ground for them because they want to be considered a top team. They're kind of in everybody's top four with the way they've been performing right now. But Toronto and Atlanta have created this kind of separation between them and the rest of the league. And today, I think New York's going to try and battle their way into that conversation. I totally agree with that. I think we need to see New York versus a uh, top team now. They've made, I mean, they've made some strides for it. Don't get it twisted. But they've been cooking some bums. I mean, Boston Ooh, yeah. and the roster change. Seattle, who's made a roster change to bring in Brezzi. So I think for New York, they are trending upward, but this match today will tell us everything we need to know about our world champ. If New York is going to win today, we good. hope to hear their comms as fun as they were in their most recent battle against Boston. Let's sit in with Skies and crew. Nice. Oh my god, papi. Great job on me somewhere. Papi? I'm going right. I'll tell you what, Skies is vibing. It starts with uh, what the opening comp is. You're a bad boy. Then he's gassing Hydra, who's on six in a row. They are ripping and roaring. Guys, we got an incredible listening in that map number three. Do you mind telling us who on your team uh, is, is Poppy, I think I heard correctly? <laughs> uh, Paquito. Paquito's my papito. <laughs> I, love nah, I don't know. Uh, you, we usually thrive whenever we're like in a goofy mood like that, so I just try to like um, just say some funny stuff like that that just gets them in their flow. Paquito, my papito. I don't speak a lot of Spanish, but I'm pretty sure that means little Paco, little daddy. Let me know, chat, if I'm right <laughs> on that one. Either way, it was nothing but good vibes for the subliners. And the question for me is, can you stay positive? Can you keep having that fun when you're playing against Sip and Abizi in Atlanta face? I mean, this is a matchup that they're used to, right? Yeah. They had to go up against Atlanta all last year, and so I feel like if anybody's comfortable in, in this series, it is going to be New York. But on the other side, Atlanta phase, I mean, they are tired of second place. They're tired of falling short. And sometimes it's hard to pinpoint why when you have a roster like this. Simply be easy. We saw them drop over 60 plus engagements on Rio the other day. They have the addition in Draza, who we know he likes to get on his feet. And then obviously Selim, one of, if not the most consistent player in the league. So for Atlanta FaZe, I think maybe if there's some work to be done, it's in the slang category for Draza when it comes to respawn. But their search and destroy has just been disgusting. I mean, if there's a team that like matches up with them well, it's New York Subliners. We've yeah. seen it last year. We see it here once again just two insanely good s d teams and also new york they have a ton of talent they've been figuring out their hard point like i think they're at like a negative point or negative five differential on hp it's all the way up to a 7.5 after just three games so new york subliners they are trending upwards and versus atlanta they're extremely comfortable we've seen new york win three matches atlanta has only had one in our major two qualifiers but 11 and two their only two losses this entire season happened against toronto atlanta one of those in the grand final so i think atlanta still considered the favorites, but that one could go the distance. We look at the schedule today. New York Subliners take on Atlanta Phase. That's your Monster Energy matchup to close out the week. And before that, Boston, Minnesota, and Seattle versus Carolina Royal Ravens. And that's where we want to dig in first is that first matchup because Carolina got reverse swept in their first battle. But on the other hand, Surge, you didn't have a second of momentum in your fight against the yeah. Subliners. So who do you think has the momentum if there is is any in this matchup, Ali? Ooh, I don't really know if there is any. I think maybe on the side of Carolina, simply because of how close their matches have been. I mean, their respawns, the hard points have been within 20 points, but for Seattle Surge, you know, they make that change. They have the addition of Brezzi, and then we've only seen one match of him, but I believe he has a .67 in the respawn, and that's just unacceptable for a Seattle Surge team that was already struggling in that category. So a lot of work to be done, and hopefully they show us something special in the second match. I mean, they're a bottom two hard point team, so clearly they got to figure it out. I mean, they've been top two in rotation, just points per 60, holding, breaking, literally
especially bottom two in all those categories. Uh, Illy was a big factor for this team. In a lot of the clutch moments, it was him going off, uh, taking over series, and they just don't have that without him. I mean, three and six, three and six lost to New York, eleven and four with Illy. Uh, Buzo, the one point two five season KD and eight clutches in search and destroy is definitely impressive, and that has been their bread and butter. They come in, they win two S and E's, and then they yep. win their map pick. That's how they get a series done. And that's definitely going to be their route to success today versus a Carolina team that has been struggling in HP. It's good to see the vibes there. Hook and Brezzy getting fired up. Alec, of course, making everyone giggle as Surge is feeling confident going up against a regular rival here. Koyster, former teammate of RCDs, is on the other side of this fight. And this is an AR duel I have been looking forward to. But I don't think it's the ARs that are going to decide this series. And talk to me about the SMGs we're seeing from Carolina. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think uh, this team has a really good dynamic in terms of the players that they have. I think Gwyn has showed us a lot this year so far, uh, getting them out of tough situations. TJ looks far better than he did last year, and Clay has been just putting up damage, man. Bringing in Fellow, a guy who could sort of alleviate that pressure on Clay to be a leader, it's worked out pretty well, but they've lost a lot of narrow H or narrow hard points, and I think that these guys need to stop playing Invasion. They keep playing that map, and they need to be good at real. They have a good team comp for it. You put Clay on the AR, who's really aggressive. You get Fellow on an SMG. Mm -hmm. You have a good dynamic for that map. We're seeing some of these other teams like Minnesota and Las Vegas Legion. They are good at Rio and it's given them an edge in some of these series versus the top teams and that is what Carolina so desperately needs and I believe we're going to have that in this series so that's massive. And then when it comes to Monster Energy pregame for the Carolina Royal Ravens I gotta make the assumption as Ant just said Vito Invasion Hardpoint please we are literally begging you to stop spawning in on that map but also I think they're just lacking when it comes to slaying currently I, their biggest slayer right now happens to be Gwyn and even he's struggling in the search and destroy with a .57. They're bottom two in every category when it comes to those maps too and five so for Carolina Royal Ravens they just got to start working on this game plan when it comes to search and destroy because it's pretty mismatched having to go against Seattle search. Let's take a look at our maps and modes nameless you said you wanted to see Rio if Carolina was going to find success today. We got I don't it. see it until game four is that going to be all right? Yeah I think that that's going to be just fine for these guys and when you talk about Skid Row map number one that's a map that we've seen you know Seattle be decent on at times and for Carolina they are 0-2 so we got a lot of sort of testers here for the Carolina Royal Ravens, but they need to. It's about that time. They do need to. I think when it comes to the series, though, I I only look at that map two favoring Seattle Surge. So I think maybe it just goes to a game four. I got bad news for you guys. It's scuff pick em time, okay. and we're all tied up, right? Nameless can't be beating us, can he? Let's weigh in here. 50 50. All right, he hasn't <laughs> taken the lead quite yet. Had to double check at the end of yesterday. I'm going to kick things off here. Surge are winning, and this is only based on the fact Royal Ravens have two match wins in 2024. Uh, hey, that's fair a fair point. take. You that's know what? That's fair a fair point. take. Uh, I'm actually kind of throwing out the numbers here. I think I, I think the Carolina Royal Ravens won all the respawns. They get their third today. So I think I'm going to go with Carolina Royal Ravens in four. All right. Carolina I echo four. that. Carolina Royal Ravens in four, ben. baby. I think they take this series. Math be damned. It's time to find out how this one plays out as the fans also choose Clayster's crew. We got shift and study on the mic. Gentlemen, how are we doing this morning? Ah, doing great there, friends. Yeah, great to see you. It, this is going to be a good one, and I like the call towards pointing at the respawns in particular because, hey, both teams have been a little bit strange to watch, not just yeah. because of the roster moves, but also this particular map pool doesn't really provide much leeway one way or the other, Jay. Yeah, nah, it's tough for both of these squads. Obviously, you get some respawns that you simply have not found a win yet. Skiro hard point for both of these teams. Carolina just in at 0-2. On the opposite side for Seattle, they're 0-4. Now, as you continue on, Rio, neither one of these squads have played it. Even the high rise, they haven't found any Ws. So, neither of these squads have found any Ws in the respawn game modes. Someone's going to walk away at least one today. Have to have it. I mean, I'm going to sit here looking at the map cinematic all day long. It's going to be curious because I think on the other side of things, you know, Puckett was pointing towards kind of taking the conversation away from the ARs and into the SMGs. And I think that's a really fair shout. And go figure, we have to be playing some of the hardest SMG maps that we have kind of in the pool at the moment. But it is win for first blood. Carolina stepping in from the P2 side of the map and Seattle just trying to survive and battle back. I usually expect they to start off with that rival nine, but if you bring that MCW top mid and you have to stare down the hallway, you can already find an easy kill. Z finds two, make it three dead in the feed for Carolina. Just got to start thinking ahead now because there's only 30 seconds left. That P2 is already going to be off the rotation for Seattle. Surge, you have Brezzy trying to stay alive, trying to stall time for his team to get to it. 
Uh, problem is, none of his teammates can get to him. And now Brezzy's the last one left alive. Well fought from Fellow. Over the top, he's able to help out over through Tunnel. And then easy pick over towards Brezzy on the high ground. And oh my goodness, a full lawless start for Carolina. They're going to get 50 seconds on P1 and win the rotation to two. This is chef's kiss so far for the Ravens. Yeah, they might have just called game right there. Just finding 50 seconds on P1. You're going to put yourself in a position to get another full 60 at P2. You might be up 100 to zero at the end of this hard point. Seattle Surge have to find a way on in and that two piece might be the opening now you have pressure through garage now you have pressure through ticket side and neither player from carolina who are coming off spawn are even close towards the tunnel yet they finally get here but seattle surge is a little too slow you're allowing yeah. carolina to reinforce and these extra kills that are coming through are going to make this hold potentially that much more impactful all told though abuza still in a position to try to challenge this but the ravens will reinforce through tunnel side just comes down to can abuza sneak his way up no he's denied still 30 seconds to fight for and now all four carolina members are at the ready Yikes, we're gonna have a hundred to zero score line through two unless who can find some way to break He may just sneak behind fellow not quite five in a row for fellow and yep Looks like we already get to that hundred point mark in the second hill and now see how to search They just need to be in an opportunity to stop this bleeding it's all about finding a couple kills off the rotation, but still off the rotation. There's two players from Carolina already contesting. Gwen and TJ combined for two. The trade is going to be there from Hoop. Now it all falls at the end. And he, TJ, he drops. And finally, Seattle Surge have an opportunity to get some points on the board. And, and you have to think about this being at least 45 seconds here, just to give yourself a shot at getting back into this game at the moment. Carolina trying to break this from two points of ingress. Half the team from the middle, half the team from the front. Trade's looking good for the Ravens. Booze the last one left alive, slips away, tries to wait for his former teammate from Woba Bobs and Brezzy, but is not able to get it going. One in eight start for the new guy for Seattle and Carolina get their break and they're off to the races again. Yeah, this is not how you want to come out in your second match. Obviously, your first series versus the subliners wasn't even close. But versus a team like Carolina, who are currently sitting 12th in the league with 25 total CDL points, you got to come out better than this. And it all has to start. You're going to contest it over towards this P3. There's only one player on this point, so the final 10 is going to be yours. But that's another rotation won yeah. by Carolina. They're fully set up for that push. I mean, all four members from the surge go back for what is essentially just 10 seconds worth of time. And Fellow does well just to kind of keep them at bay a little while longer. Nice moment here from our cities on three in a row, working through the middle of the map. He'll find his fourth, and now the surge can find a way to break in from the backside. Nades anticipating this, though, for Ravens on their defense. Hoop not at full health. He can't really challenge this, but does get gifted a kill on the Fellow. Three straight kills come with Brezzi's pitch, and the last one left is Clayster. No trades to be found, and Seattle get a clean break. Yeah, that's a good break right there from Seattle. Really patient through the back end, but they were waiting for Brezzi to set up that pinch from top mid steps. He finds two. The other two go to the hoop. And now this is a much needed time. Only going to be down by 100 points, but already 25 seconds left on this P4. You have to start thinking about that rotation. Two players from Carolina already at that positioning. The only player here is going to be RCD. He does find one, so it turns to a one-on-one. -on -one. Nope. The reinforcements are there for Carolina. They're going to put themselves in a position to win another rotation again. Trade's good on the rotation. Time to lock in with the Carolina Royal Ravens and the listening to see how they hold this P5. Open. I have garage. I'm backing up. I don't want to hold it, guys. Yeah, I got I'm one. Good. Yeah, here I have a trophy down mid P5. I'll hold tunnel. I got one more ticket on me, Alec. I'm going to go graffiti. I'm going to uh, go graffiti. He's looking pinch right now, but he's okay. going to go graffiti. Look at my cross. Look at my cross. One just holding tunnel. Huke. Pop you ticket. Pop ticket. I'm holding ticket. I have ticket. I have ticket. Here on tunnel. Weak. Dead. Dead. I got my ticket. Three more. Two tickets. Two tickets. I have your hop up in two seconds. Both cross. Back right time. I have a streak. I'm streaking. I'm streaking. Stay the fuck alive. Go. All right, now listen, there is one in time, one garage, one ticket. I killed one time. time. I'm killing the guy in time. One push me, garage. Push me, garage. Uh, garage one, 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 uh, well, this guy pushed me. He's bottom, bottom feet, feet two. Get time, get time, get time. Bottom, bottom feet two. Feet two. Weak, I stunned it. He's on you, dead. Nice. Crossing. Get time, garage, 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 two, garage, 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 Good He's on the way back. I can reach this guy. Take, take time. Go. Okay, I'm gonna flood. I'm flooding with you. He's gonna be with you on the side. Are you top up? Laying down dub doors. Plat, As you weak, dub door flat. One shot. Not the cleanest P5 we've seen study, but hey, at least it goes neutral, I guess. Just small silver linings, and let's be honest, there's still a significant lead margin here for the Ravens. Yeah, you take that, though, if you're Carolina. Like you said, not the best P5, but at least you started off the map slaying the way that you did. You earned the cruise missile. You were able to keep them off of that time for about 20 to 25 seconds. So that was potentially the answer for Seattle Search to get back into the game. But now we find ourselves on the second half of this hard point. Into the P1 we go. It's been an all-out scrap fest. Trades are bound, but fellow, he's able to at least find... Two with that pistol, so Seattle Surge in control. 
One of the best respawns we've seen from Fellows at this point. Gwyn still doing what he's been doing all year long, but the big note here with Surge kind of clawing back into this game from a one and eight start for Brezzi. And they correct the mistakes they had done last time, which is right here at the second hard point. Failed the rotation, failed to break, and it looks like for the moment, Carolina are very comfortable in their setup. Yeah, this has always been a struggle though for Seattle, especially in HPs. They are great off the rotation, but everything else when it comes to hold percentage or break, bottom two in those categories. And now you have to force them to break one of the most difficult hills ever created. But that might be an opportunity. They find a couple yeah. kills through Ticket. They also find a three as well. So they have the numbers. You just have to step up the pace. Unfortunately, the crossfire from Clayster, too strong. The two players spawn towards Tunnel, too strong on that gunfight as well. And Carolina still hold on. Yeah, that is just mere margins where TJ doesn't have any information until Clay gets to Garage, but the hit is not done yet. Surge coming up the back staircase. TJ oh, goes man. finds the kill and once more, Carolina through the middle of the map. Just give TJ enough breathing room to hang in the hard point. So Ooh. just when you thought Seattle was trying to cut their way back into this game, Clayster and company have said no, sir, no way. 200 points on the board, plus more to follow. That's insane too, because on a P2, you find three kills. You're probably thinking instant break, but every yeah. single time, Carolina had at least one player on the point. He found one kill, stalled enough time for his teammates to get back to him. And that's been a two full 60 holes from Carolina. Already breaching that 200 point mark. But this time they're going to be late off the rotation. Seattle needs to have a response here. It can't be slow and steady. That's the way Carolina broke their way in last time. Was slow through back laundry, great through top mid. And they traded effectively. But this time it's Seattle Surge still holding on. A little bit of extra zoning going on to the middle of the map doesn't fully work out. Abuza just kind Hello. of sports himself right into the mix, but it's our city's last one. Standing gets caught trying to place the trophy system in the break. Already good for Carolina. And I'll say, from a teamwork perspective, this is looking like a much more polished Royal Ravens team. They're going to have an opportunity to win it right here, so Seattle need to find a break. Yeah, they've been playing a lot of top teams really, really close in HPs. And finally, they're playing one of the teams who struggle in HP. And this is what the scoreline is looking like currently. As Carolina, they were trading great, but Seattle Surge again are going to walk away with the final 15 seconds over towards B3, and you will take that if you are Carolina. You have God Steps. You're already in full control of top mid and bottom mid. Just need to put one player in at a point, and the game could potentially be closed out here. Yeah, something would have to go dramatically wrong for them to not find 10 plus seconds on this rotation. And to be fair, Seattle has cleared some space at mid map, but the apartment hold from Carolina is getting so much work done. A couple of trades, but again, it's just not enough at the moment. Someone's gonna have to break this from the front. Clay hold in the corner, does get a lot of damage in. No contest as of yet, and that will likely just about do it. Last player to find is Bresley Narcities, which they do find a couple eliminations, but TJ finalizes the map with the final kill. And how about that from the Ravens, a 106 to zero start, comfortable from there on out. Yeah, that's basically what the ending score difference was as well, man. When you start off as hot <laughs> yeah. as you were, you get a full 50 on P1. Keep in mind that they were the team that spawned on the preferred side, but the fact that you rotated over towards P2, held that for two full 60s, yeah, you're basically gonna guarantee Skid Row HP every single time as Carolina Ravens. To stay strong in that HP. Seattle Search still struggling. Obviously, it was a slow start from Bezzy, but he was almost the top slayer on that team at the end of that yeah, HP. The that is not the way you're deciding to try to win HPs, but Carolina not making any mistakes, doing the fundamentals, stay strong to that game plan, and they dominate in map one. And, you know, Ali was the one who brought it up on the desk. Like, hey, both of these two teams have had kind of mismatched results in terms of how they play around hard points. But let's be honest, you rotate well on this map and then you put together even a marginally fine hold, you're going to find 40 plus seconds. Yes. I mean, these hard points are so, I would say, easy to lock down. I don't mean to make it sound so mundane, but let's be candid. I mean, when you've got good ARs over the top of you, yeah, it's going to be hard-pressed to lose P2, lose P5. And, and that was really the difference maker in this game. It's just the fact that Seattle did not rotate as well as Carolina did in the mid-round. Yeah. yeah, because what? It's Carolina on this map sitting at about ninth in rotations, which is around the middle of the pack. Seattle starts actually better on this map, but that was with their old roster. And unfortunately, Carolina, they make them pay for it. When you're starting off, like I said, P150 points, you get a P2 down. And there were situations where Seattle Surge found a couple kills off the rotation or even trying to get the break in towards yeah. P2. They were just too slow. You allow Carolina to swan up through tunnel, instantly sprint, drop a trophy down, make sure they're safe from all the tacks, and then just crossfire the Lord with those MCWs. They just simply did not have an answer early on into this game one. But now if you are Seattle Surge, the stuff that's been getting you through a lot of these series all season long has been search and destroy and yep. at least you got one in terminal next map where you have found a lot of success even if it was with the old roster yeah and that's the bigger part of it is like this has been the most rehearsed map 
for the side of Seattle, at least as of lately, three straight times they've played it. Like you mentioned, hasn't been with this exact roster, but hey, all things told, it is essentially the same roster, just inserting Brezia to the picture for all intents and purposes. So it's one of those situations you look at and say, okay, we thought the respawns were going to be kind of a question mark for both of these two teams coming in. Obviously, more conviction there from Carolina off the hot start, but this is where you have to extend this series. Find a way to take this map number two. Otherwise, the entire series looks, I won't say unwinnable, but you kind of find yourself in dire straits if you're Seattle, considering a high-raise control and a real hard point It's follow. probably unwinnable if you don't win this tournament SD because high-raise control, just control in general, they haven't been able to win that game mode since Vietnam. So, <laughs> you know, nine straight losses in that, and then you're going up against Carolina Ross, who lost this one, lost high-raise control yesterday all the way in the round number five against Boston. That one was tough, but that was due to the fact that they just simply did not have defense. Defense. They were able to keep up with the slang, not really gain a lot of segments, and unfortunately lose that all the way in around number five. But just the way that Carolina played, more specifically Fellow, he's been the guy. Like, if he yeah. goes off, it's a lot easier for Carolina to win. So continue to play the way that you are, young Fellow. Yeah, I like that. And, and that, that's the other part about it. You know, I kind of mentioned it briefly in the hard point, but Fellow looks like he's coming into play at a very high rate right now. This is probably one of his best respawn performances we've had in a minute. But here are some of the statistics looking at the overall search and destroy. You kind of praised Seattle for what they've been able to do in overall record. But a lot of it has been off the fact that their opening duel percentage is also near one of the highest in the league, at least based on certain maps. It just comes down to can they find that consistency across the board because it hasn't necessarily been there everywhere. It's only been been there in a couple of spots yeah definitely only been there in a couple of spots but at least for terminal on a map like terminal they're sixth in, fi in first blood percentage was that 54 percent and they usually convert those in 83 percent of the round wins which is third overall in the league so yeah. just kind of go back to the old game plan of the roster obviously Illy's shoes are very difficult to fill in s and d he was always stellar when it came to that mode but now someone needs to step on i think i'm looking at the the most veteran guy on this roster, the guy with two world champions in the Arch Cities, he's yeah. the guy who can really set the tone, call the play calls for this young roster, and make it happen for the Seattle Surge roster to try to make it a 1-1 series after this map. And the thing about it is, looking at Seattle, generally speaking, this map, we kind of saw it there for a brief moment, has been a defensive masterclass for them. Not yeah. only do they not allow the bomb to get planted all that often, if they do allow the bomb to get planted, they are the best team in the league at retaking and finding a defuse. So those are some key elements to keep your eye on. And, well, you kind of look at someone like Gilly from before, but TJ has been really good so far in this Major 2 qualifier stint. 1.36 overall KD, and he has been one of those guys that likes to get in the mix early. So, yeah, you look at this map for Seattle and say, yeah, we, we should take this one if yeah. we just play our cards right. Yeah, that's exactly what you're thinking. Just got to whip into the old game plan book. Just come up with those same exact strategies because you did watch Carolina recently take down Boston on this map in a 6-4 victory, but a lot of that was due to a lot of clutching, especially out of the old man Clayster. Had multiple 1v1s, and if you can do that again, obviously you're gonna find a W, but early on into this round, on the attacking side is gonna be Carolina. No trophy systems to work with, so they're trying to take plane nice and early. Our city's playing in the back. You've got one player in Hook set up over towards cockpit side, but it's actually Gwyn who finds Brezzy over towards a C, or at least nearby, and that's going to open up TJ to create a ton of space, plus a nade lands over towards the B site. Still looking for isolation over towards our cities, and now with that information on the trade, they know where Hook is positioned, and they're not even going to bother with the plant. Carolina's going to play for the kills, and they'll find it. Really quick offense coming through for round one. Yeah, you're just not reading that play. Carolina did a nice little split set up two players through the terminal, but instead of them contesting in towards the plane, they actually work on the lower end. Get the first blood of the player camping towards red steps and then just trade efficiently as Clayster finds that nade onto a booze as the island player. Just opened up the game right there for Carolina to have multiple different angles where they wanted to attack by the ground that they were able to cover. Just a really easy offensive round right there out of Carolina. No need to worry about any trophy systems. We're gonna use our tax, play aggressive, find a trades. Round one, Carolina. Very quick, very clean. Now it's on to Seattle to see what they can offer. Those nades don't quite get where they were intended to go, so that slows down this potential push over towards it, and the cross is being heavily watched by the Ravens, plus a check from TJ. Oh, such a good transmission of info from the defender's deep first blood tally for the Ravens. Oh, but Gwen, you probably want that one back. Once you put yourself in the advantage in a 4v3, you know it's on them to make something happen on the attacking side, and at least the RCD's finding the second kill onto TJ. So it just was a 4v3 for Carolina, is now a 2v3. Clayster and Fellow, both the ARs, Double stacked in towards the plane, and if Seattle starts to decide to hit the rotation over towards B, it's going to be a free bomb plant, but they might commit, and this might work right into what Carolina want them to do. 
Owl may have been scouted here. Oh. Yeah, shots go towards the cockpit. Brezzy follows up. Easy elimination. Clacer has not shown himself over towards the A side of the map yet, though. Can he surprise someone? No. Our cities predicts it perfectly, and Seattle respond with a clean offense of their own. Yeah, that's just one of those rounds right there with Seattle. Hey, we're the team getting first blooded, but the fact that Gwyn gives them a free P through the middle hallway, you find that one, make it to 3v3, and then Arsides finds the second. Then as they were sliding into that terminal, you catch Fellow with a stun in his hand. <laughs> that one's tough, bad timing, bad cod timing on his part, but 1v3, Clayster spotted towards back plane. Everyone just focused that, find the kill. Seattle Surge able to respond with an attacking round. Yeah, and initially, it did look like Carolina had a good read on this, but I think you're absolutely right. When Once Gwyn falls, it puts Carolina in a very intriguing position just because they kind of had to force a commitment defensively on the rotation so now with upgrades ready to go across the board for trophies and dead silence it's going to be back to your normal pace here at terminal very slow very methodical of all brezzy kind of peeking over towards mid hall and he does get caught first blood tallied again by carolina that's the bait and switch right there to tj and gwen brezzy was putting on a couple shots but they didn't want to fully commit to that fight sets up gwen to catch him as he was trying to one away for the free first blood so now in a 4v3, double stack for Seattle Surge over towards B, and they're actually going to contest this, and a boost wow. is going to be able to even up the numbers on Clayster. It makes it a 3v3 now. Yeah, who kind of giving up information and getting shot at? Carolina seemed to make the call saying, we'll take the 4v question mark over towards B. At worst, it's a 4v2, but like you called, double stack of ARs watching over the top of it. Gets us to a 3v3, but TJ may have found some timing to get through. Call up as a player over towards top A. Seeing the last shots land in Abuza before he can get out of Dodge over towards Esky. So we stay in a very peculiar position, though. I mean, it's just trades across the board. TJ left in the 1v2. No bomb. Able to track Arsides, but not fully finish off the elimination. Now he's stuck down low. Not a lot of time to work with. And what looked to be Carolina on the pounce, this round just may run out of time for them. Yeah, he has no time. You can't even plant the bomb because you do not have it. In your back pocket, so all you got to do if you're RC is just run away. It could have been some bad cod timing right there, but TJ still thinking that he was going to be playing towards top three stories. RC makes it happen, though. He's the only player sitting towards top red. He's able to find two as they were being aggressive up through bottom middle. Just great plays out of the two time world champion. Finds the timing, also the snap on the fellow. Headshot, great. Works out perfectly for Seattle Surge, and that's another 3v4 clutch round. If you're Carolina, yeah. let's just work our numbers a little bit slower in those situations. And on top of that, RCD's able to find a heavy handful of eliminations. Now on five in a row, six and one start for him. Looking for potentially the cruise missile here early. He's carrying the bomb, and he's going to have one cross right in front of Dreams for free. Wow. I mean, Carolina tried to get aggressive here defensively, but it's completely countered, and now you've got a cruise missile and a 4v2 if you're Seattle. Yeah, this should be a free round for Seattle Surge. Yeah. Spot fellow as well towards bottom Esky, so that's information at least gained onto one player. But now you should be able to just work your way up, work this bomb plant. You're also able to find fellows. He tries to find the timing. It's Gwyn left in a 1v4. He does take that one, but bomb is now getting planted. Like you had mentioned, when first bloods do come the way of Seattle, they win 83% of the rounds. Add another one to the tally here. As Gwyn is completely stuck trying to create an opportunity. Arsides will see him, and wow, what a start of a map here from Alec. I mean, he's nearly at double digits at this point. Hardy holding on to a cruise missile, and Seattle's absolutely working Carolina, even against the numbers in some rounds. Yeah, the vet is stepping up, man, and that had to be his play call that round. He's saying, I'm one off of a cruise missile. You guys apply all the pressure up towards Eskies. If they find a first blood, even better, because that's going to force the player who's over towards the terminal side to try to yep. overextend, try to make a play happen on the flank, and it works right into what Arsides wanted him to do. Free two first kills. You're already on a cruise missile. You find the third, and then the 1v3 just stand no chance. Seattle Surge have taken a fine grip of this SD so far. Alec on a seven streak. Just stepping up when his team needs him the most. And just in case it gets a little frantic, that cruise miss was in the back pocket. Quick rotation back towards mid here for Brezzi after initially Clayster was seen over towards Berger. Fellow just kind of popping his head up over the books, just trying to see if he can scout anyone on this mid cross, but nothing's been hit yet. So Carolina's kind of coming into this back half of the round pretty blind and Seattle's in a good spot to at least get a read on this A hit. Hook playing over towards cockpit side is going to try to take the Oh, oh man. TJ, a bold challenge, and it comes through for first blood. Brezzy follows up. Yeah, Hook knows that he had to commit towards that fight because once that canister blows up, he's going to be a little bit weak, but I'm just going to send it on to him. Finds the first blood on to TJ and Brezzy with the second. Instantly a 4v2. 
Both the arrows again for Carolina. Force the clutch on up. It's only 35 seconds left. Full commitment in towards the turn. Hook finds his second on the round. He knows the next player is right around the corner. But at least the nade hits for fellow. And he should get traded here. All right. What the hell is going on? All right. There it is. <laughs> Seattle surge. Two strong. Three rounds in a row now. Oh, fist the cups on the railing. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And like you'd mentioned, like even though Seattle finds himself up on the scoreboard pretty big, most of these early rounds have been winnable rounds for Carolina. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, these last two have been decidedly dominated by Seattle and what they've put together both offensively and defensively. And the mind games have to be completely screwing with Carolina at this moment. And now that you're up 4-1, this is where you can invest that cruise missile to win this attacking round because it's a lot sure. more difficult to win attacks than it is on defense on a map like Terminal. So if you can walk away with this attack, put yourself up 5-1, basically are going to call game. So now Carolina forced to respond, and another first blood goes in favor of Seattle Surge. They can do no wrong in s &D. Yeah. Look how quick they've already made their play up towards Jet Bridge sides. RC's, like you mentioned, going to call on the cruise missile, transmit the info on where everyone's positioned, then likely you're going to see this hard commit in towards A. Should be a double chow here in towards plane. It's just Gwyn in the way, and he gets absolutely obliterated. Oh, my. TJ, oh, same okay. play, though. Through mid-map, he catches one. It looked like through cockpit, and then the other on the bridge. So now, all of a sudden, TJ becomes a bit of a menace to this setup. Oh, and if you can win this round, this is everything for Carolina. You get the cruise missile to be invested. Beginning of this one, it was also a 2v4. TJ makes it a 2v2, but the rotation for Seattle Surge going over towards that B site. Just a crossfire right now. Set up for Carolina over towards A, but is TJ going to find the time to turn and look left? Stun came through. Was that out of the hands of Clayster? Did it hit anybody? This one definitely got placed over towards the B bomb. TJ looks like he's seen Abuza make the crossover. The top shots don't fully land. Has to reset. Frag getting cooked. Rotation from Clayster already here. Does that connect? No. So now you got to do this the hard way. Clay also with the frag doesn't cook it up. That doesn't Ooh. make a difference. The team shot's great. But watch the pinch. Brezzy from the back almost finds the timing to take down both. Instead has to take the 1v1 with Clay. And it's good for Clayster to get Carolina a big round on the board. That's a really big round. You get the cruise missile to get invested. You also clutch up in the 2v4. Major, major plays coming in out of the vets. And Clayster and TJ. Just don't get frantic in those moments. Even when TJ missed a couple shots onto Abuza, he waited for his teammate to come assist him. Make sure you use your attacks to reposition him. And then Clayster with the timing to play the one-on-one -on -one versus Brezzy while TJ stuck on that defuse. A much-needed round right there for Carolina Roy Ravis and not let this SD get away from them. Mm. But now you need to respond on the attack. It's been all over the map for these guys. Two towards Terminal, one towards Library, and Clay every single time islanding over towards Burger. Let's try to get a four-man push one way. I was about to say, this would be time to hit with some concentration. See if they end up doing it. In fact, actually, on the opposite foot, you can say the same thing's happening for Seattle. Got a long cross being watched by our cities. The other three members looking to play aggressive in towards B. Decent trade from Fellow. Keeps the aggression at bay. We're going to go 3v3. Uh, it's big plays from Clay, so also to get out with his life at Burger. Multiple players trying to isolate him, but continues to make it a 3v3. Fellow also drops the bomb for play, so. Oh, huge. Moving on up. Gwyn, great shots onto Brez. He makes it a 3v2, and now you just have to find this trade on our cities, and the plane is going to be yours. Stun comes out. Arcides waiting to check this. Carolina a bit antsy on their initial take of this plane position. Everyone's looking towards this back tail position. They know that it could be someone here. Clayster coming with the pistol out, though. Free kill for Arcides. Wall bank starting to come through, and Fellow will capitalize on the elimination. Now it's just to Abuza. Bomb recollected. Fellow instantly for the plant. 1v2 we go. And Abuza did put down a couple shots, so already positioning known for Carolina. That's why they stick the bomb instantly. They knew he was towards top three, but... Now 35 seconds to work with Abuza trying to clear every single angle. Keep in mind, he does not have covert sneakers on, so he's going to be heard all the way across the map, and Carolina's set up on the crossfires. Yeah, Gwyn's already heard this. Everyone looking at it. Shots from fellow perfect. Wow. Okay. So that's exactly what the doctor ordered. Like we mentioned, the first three rounds really could have gone either way. In fact, I think there would have been more arguments for Carolina coming out on top of the first three rounds. Seattle have two convincing rounds in a row. And now all of a sudden we're essentially back to level terms here after some Ravens conviction starts to make itself known. Yeah, they've been able to just play the pick game. You know, once it goes down to them getting first flooded, they were able to instantly respond, make it a 3v3. And then Gwyn starts it off with a great shot on the Brezzy through bottom steps, put them in the advantage, and he just trade efficiently in towards the plane, get the bomb down. 
and secure the round as Carolina been able to chain a couple together. Now down 4-3. Back on the defensive end. Uh, I think Seattle Surge have gotten about six first bloods. And oh. Abuza finds another one this time on the hook. Yeah, our cities get so much information and the players coming up the slide. But unfortunately, the team shots that were intended to try to find, I think, TJ crossing ends up just hitting hook for the most part. So 4v3, Seattle, I'm sure still feeling pretty confident that a lot of this defense is leaning A, but they're not going to know with 100% certainty. Our cities are still looking for intel, and he will at least catch that fellow's playing bottom tarmac. That's good info on Tafello as he's watching over the middle alley, but just a lot of time being wasted and no ground being taken. Yeah. It's finally Seattle Surge are going to work their way up through library, and there's not a single player from Carolina watching this positioning. So this can be the opening. They decide to attack over towards B because it's only Clay's there on that side of the map. The only thing about it is Seattle hasn't put anyone on this side. So there could be someone inside of Cafe. There could be someone over towards Burger. Could be playing passing towards Eskies. There's a lot of misinformation and Clay's is able to find the first. No one rotating immediately here though. Abus is able to capitalize on the Gwyn. So still it's just kind of this decision of how do you want to hit over towards B and Clay may read this perfectly. Abuza crosses in front, but oh! Clay doesn't hit the shots. 2v2, plenty of time for the plant. TJ going to see the cross, but Arsenis catches him first. Oh, a disaster here for Carolina. Bomb getting planted. Fella looking to go quick, and he's been completely taken down to one shot. Finds the first, but not the second. What a regain round from Seattle. Yeah, that's unacceptable right there for Carolina. That turned into a 4v2 with about 20 seconds left. All we have to do is just make sure they can't put the bomb down at one of these sites. But if you are Clay, so you want that gunfight back, man. You kill a boozer, the round is going to be yours. But the fact that it loses that fight, you force a couple players from Carolina to now reposition. And with RC's in his position towards bottom red, he was able to catch a couple. What a 2v4 clutch right there from Seattle Surge to now put them at game point. Shut down all the momentum on the side of the Ravens. Man. What is that, three rounds now that Carolina have had significant numbers not been yeah. able to close out the round? Yeah. That's tough. How different that can't makes. can't win like that. Yeah. 2-2 Two -two split defensively here from Seattle. Carolina looking to get aggressive over towards A, but RC just pops his head out. He's still feeling the hot hand from his 8-1 start. Now 14-3, first blood tally, and he's going to get eyes on the clay serving map. He's just not missing right now. Straight beams coming in on a two-time world champ. We're asking if he was going to be able to step up for this roster and say that 14 and 3. You best believe he's going to do that. Because now Seattle Surge in the 4v3. Already a lot of time wasted on the game clock, and the boozer shoots like that. He's able to find two through Burger. Now his fellow left in the 1v4. Good luck. Have fun. First contestant looks to be Hook. Not interested as he heads his way downstairs. Quick pinch is on the way, so fellow's going to have to move and move quickly. Good openers, but there's the rest of the flank in Seattle. Wow. I mean, it, it really does start with our cities and almost end with our cities there for a moment. But holy cow, that 2v4 is going to be living in the minds of the Royal Ravens for a while. Because they were down 4-3 in that 2v4 scenario. You clutch that one up, all tied up at 4. Then you also get the investment early on from the cruise missile, so you don't have to worry about that. But when you allow Seattle search to clutch up around the way that they did, with only 20 seconds left to make it happen, all momentum goes back to their side. They can do no wrong. As you take a look at the numbers, our city's 14 and 3, 12 non-traded kills, almost 2,500 damage. That's what you call a takeover in the game mode. As he just shuts down all the players from Carolina, multiple first bloods out of him as well. They just played great S and D. We were worried about if you know Italy not back on a roster, if they were gonna have the same game plan on a map like Terminal, and they're still strong at that S and D, able to tie the series up at one. Yeah, really good stuff. I mean, outside of their match versus New York, it really has been for this Seattle team. Only been Karachi that's been an issue for them on Search and Destroy. So I'm sure they're going to be happy to see High Rise be there for map number five if we get there. But they won't have to wait too long to tally up what's going on at High Rise because we've got that coming up next to the control. And Jay, just quickly before we go to break, let's be honest, it hasn't been good for Seattle. Oh, yeah, it hasn't. They just started playing it last week. It was the very first time they played it. But control overall, they're sitting at 0-9. you got to have to turn that around. Carolina aren't the best either. So whoever wins this map number three is going to walk away with the series. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator. Now available in-game in the Call of Duty Store. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League.
Check out all the awesome in-game rewards you can earn for free just by watching the Call of Duty League. What's on tap this weekend? An all-new lineup including a weapon blueprint, emblem, calling card stickers, and XP tokens. Just link your YouTube account now to start earning. Welcome back, everybody, to the Call of Duty League and the middle of our first game here on Sunday. Seattle Surge, Carolina Royal Ravens, both tied at one apiece, but oh, oh that search from Arson is unreal. Stop an eight and one start, Jay, and it just, he didn't really slow down from there, for being honest. Yeah, it was just takeover, man. From start to finish up this search and destroy, multiple clutch, clutches out of him, multiple close, helping personal gunfights he was able to win, but then he earns an early cruise missile, and then even in that final round, catches the two before alongside of Booza. Multiple first buzz as well. That two-time world champion just stepped up tremendously for his roster. Tied up F1 and gonna need that guy to continue to play the way that he did because oh, yeah. we're going into control where, like I said earlier before the series, haven't won one since Vietnam. So gotta figure it out here. Unreal stuff, man. It's been since December.
the last time that Seattle Jesus. found a way to win a control. <laughs> On the flip side, I think for Ravens fans, you know, again, we talked about this a lot, the respawn, we're gonna be the kind of focus points here for Carolina, and in particular, going back to a high rise control again for the third time this qualifier after two different two, three losses. It, it, you would have to think that, okay, let's just fix those couple of small mistakes in those matches versus Boston and New York, and you should be feeling pretty decent about your chances to take a map here. Yeah, I think the small mistakes that they need to fix actually both of these squads is simply the slain. That's the reason why they're losing majority of these control maps is because they cannot keep up with the kills. You go forward to the control, you get put in a spawn trap. So just kind of make sure that's your main focus for both of these teams. Just put yourself in those power positions. Make sure you're not going forward dead at the same time. But it's going to be early on Carolina on the attacking side. Gwyn a nice little route. Potentially going to open up the first kill. Yeah, really well done. Catches Brezzy completely off guard. And this Seattle setup was all intended to watch over the top at B. So this has gone absolutely miserably bad at the moment. First took a progress, going to get locked at A very quickly. Abusa also dropping means that the Seattle defense really can't converge to stop the second tick either. Mid-map, Brezzy able to find one, but now we're working on the third tick of progress. What is happening? Wow. Seattle, do they not know how to defend A? Not like this, not again. They were probably looking for that propane tank, but Carolina, they are already naded that out so you cannot take them down with your attacks but at least they're able to find a couple kills and retake that map control now hitting that reset button for carolina but you have two minutes to complete this segment over towards b place are already in a great position towards top for a pain if you can find another one even better as he lines up a booze but there's still a player behind him a booze finds that kill and still seattle starts trying to hold on from the back of their spawn Nick win playing from the defending underground position Looking to just like hold players back at range of the pistol. We'll get it done now three in a row for Gwyn. TJ following up at the first tick of progress. Looking good here at B. Rezzy just on the opposite side at the ladder. And whoa, what shots those are from Fellow. Absolutely melts him away. And the second tick can still be worked on here for the Ravens. Yeah, they're still here. They're still here, but applying pressure on to the point. You have to try to get in if you are Seattle. Who does it with the ladder? Oh, no. But unfortunately, cannot find that kill. So it's already the second segment done. Making two, looking for three dead. Now here comes a stack. Carolina are going to be able to walk away with this attacking round. Man, I mean... It was a speed run when Seattle played this versus New York, and you think there's no way it goes like that again on their opening defense. Uh, well, we would have been wrong if you said that out loud, because, I mean, like you said, it, it's just the propane tank cannot be your only defender on the A zone. It just can't be. It can't. And unfortunately, it comes back to bite them, because now they're down by six segments. Carolina have all momentum as they're the team walking away with the attack, and now they just need to put them in a nice little trap on the defensive setup. If you are Seattle, sure, just a tall, tall task to climb. And it also starts with this break off, though. You currently have Hook sitting at 0-1-5. Not the best start, but you can get a couple kills right off the rip of this map. You can respond with an attacking round of your own. Yeah, okay, to put it plainly, Jay, to put it plainly. 2-2 Two -two split here for Carolina. Hook just looking to work his way through the underground, and he's got a lot of space. Problem is... His teammates who are trying to help out, maybe a play towards B have been completely taken care of. So yeah, who gets his first kill of the round, but Carolina are saying, all right, fine. You have the B zone. You can step on that if you want. We're gonna set up the spawn trap. Yeah, we're gonna trap everyone else. You can slowly try to work your way up as we're gonna turn it into a one-on-one -on, -one on the point with the player that came off spawn. But at least Hook's teammates are finding a couple kills out of their base. So now Hook's in a position to where he can try to finesse a little bit. Try to put himself in a position to play for more kills on the opposing side of the map. He finds another one on the TJ. Brezzy off spawn, finds a second one onto Gwyn. And who's just running around? His teammates yeah, have not yeah. been able to get out, man. Yeah, I mean, everyone else in the Ravens, again, are saying, fine, get back there. Players off spawn will deal with you eventually, but maybe that split decision, not really the one best called for TJ. Oh, oh absolutely obliterated. And how about this start in round number two for Hook? Still becoming a thorn to the side of the Carolina spawn. Yeah, and they're trying to locate him, and finally, Gwen does. You take care of Hook, you shut down that progression towards the cruise missile, and finally, your team is able to pause the game clock with someone capturing over towards A, but the actual stun from Fellow, too strong, takes down Arcides. And now there's only 30 seconds left, and you don't even have a segment complete. Seattle Surge need to get a move on it. Oh, Nabuza dropping over towards Elevator Alley means that this Surge push may have to default to playing on A. Hook, once again, is kind of repeating what the route was the last time he came off spawn. Knows he's got a player nearby, but Gwyn, right through the middle of the map, finds an easy one. Felony follows up in 19 plays, 15, 8 seconds on the clock. No one from Seattle going to get to his own in time unless they can find a way to dive on towards A. Fellow with the mid, still not losing gunfights, and it'll stop at 1.8. 
sure there's a bit of a stack here. Hello. The win lines him up now on five in a row. 15 and five. Start the pistol. Not going to get it done. Second ticket progress being worked on. And now it's just 0.3 seconds just to booze the left. Wall bangs come through in Carolina. Clean up the defense. No worries. Oh, man. Seattle Sears, they're just playing so spread, Allen. Like, just going one on one. Obviously, Hook is just trying to play his life, trying to finesse as long as he can. But eventually, we got to get a team push. There's just a whole lot of individual plays on that round for Seattle Surge and Carolina. We're able to pick them apart every single time. Gwen does get shut down on that cruise missile, but you only allow one segment. So you're in full control of this map. If you are Carolina Rory Ravens, even if you do lose this attacking round, yeah. you have defense guaranteed with the way that they have been playing. Seattle Surge just needs to have a response. And actually, Fellow does pick one up as well. So it's a cruise missile already in the back pocket for Carolina. Yeah. And it makes me wonder, the veto for Seattle is Karachi. If this is how bad High Rise is, how bad is a Karachi? I mean, it's, the crazy thing is, Alan, this was their auto veto. This is yeah. their auto veto. And then with the new roster, they try to attempt it to play versus New York. That's not a good choice because they're the best team on High Rise on this map. And now you're playing against Carolina, who've been struggling in control, and you can't find anything either. So we might have to get rid of this one overall. Yeah, not looking good. Progress towards B already being worked on. Clay is still on a four spree. It's just TJ in the zone for now, but Clay and Fellow playing on this bottom lane. Yeah, they're looking for some kills kind of in towards the window positions, and that is going to work out nicely. Just one kill to speak of for Seattle. Hello? I mean, what are we doing? Oh! Old man still got it. He's able to find his six on the round before he does get taken down. So now you have two cruise missiles to work with. We're instantly going to get the investment out of Gwyn. As they're trying to speed run through this control, you catch one all spawn. You also get the info on where the rest of the players from Seattle Surge are. You take care of Hook. At least the trade is going to be there. So they have a minute and 40 to work with. And they're up by nine lives. And they still have some streaks to work with. Yeah. So Rio. GG. Wow. I mean, what? Dude, not losing gunfights. And Arsides, who had a great search and destroy, just cannot find a way to win a gunfight here in the control. I, there's really not much to say. 22 plays 13, minute 25 on the clock. More crews is going to get invested. This will allow not just kills, but Ravens have a chance to still dominate the map. Yeah, they're just making it rain at this point. Shout out Donnie Temp. As it's still 21 to 12 in lives remaining. You have a whole lot of time to work with. You saw Fellow trying to hit that deep route, trying to come up behind enemy lines, but his teammates are still finding kills around the map. Clayson with another two. Last player up is going to be who? Everyone else off the respawn. You're finally in a position to pause that game clock if you are Carolina. Defense still struggling to get out from these windows positions. Trophy systems are down, so the offense stays healthy through this incoming utility. Our city is Abuza working through mid map. That will get one off the point. Second ticket to be contested. And hold on a second. 14 plays seven. Seattle now working their way into some defensive strongholds. And they will also deplete most of that second tick. Yeah, and I think if you are Carolina, though, with only a minute left, let's just slow the game down and play our trades. Because they only have seven lives remaining. You can turn it basically into TDM. TJ finds one onto Abuza. And now he pops that dead silence to work his way behind enemy lines. But RC is able to spot him as well. So. It's still Seattle Surge holding on through the middle of the map. I know they only yeah. have five lives left. Not the best start to this round, but they still have an opportunity with 30 seconds left to try to stay alive here. The Ravens just need to play trades. This should not be an issue here for the Royal Ravens. Keyword, should. We'll see what happens. 23 seconds. We'll put a little bit of pressure here on the Ravens to make a move on towards the zone. Pinch is on the way over towards this A position. Abuza just trying to find kills around him. And now it's just the last couple of defenders. Three playing up against seven. But the only player for Carolina that can actually get on the zone is Gwyn. And all the stun lands perfectly, allowing him the second kill. So he'll finesse his life a little while longer. Brezzi, the last hope, wins the gunfight. But he does immediately get traded. So more mixy than it maybe should have considering the start for the Ravens. 3-0 the control in Seattle. <laughs> I mean, holy cow, we need to work on control a little bit more than this. Yeah, that's two respawns where they have just been blown out of the water, man. Like, usually when you form a new roster, keep in mind, when you're sitting in practice, you're playing all the respawns before you're playing SD. So this is where they need to be showing why they decided to put this team together. But so far, map number one, you're losing by 100. You clutch up in the surge and destroy, but in the high-rise control, you get absolutely steamrolled by one of the worst teams that we have in the mode. So obviously, something is not clicking for Seattle Surge. We're probably going to have to get rid of high-rise control going forward but now your backs are against the wall and then you're going into a hard point that you have yet to play as a roster that might be a good thing though you haven't yeah. played it on on rio and you can also allow someone else to pull out that third smg so abuza 
Prezi and who have to try to step up on that map number four to keep themselves alive because the way that Carolina are playing, they're just so in sync right now when you talk about the respawn modes. Yep, and another map where not only does Gwyn continue to be another conversation point for potential MVP, I know that a lot of the conversation is favored wins, and I think a lot of that is justified with Minnesota finding kind of an uptick over the course of the last, we'll say, major and a half. But if Carolina could keep playing like this, conversations for Gwyn again have to keep going up because he has really been individually incredible. But with their roster change, Fellow's starting to kind of improve his performance individually, map by map, match by match. And I don't know, man, if, if we're going to see respawn like this from the Ravens, they're going to win more series than just this one, pending, of course, that Rio goes their way. Yeah, I think they're just getting more comfortable because, like you said, Gwyn has been their shining light in every single match in series. He's the only player, when you talk about the respawns, over a 1.0 KD. Everyone slightly uh, under. But if he continues to play like that, and then you get the rest of your squad to start to step up, like you said, Fellow's having himself a phenomenal series so far. That's what makes these games a lot easier. You're playing against some of the top teams, keeping all the HPs really close. You're dominating the control on that high rise. Finally, you get a W there. And now you're going into a Rio HP just purely off the momentum of the way that you guys been playing respawns. We should be able to close this game out in four if we just stick to what we do, play as a collective unit. And I think not just play as a collective unit, but keep that same focus we saw on Skid Row in terms of how and when we're rotating, because yes. that was obviously the biggest kind of really moniker for success that we saw from Carolina. Obviously, starting up 106 to zero is, you know, also not bad at all. But hey, th this is a map that can get really quick. We obviously focus a lot on the SMGs, but you get ARs to take long routes, anchor, find good spawns, and all of a sudden the map could be very snowbally as well, pending, of course, that your SMGs just don't get into a blunder. And if you're just taking a look at the Seattle Surge body language, it looks like none of these players want to be yeah. here. Like, we got to try to turn on up as we take a look at the holding breakdowns for both of these squads. Overall in the season, 63% for Seattle, 73% for Carolina. It's not really the best numbers, as you can tell for Seattle. They have been dead last in that category. They can rotate early, but they cannot put themselves in the proper center to get some much needed time. Same thing for Carolina, just slightly a little better. Sure. Um, again, when you're dealing with teams that are near the bottom of the league, you're going to see yeah. statistics that look like this. I think the bigger story point, though, is even though Carolina haven't necessarily found the wins that I'm sure, of course, they want. And obviously, at this point, we also need to talk about the fact that they kind of need them. Yeah. Hey, the thing about it is you've played some good teams pretty darn competitively. And there were definitely series in there, reverse sweep obviously being one of them, that you would look back at and say, these are winnable series that we yeah. could be 2-0 and so far through the major, looking at possibly a third win here. So, yeah, I think that this is one of those moments where the Carolina camp has to still believe in the process because not only has the respawn looked good in this particular series, they've played some other opponents that are near the middle top of the leaderboard also really close, and that's got to be inspiring. Yeah, it's definitely inspiring because, you, like you said, you're playing some of the top teams very, very tight. So one to two changes in your gameplay, you can walk away with that W. Obviously, the series versus New York, you went up 2-0, and unfortunately, after the control, everything else was a smoke show. But this is an opportunity where you can avoid that game five search and destroy because at least the way the Seattle played in game number two, they have the same exact game plan with the old roster that they do with the new squad. So you don't want to get to game five of your Carolina. You want to try to close it out here on this Rio HP. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see just in case fellow pull out that third sub. Oh, this is going to be mixy. Yeah, 100%. And it's hard to really evaluate like, hey, if you were to put three subs in both of these two hands, these two teams hands rather, who do you favor? Because... You know, we've seen Abuza kind of run that experimental second sub before the roster swap had happened, and he didn't look particularly incredible. So do you force him back onto it again, or do you run a 2-2 setup? We'll come to learn as Carolina will start things off with a favorable trade, and that gets them some early time once again here in the first hill. Uh, this is good stuff already from Carolina. You get a teammate coming in from Seattle Surge, and you're able to win the trade fights into top mid. But it's Hook trying to set up a deep, deep pinch route. Should be able to find a freebie onto Clayster. Now he's set up for the pinch. Time for RCDs to strike. He does find one, and it turns into a one-on-one. -on -one. Hook is able to win it. But still players from here, Carolina, on the better side of the map, trying to contest it, but already ahead of the game. Off the rotation. Uza at least able to force that last gun fight to allow Seattle some guaranteed scrap time. RCDs, trophy system already earned, is in position to at least stop Carolina from fully setting up around the second hill. You talked about their spawns being good, but there will have to be a fight to get into the hard point itself. Pinstripe kill feet, hard point opens. Felony, nice win here. Around the back, RC is looking to get aggressive, but he's stunned oh. just as he tries the mantle and fellow will take the gunfight win. Carolina using their proximal spawns to get in the hill first. 
Yeah, they were playing patient. Just make sure they were trading efficiently. Make sure no one was going to apply the pressure through the middle's map and go for that potential pinch. It is Hoop now who found that timing, but he can only get one for his endeavors. The rest of Seattle Surge all trying to attack from the front end with only 35 seconds left. You still got some trophy systems that are keeping you alive on the point. Oh, man, Clay just doing the major soaking right now. Call it casual. Nice Ooh. long range shots as well. Okay, full four man down. And this is where things got really disastrous for Seattle. The last 20 seconds of a hard point, not being able to contest the scrap means that Carolina can reinforce on the rotation. They've already flipped spawns around. Hook spawns over towards old. Carolina have the opportunity with three members on rotation to open up the third in their name. And the first kill goes the way of Gwyn. Seven and three start. Ooh. Follow up from Fellow. That will lock down the spawns and the Ravens already in the time. That's a great read right there from Fellow. Read that player who was trying to at least stay alive through the back end brezzy with an unfortunate stair glitch right there caught fellow off guard but <laughs> it's still carolina in towards the hill they know where the pressure's coming in from all through that bridge side tj just decides to send it and unfortunately he does get paid for it it's now seattle search they're here to contest they're keeping it mixy even though this one all the way across the map great patience from gwyn knows there's a contest evaluates where it could be from and then predicts it perfectly and now Seattle no longer have much of an option to play through this bridge side. Or oh, if they do, it's going to take a lot of time for them to get Jesus. there. And Clayster's already kind of watching over the top of this. So the threat is now known. Gwyn, fellow, pick it up perfectly, plus the team kill. And oh, man, it's just we have not seen breaths for longer than a second and a half from this Seattle team on any respawn yet to this map. It's just not a good play right there. You, your first initial push was to like, all right, we're going to be sporadic. We're going to push through bridge, push through top mid. And then with only 25 seconds, like you decided to send three players through bridge, basically get the rotation over to Carolina. And Yikes. they walked away with the remaining junk time. They're just not playing winning HP right now as they lose another rotation this time over towards P4. You see the spawns. You got players trying to set up pinches. You got players trying to attack from the front. It's just not in sync right now in Carolina making a pay for it. And it's just so tough, Jay, because like this is really reminding me a lot of like early thieves before their roster swap. It's like, how do you look at any of the individuals and say it's their problem or they're the ones that are causing some of the issues? Because the full team is just not gelling. And they're yeah. not rotating together. They're not setting up how they want to. Everything seems to be very reactive. And it's just, oh, it, it's really tough to diagnose when you have issues that are so full-fledged like this. Another 100-plus point lead. Carolina's going to get gifted the concession of scrap time, and now you look towards rotation again in Seattle. Yeah, they're here, but, you know, it's again one of those moments where Carolina's not not here. I mean, they still have a chance to fight through mid-map. Yeah, they have a chance to do everything that they want. They're walking away with their remaining junk time. They already find themselves up by 120, almost 130 points. And now you have the patience that you can start making plays, hitting a couple routes as TJ pushes through the old hill. He's trying to take top mid control. Clayster tries to go through the flank. He does get shut down, but Seattle Surge, this is a hill that they need to try to respond with. Just control exactly where Carolina are coming from, all in front of you, and just hold down your top bridge. Frizzy up top. That one's not on stairs, so he'll find the kill a little bit easier. Carolina, at least able to respond back. Our city's last one left. Semtex just to create a little bit of time and space, but once more, Seattle's setup has been completely broken down. They have to refight for this hard point control. A couple of members still playing to the back tank, but Gwyn absolutely obliterates Brezzy off the truck. And with 13 seconds of the fight for, he will try to get as much of this as possible. The rest of Carolina are already set up creating buffers towards P1. They're just ahead of the game, man. They're just a couple steps ahead of what Seattle Surge are thinking. Now we go back to our P1 HP. Clayson with the beam from top mid with that MCW. As they are the team early in control of this P1. How does Seattle Surge decide to break this? We have players playing patient towards the bottom of the Eskies. We're trying to set up the timing also through Bidge. Finally, the trade does come in from Abuza, who's currently having a slow start to this game. But yeah. you're not having fun when you're not winning rotations. Carolina just steamrolling right now. And this is kind of the similar shades of the Seattle roster that we had from the first major with Illing. The rosters of Abuza just not able to get things going with the SMG in hand. So do you just take it away and just go to a 2-2 compositional setup? Because the SMG is not really working out for him. Play on four. TJ gunning, smoking. No one's challenging and finding kills. Clayster on five. TJ still off the double. Gwyn already rotated to do. And Tough, this man. is going to be the biggest beatdown at hard point we've seen so far in the CDL. This is straight world star, bro. Like, this is a mismatch from start to finish, the way that Carolina are playing these respawns. Already 223, 27 points away from winning this entire series. 
You get some cruise missiles to get invested. Gwyn's gonna play slow towards backside of the gate side. He finds that first kill, and even if you're Carolina, just keeping them off of the point is already a job well done. Absolutely. And as much as this has not been brutal oh, by Seattle, God. you got okay. You got to look to Carolina and say, okay, this is exactly what we were hoping that we were going to get from the Ravens. After again, some tough losses in their first two games. You blow Seattle out of map one. You blow them out of map three, and now you're doing this on a map you haven't played yet before. I think the hopes around this Ravens potential should be a lot higher than their record currently reflects. Oh yeah, I agree. The only thing that they do tend to struggle with, and I'm completely mind blown that they struggle with, is search and destroy. Sure. You have s &D players from start to finish of this roster, and they just simply have not been able to figure it out. But it's only 10 seconds left until they're able to call series. Seattle Surge, great job. You're able to find a break, but it's only for five seconds. Now you're off the rotation. You are the team initially set up, and if you are Carolina Ravens, you can take your sweet time, hit all the way around the map. But Clayster sure. could even jump out the map and come back in if he decided he wanted to, as they have a nice little comfortable lead, only 10 points away. I will say, this is the first decent moment we've seen from Seattle, but no one's anchoring the back, so Glacier will get around, stuns will land. The hit from the outside does get quelled, so Seattle's still in. First 25 seconds are theirs, plus the follow-up eliminations going their way. Kind of almost feels like that round three in high rise where it's just like Carolina can do no wrong. It's just put the game away, please. Like, <laughs> what are we waiting for? But this P3 has been really solid for Surge as they will get past the 100 point club and have a chance to hopefully rotate. Yeah, hopefully they get a chance, but they or probably maybe. will not have one as they still have a couple players spawning in towards the back end. Abuza and RC is combined for two. Big couple of kills there, but it's Carolina just slowly but surely only needing five seconds to close out this game. They can no longer win it here at P3, so it's going to be forced over to towards V4 and Seattle started then the team early on. So how long can they hold? Hit around the back from P3 coming out from TJ, the rest of it from the front. Timing is not perfect though from Carolina and Seattle went out in the trades again. So where was this for the first five minutes of this game? You start to wonder as they do get past the 100 point mark and extra clearance kills come through. Seattle stringing together a couple of moments here. Yeah, they got a couple of good moments. You can just tell Carolina just like, let's just try to get this game over with. They dropped the teamwork strategies as all out individual plays. Someone pop a two piece to end this game out for us. So Seattle Surge are reading exactly what they're doing, but Gwen in a position now through side boxes can potentially take this player off the point. I don't think he's going to do so as the contest is still going to be here. So Seattle Surge slowly but surely showing some life, but now with only 13 seconds left, Carolina said, all right, it's done with this. Let's call this game over towards Bridge. They're going to yeah. be the team set up. First setup, like you mentioned there, but heavy stack from Seattle trying to hit this all together, and okay, that should finally do it. Then it will. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's just one of those times it's like, boys, can, can we just finish the last six seconds, please? Like, can we just hold this frame up, set up, get the hit? Okay. And you can kind of see just there from a moment, like, place just like, huh, all right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did all the heavy lifting early, boys. Let's finish those last couple of the reps off, and wow. It's still one of those things that I think you look at it when it was 230 to 40, and you say, man, Seattle's got to figure it out, man. They have to hit the reset button, bro. Like, this is a new roster. This is now a second series where they do four short. At least they walk away with the s &D here, but we got to go back into practice and just hit the reset on everything because the way that they're playing, not in sync, a whole lot of individual players trying to make plays, and when the teamwork aspect is not there, when you're playing against a team that's showing nothing but teamwork, the trades are abound. Like, these are what the score lines are looking like. Both HPs lose by 100. The control was faster than the flash. And now you're 0-2 on the stage with only one map win underneath your belt, and that's a terminal search and destroy where you're feeling good. But if you are Carolina Ravens, this is one that you definitely needed. You're sitting at to a total of 25 CDL points. Yeah. Now you jump up to 35. You put yourself from 12th to 10th spot, slowly but surely working their way back up. I mean, you could build a Walmart in that game flow Jesus. between <laughs> where Carolina got up to 200 and Seattle was still at 50. So beat down all the way through the hard point. And like you mentioned, you look at this series, if you're the Royal Ravens, you say, okay, we just got to play our numbers better in the search. I think the first three rounds were absolutely winnable. The two before that happened later. That's definitely one of those moments you look back on and say should not happen again. So some things to work on there. But again, I still look at this Ravens team outside of the fact they played Seattle and how they played Skid Row, how they played Rio. That's pretty much par for what we would see out of some of the top teams. So it's got to be feeling pretty hopeful in terms of what their potential is, Jay.
Oh, yeah, just stick to what you were doing. Obviously, you play all the top teams really close, but then when you play the lower teams, you blow them out like that. So something is going right in that camp for Carolina. Hopefully, they start stringing a couple wins together so that confidence continues to be installed in that roster. Well, there's our takes on our first series here on Sunday. We sent things back to the desk to give us theirs and, of course, set things up for match number two. The chat just wrote, blow it up. I don't know how to yeah. feel about this, Nameless. I picked Surge to win this, and that was based on the Ravens only having two wins. But we were talking about it. This is now three wins for the Ravens and only four losses with Foe on the squad. So totally different team since he's come in. Right, Al? Yeah, Puckett. Unfortunately, that was some misplaced faith in the Seattle Surge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to dab up my duo over here on the left because we called it as the Florida it. Carolina Royal Ravens getting every single respawn in this series. Did you and think it was going to be 100 points of I difference in not. hard points? Because I was... I did. It was blown out. 100 points I did not see coming. Well, I mean, I think, you know, coming into this series, it was just Carolina trying some new things that we were all as fans and viewers watching like okay it's time to do this like play Rio you have a good roster for it clearly this map works out in their favor and then also Skid Row is another map that's like rotation dependent and they have a great team that's shown great teamwork and they look good on that map as well so for Carolina Royal Ravens obviously going up against Seattle Surge they're not the toughest opponent I feel like they showed a lot of improvement here uh, coming into this they were number one in rotation in the last 30 days but also a very good team at breaking throughout the entire season so they put it all together in one series and this is the result and to that point being the rotation team i want to talk to carolina royal ravens fixing some of their own fundamentals when it came to hard point a lot of times in these series when they would play hard point they'd lose by about 20 points and they'd hurt themselves because they weren't being early on rotation and they were over committing to old hills and they go against the number one rotation team like Ann said in the seattle surge and what do they do they start early rotating somebody is making these calls and guess what they keep Seattle Surge in the box at under 150 points. I do have to say for the Surge, Alec had a great day, 14 and three in Search and Destroy. He dropped 25 for the loss in the final hard point, but the team was missing a lot of momentum early in that game, especially from Brezzy and Abuza. But it's time to celebrate with the Royal Ravens as we bring in the old man, the oldest in the CDL outside of me. Clayster, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Can y'all stop bringing that up? No, I'm not geriatric. I don't need a walker. Like, every time I watch the broadcast, all I hear is the oldest man in the league. He's got dust coming from his bones. Like, guys, I'm 31. I'm not that old. I mean, you're kind of old compared you're to that. Kind of old, bro. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, Clay, talk to me about the squad, and especially Gwyn. What is it like playing with these rookies? You always seem to find that young talent, and they pop off of your squads. Yeah, the team's been meshing well uh, lately. We actually have been focusing on our search and destroy more than almost anything else. We've been getting a ton of reps in search. Unfortunately, didn't show that series, but uh, it's just super nice playing with somebody as talented as Gwyn. Uh, he's a super low-key guy, super laid back, down to earth. Uh, so we've been getting him out of his shell a little bit, and I think it's honestly showing in his gameplay. He's been performing phenomenally. Clay, I want to ask you about the Rio in this series. So obviously it was our first look of you guys on that hard point, but also the last two hills. So you held them about 60 points the entirety of the game. You guys were out rotating them the entirety of this series. And then you kind of start, it almost feels like not panicking, but you wanted to close out the series as quickly as possible and going back to your old ways. What was kind of that final play call for that P5 of, hey guys, like, can we please just rotate and get those last five seconds? Yeah, uh, we should have won off the P2 and I streaked. Uh, I unfortunately got mapped across uh, the entire map by a sub uh, from Kyler. So we should have won off the P2, the P3, they held on to pretty well. And then P4, we were kind of just slamming front. We were up so big that it's at a certain point, once they got like 100 points, we're like, hey, just rotate early and we're gonna win the game. All we need is like six seconds. So just full rotate to one of these hills super early and we'll definitely close it out. Uh, Clay, I feel like Control, that game mode has sort of been your team's Achilles heel for the last two years now. Uh, in this series, you guys look incredible, especially on that high-rise Gwyn was going off. Uh, what is it about that that's given you guys so much trouble? Honestly, not sure what our problems in control were, uh, but I do know that we've fixed a lot of the issues that we did have. Uh, basically, just going like all dying at the same time, uh, not progressing up the map the correct way when we have kills, and really just trying to be a nuisance in their base. I think you saw it a lot from Gwen that game where he was just slaying super, super hard. Yeah. And honestly, Seattle let us get A off the rip again, like New York just did to them <laughs> last week. So I'm really confused why they let us do that again. Uh, you think that after losing A off the rip to New York last week in control that they would stop it this time. But we're like, yo, if we if we get it off the rip, we're gonna break them. Yeah, yeah. And what do you know we did? And we, we ended up 3-0 in them. So uh, we've been working on our control too, but it's a new patch, the new Hardpoint Hills and all this stuff. So it's actually a lot of stuff that we've been trying to fix and, and get cohesive on. And yeah. I'm just glad we finally showed it in a match. 
Clay, today you played against the top 16, believe it or not, in the surge. You guys are currently in the bottom until after we update this leaderboard. What are the realistic expectations for Royal Raven fans going into Miami? Uh, I don't think expectations are necessarily a good thing. I think that we just need to show up and take every match like as it comes. We need to play it day by day and not really worry about our points yet, not really worry about like, oh, we need to get top four, top six and all this. We need to just focus on winning maps. And with map wins, series win will come. And with that, CDL points will come. So we're just really trying to take it day by day and uh, not have any expectations. Mace to the face wants to know, Clay, what happens when you turn 40? Uh, apparently I'll still be slamming kids in Call of Duty, who knows? That's the answer you're looking for. Congrats on another win tonight, Clay. Hey, thanks guys. I'll see y'all. Royal Ravens getting the much needed dub, their third of the season, and they're now one and one in our major two qualifiers. We still have two more matches to go, and Allie, if people don't know who's playing, they should probably sync their calendars, right? You should probably sync your calendars. I mean, we've shown you this QR code quite a couple times now, but even if that doesn't work, you go to calldulyleague.com schedule and make sure you earn your squad up calling card. Match all of us on the desk and in production and game. Add your favorite team's 2024 schedule to earn. Boston versus Minnesota. That is the second battle here on our Sunday. Don't go anywhere. Call of Duty League continues after this. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. this up right it's the fourth matchup and you know we've seen you guys constantly in grand finals you guys came out and made that look easy yeah i mean i like i said we've been saying it online the whole time online respawns are different no sound eq we're a way different team and we just showed it right there also people seem to forget who built that camp i know how they play i taught those kids how to play call of duty so don't forget that all right like let's what do you think of my shirt today uh, it, it is a choice. It's a choice. Listen, guys, I put this shirt on. I felt pretty, I felt pretty sexy, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I looked in the mirror and thought, God, God, God damn. And then I got into the green room and everyone said, your shirt's too tight, you look like an idiot. And I was it's like, just a little too small, but it, it works. Welcome to the eSports Report. On this week's show, we cover the current COD League standings. The best he might. Or the Not going to happen. They get the plant down safely. I like the trigger discipline here for, oh, my sweet Jebediah. He's gonna yell for it. Oh. Try to catch the timing. Oh. Tries to ah, catch it. It's done. He sticks it. The rookie. Balls of steel. Benzo first, bro. Bottom of the list. We start with... I don't even know why am I on the list, bro. Is that Steve? Is that Mulch? That's Mulch. Oh my god. The first time I met Steve, he was playing for a team called the E Girl Slayers. No, no. At UMG Philadelphia. I think we throw him by the top of the next crowd. He's going to next to the behind me, baby. Let's go. Hey, Ben, relax. But to the right of the crowd, I think. Calm down. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks good to me. This list is unbelievable. This is a godlike list, I think. Player left. Push. Yeah. Watch the A bomb push. Oh my god! Won that round. Get ready for the next one. Shabba. 
He, he's he's got to be so happy. He finally doesn't have to worry about you're like a, getting first blood in round 11 on his team. You're like an adamantium werewolf. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! He couldn't get out, but he can do front flips. Oh, daddy's hungry! Oh my god! Riley takes him out, but oh, he got, it's dog on dog warfare! No! That was the most intense round of SD that I've ever casted in my damn life. We need by any means necessary everything i'm doing is legendary step in my office cuz i'm a boss not a secretary second to none i ain't got it really no yeah this is a rude awakening still got it on lock you ain't get in the combination about to shock the whole world i am ready to play from me to the back line from the hip get some more I'm just getting started. Time to turn it up. Going off in five, four, three, two, one. Pinch, the pinch. Get in. All three of them gone. Rocker. He's able to find another gunfight as he did the second oh, tip. He does. I'm coming with it. You feel it? I make it boom, boom. Deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it. Sleeping on the floor, Slash. wishing it was a mattress. This is now I'm in Hollywood Over with hackers and matches. Where everybody knows the latest trends and fashions. I'd rather keep it a buck, a hundred if you ask me. So I'm trying to pay some really, really great. Like get out of the base. I was trying to Act sell a couple plus kills, but like grace to make some for it. Like turning down two through bottom end. It's in my DNA to have hope and make a way. Well, Rocky for the first down low. He was trying to take it off. Big gold hit from the kills. Continue to go back. Not to be stayed in my lane. After Seattle's loss, that means Minnesota is still tied for fifth place with five match wins. On the other side, Boston, well, you're in the bottom three right now. Just three match wins this whole season, but you're starting to gain some momentum. At least that was until you played the subliners. Let's start here with Boston. Let's keep it 100. A buck, if you will, Allie. <laughs> Why do they yeah. struggle and when do they succeed? Well, they struggle mostly when it comes to that search and destroy, right? Like, this is a pretty respawn heavy team, but traditionally, like, you have Slasher on this roster, which is known as that guy when it comes to those two and five. So it's simply off the back of their attacks haven't been very good. They're last in the league in attack, last in the league in attack post plant. And even when they do win their opening duels, they are at bottom two and converting them. So they're getting first bloods and they're literally doing nothing with them. And I'm looking specifically at P Dog right now. He's going to be rocking a .64 in Search and Destroy, which is Yikes. just, it's uncharacteristic, right? So when it comes to the Monster Energy pregame, again, it's that SD that needs some cleaning up. I mean, I 100% agree. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Like, this is a team that is actually middle of the pack in hard point and top four, top five when it comes to control. They're good at every single map, so they have a deep map pool in the control game mode. It is literally Search and Destroy in a lot of these series. They are just folding, and a lot of it is on the offense. They have to take it slower at times, right? Like, take your time, try to get that first blood and the mid-round adjustments are extremely important. We saw it, you know, in their last match that they had up against New York. Some good opportunities early on, just not able to close it out. And that's what we're looking at the improvement for today. Slasher is going to have to be the guy go into the film session to get these guys on point. He's been a part of some great search teams in his career. Yeah, we just saw an interview from, I think, five years ago, letting Lando <laughs> know, like, I built these teams. I taught these kids how to play search. If they get to a game five, it could be tight. But if you're looking at recent numbers, a lot of signs are pointing to Minnesota getting it done earlier than that. Let's talk about the team yeah. you claimed is top four right there behind Optic Gaming. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Minnesota Rocker, they just have a really good roster, and some of the players are just, you know, performing right now. Lens has been great for quite some time. Viv has been solid all year. Accuracy is going above and beyond. Like, we're seeing prime Lamar once again. And, you know, that last series they had up against Optic, that was way too winnable. Like, 4-1, I feel like, should be the actual scorecard. Uh, just in the final moments of these games, sort of reeling it in. In a little bit. I mean, it got away from them at the end of that hard point. Obviously, there was a tough spawn, but so they were leading before that as well. They had potential to close that out. Uh, but game five, we've seen them a little unprepared in their last two series. That has to be better. Yeah, for Minnesota Rocker, uh, I think the biggest thing when it comes to this series is these two teams are actually really similar. They're both struggling in that search and destroy. So I feel like it's going to be whoever's having a better day and maybe even who's won the map vetoes on top of the other one. So for the Monster Energy pregame, it should be pretty similar to the Boston Breaches. Uh, everyone on Rocker is under a point. 
1.9 right now, except for Linz in that search and destroy. So maybe just get him some help. But they're right behind Boston, or right ahead of them, I guess I should say. When it says their defense needs work, they're 11th in win rate and 9th in defensive opening dual win rates, which is about half of the time, which is just unacceptable when, when you're on defense. You proved you can hang against the best. Can you beat the teams that are below you? I think our graphics person nailed that one because that's the question for me today. If Boston beats Minnesota, they're right back to that question mark that they were for me going into that first major. We find out, though, if they can establish some dominance early on as we lock in our scuff pickups. I'm going to go first. I'm picking Minnesota. 3-2. Can't be wrong twice in a row, can I? I feel like I've picked Minnesota. I mean, I've picked against Minnesota every single time that they've won, and I can't break that streak now, so I'm going to go with the Boston Breach in this series. Going Boston wow. Breach, okay. Yeah, she's got to catch up somehow. I'm going Minnesota Rocker. I think they take the series. They've looked so strong. He's got the lead. Can the fans catch up? They're also siding with Nameless and I. Let's find out what the casters think about this when it's time to get match two start. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, excited again to this one. I think it's a, it is a curious one, isn't it? I, I am definitely leaning the side of Minnesota, but Boston need to turn around sometime chance, and is this a potential opportunity? I would say so, right? Like if search and destroy has been the biggest weakness for the side of Boston, we've seen the game fives as of recent for Rocker. So maybe the opportunity is going to be there to take advantage. But I would have to say on just a positivity front, if you're looking at Rocker, you're feeling pretty good about this series. They've been going toe to toe against the very best teams in the game. And as Amos was talking about, like super winnable, almost unlosable. The situations that they put themselves in. I know ice has definitely been a problem, but you expect them to take care of business here in a series against Boston. That, of course, well, we have to find out a ton. We get a treat. We get three invasions in a row. Let's go used to the same style of gunfights for a long time and just go ahead and buckle in for p4 yeah it's going to be an interesting one especially with some of the spawns we're seeing coming through yesterday so we'll keep an eye on those coming through towards the palace side but very similar records across the season with both these two teams on evasion hard point so should be a banger that rotational percentage though for the side of rocker sending in around second is going to be an important one heading into this though can rocker continue off where they left it with hard point which you know things up against optic look pretty solid Linz was fantastic in that series when it will close it out on that map number five but i don't think they'll be hoping to get themselves over towards that side of things they don't want to close this one out nice and early but towards p1 a little bit of time being soaked up from the side of rocker but for you i mean for the side of boston who really needs to step it up here in the hot points uh priest i think would be the guy you're paying attention to really for all game modes but like he is a guy that is sort of like one of the ultimate flex players in call of duty over the past like five years like through the cdl era the guy can use every gun he can play at different speeds but so far uh, a bit lackluster and certainly after his most recent performance you want to see him crank it up but i know you already acknowledged those rotational battles snoopy is just by himself over by p2 opportunity to make the big play but he does not have any help Land in hand would have helped them for that gunfight against Vivid, but shots coming in from two different angles. All of a sudden, Minnesota Rocker can find that break. Should be more than 18 seconds very, very shortly with 60 to play for here. Rocker in a good spot, keeping an eye on the seam. He's going to be on the flank. Lynn's locking this down, gets gunned out of his stocks, and all of a sudden, this is a potential break now. Is he going to just take the time with the rest of the team to maybe try and find the push? And they start to make the move whilst the kill comes through onto his seam and awakening. For a moment, the only one left. Big guns coming out from Big Wake, though. Snoopy gets taken down 50-50 so far. Yeah, that is Big Wake indeed. Priest uh, just trying to do a lot of damage, getting exchanged on the downrange. A couple trades coming through, but also that ends well, and it does look like Rocker going to come out on top. I don't know if you read that spawn. Uh, that is two, maybe three players basically spawn up simultaneously with Priesta. So it looks like the scrap time because of that, more so going to go over towards Boston, who also get to stay ahead of the rotation. So the rotation is going to be the key over towards Showers. Awakening doesn't slip the net. They are going to spot him, a seam there to take him down. And Boston, this is your opportunity to run the score up. Showers, a true money hill, and they got the hold on it so far. Those palace spawns still coming through from Rocker. They're going to be very far away. 20 seconds is the gap, and that will, by the time Minnesota Rocker actually managed to get themselves over, that'd be pretty much eviscerated. Pressure now coming in through the mid map, though. Rocker starting to win a couple of finds that well. Boston are not going to enjoy. Priest needs to lock it down. Needs to find at least one on the cross here. We'll get awakening. Push going to come through. Laundry finds another as well. Nicely played. Vivid from the flank, though, is going to try and do something about this. Again, nice from Priest there. Much better. Seven and eight and three. He's able to pretty much shut that push down all on his own. Good shots coming through with the MCW, putting the pressure on now. Can't quite find these fourth, but did a lot of good work 
in those couple of moments for Boston. 20 seconds to go now over towards Showers. Looking pretty good for a full 60. Oh, nice jump up there by Snoopy. Common in search and destroy, but showing off the goods in hard point as well. Risa, a ton of credit on that rotation, and Snoopy, ton of credit on the gunfight. That's a four spree, and that is him at his very best. Thinking about the crews, 10 kills already, but Ton, we already know what's about to happen. Welcome to chaos that is this P4 Hill. Spawn management, it simply does not exist. <laughs> Good luck reading any of these coming through, especially over towards the Palace side. There's the first one. Nobody over there for Minnesota Rocker, so Boston Breach will start spawning up towards that side. Well, Minnesota Rocker will as well. Keep an eye on Palace and what's going on there. Snoopy will find one in the hill, one on the respawn. Vivid now just trying to lock something down. <laughs> Minnesota Rocker right behind them. Honestly, it's just, it's just very, very difficult for these teams to read. Hence, you don't get many points going over towards this P4 hill. Right now, nobody inside the hill, but it does seem as if Boston Breach are winning the gun fights. They're going to find more than a few. Titan now potentially on the board here. Linz is the only one who can answer back here for the side of Minnesota Rocker. Already thinking about the next hill with 20 seconds to go here at P4. Yeah, he's working on that Pierce. But in the meantime, this is actually, you know, halfway decent time that you're able to collect on P4. No, it seems it. been soaking up over by that uh, the motorcycle spot. He also had Snoopy going on a five spree along the way. Doesn't quite get the cruise, but still nice moves for Boston to keep that lead. But the long-term play has been Linz. He was the early rotator to get in the action. He'll be the first man to set foot on time. But you have Boston players crawling around him and Linz. All of his teammates are losing the gunfight. Pressure's on him to deliver. Can't get it done. Boston clean house and now Slasher on a five spree. Honestly, the fact that Slasher has died twice this entire map, a little bit insane. Yeah, the interaction's not quite there, but very much the cruise missile is. Nine and two. Nine, nine, how on earth is he only died two times? Vivid's died 12. Slash is starting a piece, though. Make it eight in a row. <laughs> now just locking down the street. Accuracy with some good shots in, but some good time for Boston. Once again, that lead has just all of a sudden started to climb. Sitting at around 60. Slash and I'll just continue to do some really good work. Make it nine. Can he find the 10th? Not quite before he is taken down, but eventually... Just falling on his sword. A brilliant, brilliant life coming in from Slasher. Gets the cruise missile. Good chunk of time for Boston on this hill. And the last. Really good work throughout that first rotation. Coming away with about a 70-point difference as we head into another rotation of hills here. Minnesota Rocker. I ah, need to be a lot better over towards P2 and P3. That's where the difference really has been made. Yeah, I think just the initial break that came through on P2 really sets you back. You get the Palisade spawns on the rotation towards showers. It can be a dagger. So Boston early on holding the game in their hands very well. Opportunity for the flank for Snoopy. He's going to get the timing as well through dark, but it does get red. I don't know if that's comms or awareness by awakening, but he's on point with it. Either way, Priesta, last man standing for the squad, takes two to the grave with them, but Rocker still at the time. They still have Boston spawning out on the deep right side of the map. Thinking about the comeback, this is exactly how you want the minimap to look for Minnesota Rocker. Admittedly still, though, final 20 seconds to fight for on P1. Try to get as much as you can, because you see Boston exchanging it for the rotation, but this is a similar story to last time, where it's just one player is able to get through. The pressure to try to make the big play, it's going to be on Priesta. Not an easy feat. He does get his first kill, but his teammates got eviscerated along the way. So Priesta dealing with basically the entire squad. He's taken down two for the moment, finally gets dropped, and P-Dog, that was a hell of an attempt, just not quite enough. Typical attempt, very much so. Couldn't quite lock it down for the rest of his team. Who maybe needed to find a bit more over towards the street side, but when you have a cruise missile, that's always going to help things out. Going to find at least one here, slash it, make it two. And now all of a sudden, that good work from beforehand. Well, has slowed down, setting it 14 and 8. But is reaping the rewards of that spree that he did go on. Snoopy now finding a couple of kills, but all of a sudden, Boston for what it seemed like they had loads of good pressure, a lot of good positioning. Kills came through, looked like a break was there, non-existent. Rocket will manage to hold on that gap which was around 60 or 70 is down to around 35 and now narrowing minnesota rocker looking good for the rest of the time here over towards p2 positions for p3 gonna start coming in now boston definitely in the favorable position but minnesota rocker have clawed their way back into this one that lead has been cut right down well, if the lead got chopped in half, basically now to a 20-point game, we go to the rotation. Boston is a full 60 last time. Let's go to a listen-in and see if they can do the same thing again. Lamar, I'm coughing, coughing one shot. Coughing Lamar dead. Coughing, I have a front, stay on time. I have a front, cross. Right on me, right on me. Dude. That's one down, look for the other three. Right dead. Nice, two. Right. Two, one, two, two, one shot. Yo, close on you, close on you. Wait, he's telling you. Let's go, small, small. Small, small, small. Four, 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 four. Make sure you block, make sure you block. One deep court, I'll go to it. One deep court, Lamar. We should be good, we should be good. Deep court, vivid. One shot. Yeah, we're good, we're good. 
I'm gonna kill somebody one bullet cap. In cap. Come on, Dad. Nice. One's deep street though. One's missing. 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 Managing to find another really good hold over towards the P3 side. It has been their moneymaker here so far in Invasion. And Slasher just continuing. 18 and 10 has definitely slowed down, but very much getting the job done with the AR here. But some time for Minnesota Rock over towards P4. Isn't necessarily crucial, but it would be nice. Spawns over towards Palace side. Which way are they going to stay? If you can keep them locked down, you can still get some time. Linz will eventually get taken out. But 30, 40 seconds is the game now. Boston Breach have stretched away once again, Chance. Minnesota Rock have just tr struggling to play catch up here. Yeah, hey, now this is a situation for Boston. You just play for kills. You could spread the map as much as you want. You could play as slow as you want. You get the right side spawns for that new rotation. You just want to keep Minnesota pinned back over towards Palace. And that is truly going to be the blender. You are stuck. The bridge is going to be cut off by a slasher. And you're just going to have to spend so much time to try to hunt this man down that that rotation is looking hopeless. Asim already pushing it out. Priest is going to be collecting that time in 26 seconds away. Boston in the game two players do spawn out so minnesota rocker if you push the pace you can make the break but you can see the hiding spots that boston have chosen they're playing for the kills to fall into their lap and priesta heads up on it getting the freebies and trying to keep minnesota away middle of these back spawns open but still stuck in the blender two players towards that back spawn it's very very tough now for minnesota rocket for all that they got the benefit of boston spawning out really good play from the players who were in and around the point just to slow that game down waiting for the reinforcements to come through and the potential win on the cards here now it's about 15 seconds for boston breach minnesota rocket one final good push down the street side. Accuracy will find one. Vivid over towards the middle of the map. Find Slasher. Good kills coming on through. It's down to Snoopy on his own. Final seven seconds. Not going to come through yet. Looking like Boston is going to have to wait for another rotation coming through. But is the damage already done? Rocket going to be so far behind. Need to be near perfect. If you want to close this one out with P1 coming up and how mixy that this can be. It's going to be very, very tough. But if you can pick up some time, keep Boston off it. Find a good rotation. Love it if buts and maybes. But there is still a route back into this game for Rocket, but they have to be perfect. Well, yeah, and for the moment, they are. Right now, they are keeping them completely contained. Everybody pushed out in the right spots. This is accuracy on a four spree, looking towards the left street and winning the gunfights as well. Does get traded out, but so far for Rocker, everybody in the right positions to try to keep these players contained. And Boston have really just been struggling to win any gunfights. The team kill might be enough for Boston to make this break, though. If it does trade them out, but still, the bodies are here. The flood is in, and Boston, five more seconds. They walk away with this game and minnesota rocker getting pushed too far back they called it game number one on invasion in boston making that early statement this is going to be a series really good play coming in from boston it felt like the damage was done in that first rotation of hills where the lead got as big as it ever was really now it's around 50 or 60 for the side of boston with a good couple of seconds over towards p2 a full 60 p3 and they never let the lead go inspirational first half from slasher coming through slowed down but it didn't matter minnesota rocker keeping it within 50 or 60 all the way through but couldn't quite catch up to the really good work that boston breach did towards the beginning of the game 32 and 21 from snoopy really really high interactions coming in from him finding the damage big game out of the youngster but again, I, I think, you know, when you get a hold of Slasher, getting a hold of that cruise missile, then may not have found much from that on that second rotation of hills over towards P2. But it does get Rocker off that point. It does just make things a little bit more awkward. You can't soak up that time. And all of a sudden, it could be a 20 or 30 point difference. Just due to Slasher going on a bit of a tear. Boston Breach is statement map number one, though. A good win to find. And it truly was like an interesting game, too. Snoopy obviously popping off just purely in the kills category. Both you had Slasher and Asim. The assists were crazy. But the fact that Slasher was 9-2 and two by, like, P4. Or, like, we went so deep in this game, and he had so few deaths that it is honestly just stand out as being strange. But I assume a lot of assists were rolling through. But 
it honestly just was map management. It was the fact that both of the Showers Hill, like the P3s that we saw, were effectively perfect full 60s coming out of Boston. Like the one true money hill that you can get on these maps, they deliver both times. So, I mean, again, they basically I mean, stuff from what 118 points to zero just about on those two hills so uh, that is simply unacceptable and if you're getting those early rotations and executing like that it's almost difficult to lose on invasion so uh, credit to the entire boston team of making sure to stay ahead of that rotation game but that's where the kills start or the score rather lights up that 97 to 135 jump the 144 to 198 spike those are just absurdities that you're able to see to massive hills coming through there from Boston. And again, just truly setting themselves apart. Really good job from Boston in the triple header of Invasion. Kicks off very, very well for them. 70 point game, they will take that, or 60 point game, that's just difficult. They will take that all day long. I'm playing in the search and destroy, and this has been their issue now, Chance. It hasn't necessarily, you know, been too bad in the whole point on the grand scheme of things, but Honestly, I was maybe expecting a little bit more from Rocker there, considering how well they did up against Optic, specifically on well, both maps. I mean, they looked fantastic on Rio against them, came to sub base. It was obviously very, very close to the win on to lose that, but going up against one of the best hardpoint teams in the game, they made it look good. Going up against Boston, they struggle. So heading into Search and Destroy, they absolutely need to make sure they capitalize on what has been the weakness here for Boston. Absolutely. I think like, you know, they seemed a little bit flat for the most part, but I think the way the map was being handled on the rotations, they didn't have a lot of options. Like even on that final P1, when Rocker got into that like little flow state, they strung together a little bit, but Invasion is not a kind map again, especially just like two incredibly important rotations. So not a fun one there. I mean, good news again, Search and Destroy. Boston has been one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the league at the game mode. But I do think this is a... Uh, Maybe a bit of an intimidation factor right now coming through Rocker. Not a fun spot to be down 0-1 because, again, they're Search and Destroy. On map two, it's been fine. But overall, they've had some <laughs> glaring weak spots. Really just in the clutch, too. Not even necessarily on, like, the mid-round adjustments. It has genuinely been, like, a falter in those final moments sort of thorn uh, in Minnesota Rocker's side. So this is uh, really the team that you want the opportunity to clean it up against. Boston, not typically the team that's pushing the pace there in search and destroy. Two players that have been absolutely stand out, though, in the game mode. Slasher, SD, his bread and butter, one of the best SD players of all time. Uh, his KD so far has been fantastic. His damage output has been great. First Bloods, I think he maybe has like two of them under his belt, but he's one of both, so he's been solid. On the flip side, Linz has been a monster. Like, rookie of the year candidate for sure. Uh, some of the performances he has strung together, honestly, he is looking like you know maybe in that conversation for mvp as well obviously a long way to go but lens has definitely been the guy most on point for minnesota he's definitely gonna stand out i tried to claim him as european the other day but you did shoot me down saying of course i mean again no, yeah. technically european but like there's no reason to, <laughs> to be that like broad with oh, it. Man. he's from earth you know like let's just <laughs> let's take it there he's a human like Oh man, we we don't we don't have any much going on anymore, man. The, the last thing we need something to hold on to and just well, let you me grasp British, the straws. You are British. You get insight, and you should take him with open arms, right? <laughs> I'll He's take it and incredible. run. I'll take it and run. Invasion search and destroy. Then looking over towards our last two outings for either one of the two teams were losses, unfortunately. So let's see if one of them can turn it around. Of course, so they will. But for Boston, see around four. That's what you want to see. Defense over towards the B side. Looking pretty solid, but the team finding the first blood as well. Take that all day alone, the angle. Just been quite distant there from where it seemed was. Is able to find it from the mid-map with the MCW. Oh, this is three in the favor of Boston Breach. And Rocker trying to work something down the street. Not going to happen with those first couple of bullets that come on through. Boston holding tight so far. Yeah, Boston are suffocating as well. They just played so aggressive on the defensive end. And I mean, Priest are making moves. That man on the heat map just ran all the way up the showers, getting shots through over towards like the old P1. Now he's right back to the bridge, but that is a four versus two. Oh. Make it a nobody getting a kill for Minnesota. The invasion momentum continues. And again, that is Boston playing at a lightning pace off the jump. Zero time wasted in round number one. Obviously, in round number one, no trophies. The only team that was able to take advantage of it, Boston, with that final Semtex kill. So, again, Asim, first blood he gave able to collect in the first 10 to 15 seconds. Priest there for the follow-up, pushing down A Street. That is Boston playing with some serious confidence. And, again, that is exactly what this team needs.
That didn't look like the 12th rank search and destroy team to me. Not on round number one, at least. Really good job, but one round does, does uh, not make it to search and destroy. And let's see which way it does end up going. Boston now heading over towards the B side. And I think what you were saying was right. They were still sort of getting over towards, especially B Street. You can see accuracy now over towards the digger. He's going to hold it down from there, but tagged up from the stones. Boston may well take advantage of this. Smoke down over towards the tank side. May just be a distraction. Accuracy will do well to find anything. Finds one. David going to have to get out. Does have a little bit of backup now, but the site has been overtaken by Boston Breach. No opportunity to get it down just yet. Awakening will find Slasher in the mid-map. It's a 2v2. Yeah, that was a good smoke. I mean, you had accuracy. Basically getting zero help from his teammates there. One line of sight blocked off, and the reinforcement's not super quick. Bomb is going to go down. Not a fun bomb site to retake. Vivid right now in this moment. Waiting for Awakening just to work the pinch. I mean, it is common spots being played right now for Boston. Priests are really the guy that Awakening has to sniff out. And that's going to be maybe the kill that just decides the round. Because if you find Priest, you just collapse on Snoopy. Nice moves from Awakening. The horrible timing, though. Priesta just going to slam that door shut. That might be the gunfight to win the round unless Vivid can pull off some magic against Snoopy. Good luck in this gunfight. 15 seconds. First bullet's in. Going for the Charles. Snoopy is there, though. Sees him through the window. No problem. The snap from Vivid for the first was monumental, but he's not able to get rid of Snoopy behind the digger. It is always a difficult one. Plays his time. Takes his time. Rival nine from that. Two window panes and shot. Stopping those shots. Boston, looking good so far. And honestly, I think, you know, it took Awakening so long to clear out down that B street. That priest that knows exactly what's going on, right? You haven't seen anybody from the front side. You kind of probably have a little bit of info. There will be somebody over towards Palace. There's got to be somebody flanking, right? There's got to be somebody yeah. coming from behind at some stage. So good reads coming in from Boston to do the good. With the pressure on the clock, yeah. COD timing is going to be on yeah. this side more often than not. But still unlucky for Awakening in that moment. Either way, two very confident rounds coming out of Boston again. There were no trophies on the side of Rocker. They just ran it down at B. The stuns and nades and smokes on point. So effectively using their utility on evasion. That is what you need. And now Rocker, the A site, it's sort of halfway open. Number two and number three, Priest and Slasher can make moves and be very quick to check down these alleys. That's why Vivid trying to slide in position, keep his pressure up, keep Slasher at bay. So far, so good. No one's fallen just yet. Baiting out a lot of nades and tacks, but Vivid is just in the middle of war at the moment. Boston lighting it up on the tack feed. Oh, accuracy has played this well down B Street, though. A lot of utility being used by Minnesota to well clear out the sight lens from the flank. Will not find one, but two. All of a sudden, Priest there left an awkward little spot. Good shots coming in from accuracy. Rocker eventually on the board. Slow and steady on this attack, waiting for their moment. But as soon as it came, Lynn stri strikes in. All of a sudden, the round falls their way. Good bounce back from Minnesota. It didn't quite catch every single kill. At least I missed it in the feed. But I know accuracy picking up the kills on the flank. You win the wing gun fights. It makes your teammates breathe that much easier. And Linz didn't see the first. But obviously on the second, just a good read. Snoopy was trying to make the play. Found the timing to get through B-Dom. But the awareness there in that moment for Minnesota Rocker. On point. Nice little bounce back round. They're able to collect. And now that they have the trophies, maybe a little bit more stable on defense. Boston going to have to slow the pace down. And... Maybe pick a new avenue of attack. You can see it leaning towards this A site. Minnesota Rocker, that's three players leaning down B Street. Linz in position, first blood. It is done perfectly already. Advantage in the round. In and out, gets the kill, dips back to a safe position. Perfect start to the round. And now all of a sudden, Boston are curious. Did Linz push forward? Did Linz drop back? No information there. Now have to be very, very careful. Vivid pushed up. Towards the tank too. Boston Bridge now starting to play together. Well, there is definitely threats incoming from a couple of different angles. Awakening. Having a little look down the street. Well, no doubt want this fight against Slasher. My word, Slasher will just get his head down. Doesn't want any of that smoke with those shots coming on through. Boston looking for another route to maybe get something done here. But 30 seconds to go. They need to start moving. Snoopy won't win the gunfight. Looks like he got the first bullet in, but Vivid. We'll punish him. Accuracy finds another. The round is pretty much done. It's Priest and now left in a one versus four. Not looking likely. A great start from Boston. All but nullified by Minnesota Rocker. And as soon as Linz finds that first kill, Rocker in a fantastic spot. And Priest are going to really struggle here now. Pushes to Vivid. Finds the round for Minnesota Rocker. Nice play. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, super good setup as well that they had after they get the first blood. I know for Minnesota, something accuracy talks about, like... Uh 
after their sort of like online stages in stage one where they weren't performing they were just really talking about needing to get that system together i think we've seen their system on all these maps looks fantastic the system can obviously break down in those very mixy clutch sort of moments that are like sort of atypical you don't get that experience in scrim so i think that's where minnesota is faulted but in that round, they get the first blood, and then their setup is perfect. Both ARs on both long lanes of the map. The two SMGs playing on the tank to watch over each other. Literally as good as you could possibly want to get it. So Minnesota, again, very well-orchestrated team, at least when things are easy. Now back on the round, Lynn's maybe dancing with the idea of sliding out to the tank, but Boston, again, very aggressive. I mean, a double stack on the A-bomb, a guy in the mid-tank as well. That does mean Snoopy completely by himself, though. And Snoopy might be the guy to try to make the big play. Can you hunt this man down? He's playing sneaky because the pressure's on him. Oh, he hasn't checked it. He hasn't fully checked it. Snoopy is still here. Oh. Lynn spots him. There you go. Eventually, he does get a hold of it. So Boston were very aggressive on the defensive side of things over towards B. They sort of let it go and make pre... Well, Snoopy just have to deal with something over towards that side as Priest is able to answer back three versus three but we'll only be expecting the full flank push coming in from every member of boston this bomb now going down over towards b boston gonna go for the 3v3 retake but rocket i think they've got a good idea where they're coming from yeah i think they've spotted at least two players on boston there might be one player mia but lynch should be able to spot him towards the middle map you see it seems tagged up so they got the intel all three you know what's coming down b street Almost like a round of control, but accuracy keeping these players at bay. The gun is going to be a little bit too hot. Priestin does get that initial kill. Now accuracy might be isolated, but he gives you two. And that might be the stamp on the round. You don't want to give him that cruise, though. For Slasher, that is not the player you die to in this moment. Kill accuracy if you can, but if you're going to die, make sure it's to Linz. And Linz going into hunt it. And Slasher at least does his job in the moment. You don't get the round, but you kill the cruise missile potential. So a nice one there for the vet to come in and maybe unfortunate for accuracy. But either way, did his job on that round. Nice little bullying of the B site. Maybe just reading the map pressure as well. Because you had Boston stacking the middle of the map there in the moment. But here's your second look. Players just line up. Accuracy. He has a history of that. <laughs> it's a team in green as well. Don't want to bring up any memories, you know, but you were trying to be subtle with it, but I'll just nail it home. Rocket now, three runs in a row. After a shaky start, uh, bringing this one back for all that accuracy was on for the cruise missile. Now Lindsay's. So keep an eye on what he tries to make a move with throughout the beginning of this round. We'll probably just put himself in an awkward spot for a guaranteed kill. And it is looking like that guaranteed kill could be heading his way. Simico considering a push over towards A. A little bit of purchase over towards the B Street, though. Could be something to consider. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the... Oh, maybe not the play call from Sim. Working A Street, still trying to feel this round out. A Street is effectively left open as well. If you want to make move that direction, you see number two wrapping back. So they're going to try to work this way through mid. Again, Linz is the player to watch on the five spree. One more kill of Cruz can be devastating on this map. And he's there got it. it. And there it is. The seam falls, and all of a sudden, the fourth round in a row is looking likely here for the side of Minnesota Rocket. Shot's going to go in over towards the B side. If accuracy can just stay alive, the reinforcements should be on their way, but he does want better. Priest inside of Dark, taking down as well. Make it seven in a row from Linz to finish off the round. Minnesota very much into this one now. It's four rounds in a row after a really good start from Boston. Rocket turning it on. It's all just kind of the plays being made by Linz, right? He's finding first bloods. He's dipping out. He's being that awkward SMG for Boston to deal with. And they just can't get a read on him. And I would say for Boston, the most success they've had is like the aggressive rounds that they brought to the table, both on the offensive defensive end. They're slowing the pace down and the reads they're making on the map, a little bit strange, right? They go and check a street left wide open. So they say, hey, that's open. Let's run straight into where we think they're going to be. Uh, and they did ran straight into death and gave away the cruise. Lynn's right now on a seven spree. He's feeling fantastic. And maybe Minnesota off the back of it. You see the play call just waiting for the timing to call on the cruise, force these players indoors and see if you can find an errant kill. His teammates just took the space in a cafe as well. So many players outside by Palace. That's going to be at least one freebie. There goes Priesta. Accuracy does get blooded in the meantime, but at least you get the bomb plant down for the 3v3 over by the A site. See if Rocker can clutch up. Oh, this is going to be tough. Lynn's now in the action as well after the Christmas Isle hits. 
Slasher probably spotted Vivid there. Vivid gonna have to reposition, although he didn't know because Linz hasn't turned around. So Slasher, there's potentially something on the flank that could be done here. 25 seconds time, starting the take awakening, being pressured now. Slasher should have a dead to rights, but Vivid will find one. Slasher managed to clean it up, but Linz is there for another. Vivid finds two. And Minnesota Rocker hold it down. Cruise Missile invested. Round Gint. And, you know, maybe not the biggest fan of accuracy trying to push the street in that moment to look for a slasher so he might fall. But in the meantime, you get the bomb down, still going to be a massive advantage. You get the A street control as well. Uh, and make no mistake, Vivid absolutely saw a slasher on the cross. Linz knew that he's going to have to turn around at some point. Uh, and they orchestrate it well together. So very efficient rounds. Linz continues to pop off in search and destroy. So the stat before you know coming in with a 1.4 in search now he's nine and two so he continues to lay down the law now at the mcw maybe he's gonna be aggressive down the a street or maybe he's trying to feel this out double chat in the middle good luck with this one trying to read it both kills fall into big wakes lap the play call is perfect in boston no hope anymore in this round it's falling apart sasha will stop lens on the tether that he's been on but he probably will be stopped himself accuracy finds the kill and Minnesota have come roaring back into this game. Accuracy finds Priester. One apiece. Rocker bounce back in the search and destroying. The woes continue for Boston. That's now six in a row in search and destroy that have resulted in losses. Minnesota Rocker bouncing back nicely. Map two search and destroy hasn't been a problem. Map fives have been. But we're a long way from that just now. Control going to be coming up next for Boston. I think it will be disappointing because they had such a good start too and off. Minnesota Rocket just ran through them after that, though. It, it was too aggressive play calls early on as well, right? On defense, just running at them. The next round they had on offense, using the tags, using the nades, pulling out the B site. And after that, just suffocating. I mean, Snoopy only being able to do 500 damage is a, a little bit wild. The fact that he got four kills is kind of impressive with that little damage. Maybe shout out to the five assists that Asim had in the moment. But either way, two aggressive rounds is not going to be good enough. Minnesota, after the fact, picking him apart not really pushed in any of the rounds every single play call pretty much easy lens an awakening it felt like the kills quite literally just falling into their laps Maybe the only spicy one was when accuracy was able to line them up and pick the two piece over the b side but either way tied up series one to one for the moment get one search and destroy out of the way that answers the question for boston the improvement still not there we'll see if the respawn bounce back is in for minnesota Invasion control is going to be coming up very, very shortly. Can Minnesota find themselves the lead or can Boston bounce back after another poor showing in the search and destroy? Find out on the other side of this break. up your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store the call of duty week is brought to you by monster energy the official energy drink of the cdl
Well, Boston going to have to try and bring this one back from what was a tough search and destroy. Of course, the series is tied up, so don't necessarily need to bring it back, but they need to bring back some sort of performance that was resembling what we've seen in map number one because that was solid. But again, search and destroy seems to be the crux for this Boston Bridge side right now, setting as the worst team in the CDL, statistically at least, in search and destroy. And we got a good glimpse of it there. Two really good rounds to start things off, but as soon as Minnesota Rocker had the read, it was all but done. We stay on a vision for the third time in a row, then we go over towards control. Do Minnesota have it in their locker here to find the lead in this series? They would be disappointed not to be two to zero up. No one going into the half point, they would have been feeling confident, and especially in the search and destroy, they would have feel nice about that. But heading into control, the series is all tied up. I'm sure they'll still be feeling confident here, though, Chance. This is going to be the defensive shootout, yes. I do agree that they're going to be feeling confident in a sense, I suppose. Actually, I don't know anymore. Yeah, like yeah. for the confidence of these two teams going to game five, you have like the stoppable force versus the movable object in a sense. So I kind of want to see the game five just to see uh, who steps up to the plate or who completely breaks down. But either way, the swing game mode that quite literally might decide this series. Well, that is a way to start it for Boston. I like the idea for the A hit, but good Lord, the one fear you have is you might end up in the spawn trap because now you are just stuck all the way back in Palace. Accuracy, oh. uh, he's been pretty good this year about sort of being an annoying island player to work the A site. Boston having none of it. This is the one downside to trying to going off A on the break is you do get stuck in the spawn trap. This is the blender. Oh, welcome to it. Awakening now, going to try and find himself a way out of seam. Three in a row. Four in a row, maybe well be heading his way, but they're just trying to go pick themselves out of this one. Minnesota Rockets and open spot. Priest are just getting aggressive now, and they are just putting the hurt down whilst they can. Want to try and not be maybe too overzealous with this because all of a sudden a potential opening over towards the A side. Vivid is going to manage to find a way through. Big gunfight going to come here. Is he going to expect it from a seam? Vivid shots in. Seam has a little bit of help, but Awakening will find the shots down the street side. Priester is here, but so is Vivid. Still push over towards the A side. Vivid, unfortunately, will not have any extra help. And we'll have to do this all on his own here, Chance. Yeah, he's got the nice spot as well, jumping up on the plate, but he's worried about the pinch. You know, Slasher was out of the top side of the map, and he just dealt with all three. Long term, that could be good news yeah. since they got a single tick, and they open up the pressure over towards B, but still with 20 seconds on the clock, if you're Boston, you fly at them in this moment. You push the pace and try to stop both the ticks. You could have a massive round on defense, but you do have to stabilize. First tick is going to be through on B. Double stack coming through, and they have ceased winning gunfights. Slasher, the next man in line him and priest are trying to work this b zone Cruz Marcel's already been gained by Slasher in that previous life that, well, was just down to the spawn trap that was ensuing onto Minnesota Rocket. They have managed to fight their way out of it, but only two players left on the B point. We're going to have at least three ticks coming on through. Awakening will fall, though. Good shots coming in from Snoopy. Linz could do with staying alive. Just puts the pressure on. I like that play from Linz. Now the rest of Minnesota Rocket are on their way. Nine seconds. The team's going to try and cut off the head of the snake. The reinforcements on their way in. It looks like they've been dealt with Boston. Going to hold defensively here unless Awakening can, well... Find a miracle, but three ticks in for Minnesota Rocker are irrelevant, so it's a kind of a standard push in the control coming on through, although maybe a little unconventionally. That push at the beginning of the round that was maybe the beginning of the downfall didn't work out in their favor, and Boston punished them. All things considered, though, the only yeah, sort of bad thing about that round from Rocker is just the cruise missile that Slasher got, which obviously a cruise missile could be massively impactful on this map. So that is not an ideal situation at all. But as you called out, three ticks is more or less the standard. You might not get one full zone, but it is the segments that we care about. So I'd say for as that started, you cut your losses. That's not the worst thing to deal with in the world. You got Boston again, maybe playing with a similar idea. Spread the map. See if you can get that sort of opening over towards A, but that door gets shut. B1 not wide open. The pressure on. Minnesota fighting. Slasher trying to keep things even kill. Does his job from up top. Those are big kills to get. His teammates, though, can't quite deliver. Now he's going to be dealing with the pressure through Dark Alley, so Slasher's got to jump off and keep playing for kills. Slasher is very much enjoying Invasion right now, but Minnesota Rocker looking to try and answer back here in the control with their own defensive round. Let's have a listen in with the comms with Minnesota Rocker. Nice. Austin's there. Missing Ace. I did the thing. Ace could be missing. Ace might be down. I'm 
I'm gonna shoot me. Hard in. Another one here. Ice cream. Ice cream. He's here. Watch out. 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 Watch out.
Big Wake still does have that cruise missile in the back pocket. So if you're sort of a, a gambler. If you're playing the odds right now, maybe an 80 or 90% shot for Minnesota Rocker to win this map. They have all of the advantages. Boston are going to have to dig deep, pull off something impressive. They absolutely have the utility to work with, but the execution around that cruise is going to need to be on point. One good air push here, though, from Boston Breach. And all of a sudden, things can turn on its head very, very quickly. But I don't think they inspired me necessarily in the first attacking round to make me think that that could potentially happen. Let's see if they can manage to formulate something here, Boston. They've definitely, I mean, look, you've had a couple of players go on streaks. You've had moments here and there. Cruise missile apiece. Take it over towards the B side immediately now for Boston Priest. They will open up things with the first blood. Actually, a push over towards this A side as well. So B should be free because Minnesota Rocket are going to have to answer this. Priest that finds his way in. Definitely going to have to answer now. You have one player here in Awakening who's going to deal with Slasher. Does he find the second? Not quite. Priest that there but on his heels. And Boston choosing to just give up beats. Come over and help Priest there, who may not need it. Good shots coming on through. Linz will be weak, but it doesn't matter. My word. Snoopy gets dealt with. They jump off B to help out at A. I bet you wish they hadn't. That's so unfortunate, man. I mean, Priest quite literally does make the play, and then Linz just responds with a play of his own. And what could have been it? Now you're just stuck in such a bad spot. You already got number five, Linz, pushed out towards the bridge. You heard his comms. He's one of those triple call-out kind of players, but he's going to be spamming it in-game, letting his teammates know that they're flooding the B Street. Anyone that doesn't is going to fall by his hand. And this is just so incredibly oh, annoying wow. to deal with. And now if you're Boston, you got to call him the cruise missile. You got to try to make a play off the back of it. But like, what can you even think about doing? The map spread in control right now that Minnesota has. I mean, this is impossible. Do you maybe choke it up in terms of the cruise missile and just sort of say, all right, let's save it to see if we can get something going. The problem is you're going to have another one to deal with Linz now. Yeah. Cruise missile on his side of things for Boston. I don't think this is obtainable. Cruise missile or not. Team kill definitely, definitely not going to help things out either. Minnesota Rocket, almost a flawless defense. Incredible round coming on through. There's actually flows, not a single tick going over towards Boston Breach. Phenomenal from Rocker to send us to a round number five. And defense will well and truly be theirs. And based off the two attacks that we've seen from Boston, they ain't got a hope, but they do have a cruise missile. There is always opportunity. This is Call of Duty after all. But can they find something? They haven't offered us any examples that that might potentially happen outside of Priest. They're making some big plays over towards A, but it felt like a flash in the pan. Well, if Linz doesn't pick up that two-piece, I mean, it's not a guarantee that they win the round or capture the True. A zone, but they at least keep the pressure up. I don't think Minnesota Rocker players were quite there off spawn to get that instant trade. So make no mistake, Linz does make the play in that round to respond to Priest's sort of mini hot streak, but... As you pointed out, Boston, this is... They were already having to do it. It is dig deep time. It is fine to play around the cruise missile. And it is now three players working towards A. It's been Priest up more or less by himself down the A street. Now you get all the reinforcements. The Nate Smoke going to block off a couple different lines of sight, though. So a player makes it through towards A. You win a couple of these gunfights. It's only one player on it to stop the clock, though. But Awakening is shooting at go. So this is so many players. This is your opportunity for Boston. Here we go. First takes already in accuracy. Can do well to find one. Now he finds the second. Now Linz is here. Just going to slow things down. Priestel will hop off. Needs some help from his teammates. Linz or does he can find one. Bit of laundry control for a seam store far, but that should have very well protected. And he will be able to back on down. But for Minnesota Rocker, you are able to just about slow that push down. Once it comes in, though, for the side of Boston. We're now able to freely make their way over towards B. The life advantage in their hands. Still with a cruise missile as far as I'm aware. Lin's going to invest his. Doesn't oh. hit anything. And all of a sudden, that's an investment for nothing. One of those cruise missiles is already gone. Boston Breach making some work over towards the B side. So good start here for Boston in the round that they need. Oh, it's opened up. It's opened up completely. Three players already down from the side of Rocker due to a team there coming in. And now a seam can start to farm. Finds one towards the A side. This is a disaster for Rocker. I see those uh, play for kills. You don't want to go to actually stop the clock because the B zone is going to be doing it for you. As long as you are alive here, the pressure that he is putting on the other team is just going to be astronomical. Finally, the cruise missile gets invested. Nice moves to pick up two kills as well. And it seems still alive in the back, forcing the spawn out. 
And Minnesota right now have to deal with the seam sooner rather than later. You've got number three slasher behind enemy lines as well. Maybe a little mini round of S and D. You see the Awakening Cruise Missile finally coming through. So they know. Still though, he is dragging this attention. Any kill he gets could be huge. Still delivering in the back as a seam. Now Minnesota Rocket, what did he do? Did they pay attention? They just leave him and just start to farm everybody else and try and keep them at the back. It's such a hard decision to make because the seam eventually is just going to make his way over towards A and make you answer him. It, it, it ton. He kill. just needs to go stop yeah. the clock. He's still playing for kills, but if it's 18 versus 11 on lives, I know it's tough because he is not getting the help, but you could win it one of two ways, but you take too long and Linz picks you apart again. Boston, you are back to square one. Five lives is now the difference. It was at one stage about 13. Minnesota Rocket have pulled this one from the fire. But once again, a player from Boston has made his way through. Snoopy has slipped the net. The problem for him is that the rest of Boston Breach are well and truly in the palace. Slasher goes down to Vivid, who was getting very, very aggressive. Now, do Minnesota Rocket have a read on this because of spawns coming on through? Snoopy towards the back. Yeah, they spot him. Lens is going to be the one to try and deal with him. One more opportunity now for the side of Boston Breach. You've got to read this accuracy holding his irons. Can he find the second under Priester as well? It'd be huge for the round if he could. Not quite. Priester finds him. He's going to be still towards this back side. Lens is having to pay attention to the rest of Rocker. They're going to have to deal with the push that's coming in from the front now. The kill's starting to fall their way. Slasher will find one. Snoopy was taken down towards the back. Six seconds to go. If you're Boston, you just got to hightail it. The same will find one. He's not going to be close enough. Minnesota Rocker hold it down. Round number five win, find themselves a lead in the series. And that is honestly an insane invasion game, but that is the defense special. Boston had opportunities. I mean, they created a couple different looks, but obviously it is incredibly difficult to actually orchestrate those A hits. So not quite able to get it done. Uh, just to backtrack for a moment, I also do not know how Linz's cruise missile doesn't kill at least one person. I don't know what it hit that it exploded that yeah. high up in the air. I've never been able to shoot one down in this game. I don't even know if it's possible. I'm just not a good enough player to have that <laughs> intel, but whether it got shot or he hit some random wire, Linz's cruise missile being ineffective was a massive opportunity for Boston, but obviously Awakening had his as well. 5,800 damage from Awakening, 32 kills as well. He was feasting the entire time. 25 non-traded is fantastic. And Linz might have gotten negative, but 12 assists. And he had a bunch of different gunfights that were a massive impact, especially on the defensive end. So a lot of credit to the Rocker players as we go back through the highlights. And the highlights will show that while Boston Bridge had really nothing in the attack in their first two opportunities, at least, and show some signs of life and round number five, but just not able to make it count. There was definite opportunity there. The biggest opportunity we've seen for an attacking round so far. It feels like we won these two sides over five rounds of invasion. It didn't fall their way. They want to lose the map, but yeah, it, it sometimes can go that way, right? You can have two absolutely stinking attacking rounds and things haven't worked out. And all of a sudden you're having to attack for the third time in the game. And you can just find one break. I think that's what's so fun about control is that I mean, we've had a few years now, of course, but you can get to the point of where it can all look so gloomy. But one four down and you're looking good all of a sudden, you can find that final round and it can get turned on its head very, very quickly. Boston had the opportunity and just did not take it. That's a huge moment in this series. If they find that attacking round, you're heading into a sub base that Minnesota Rocket, although closely up, just lost the other day. You're feeling good heading into that. You definitely don't want to see him out number five, but now they're the Rocker. So all of a sudden, you would have been in a nice position, but as it goes, Boston can't close it out. Big players coming in from Linz. I think a couple of occasions he dealt with Snoopy and it seemed towards the back garage and just a really, really good job coming in from Rocker to hold down the defense. But yep, opportunity was definitely there for Boston. I will say I would love to see a game five. That would be fantastic from my point of view, but I know Minnesota absolutely do not want to deal with their third map five in a row. They want to close it down in the hard point. I believe it's going to be Karachi su sub base, excuse me, that we're going to. Uh, and I think it hasn't entirely been the best map for Minnesota overall, but this is going to be the first look, I believe, for them in this new split. So as mentioned before, this is a team that they've done a ton of homework to really figure out the system that they want to put in place. And it'll be the first good look for their new system on sub base as well. I believe a 1-0 record on the flip side for Boston. So haven't seen it a ton. I know if map one is going to tell the story, though, Priest and Slasher shooting back quite well on sub base. You need your ARs in the power positions basically the entire game. So those will be the two players to look out for as we load up in the map. 
understand. I, I mean, we got a, a good chance to see it from Rocker uh, when they played it on against Optic the other day. It was a close game, wasn't it? It was like the five point game. Dashi coming back, managing to find it, sending us to the map number five. So that's their last outing. So can they maybe try and turn something around? Because I mean, I mean, candidly, a couple of spawns here and there, they really didn't get blessed with it. Can they close it out here? But the zero and three record across the season is not good viewing. Boston Bridge will feel happy about that advantage, but realistically speaking, who knows which way this one goes. Boston were really good map number one, though. If they can carry that over, some good rotations coming on through, we will be seeing that map number five. We've had a few already, Chance. I mean, it's been a good weekend for us in terms of the map number fives. I wouldn't mind a third one. Quite a few. Minnesota really uh, providing that map five service for us, I'd say. They've been uh, <laughs> going above and beyond. The number of reverse sweeps we've already had just in stage two alone, we've like tripled up the number throughout stage one. So team's doing a better job of fighting back. That is exactly what Slasher is going to have to do on this map. I know a lot of that from Slasher, by the way. I mean, it, it was like the land performance that is one single game that they have had. Uh, and he dropped the 1.94. So again, he was shooting back map one. Uh, absolutely be on the lookout for him here again. And on the, uh, they're in the snow. Minnesota might be home for them, but as you pointed out just a few days ago when they were playing against Optic, did come down the wire. Those are the things Minnesota want to avoid, and that is a peach of a nade there from Accuracy. I assume had some help from a teammate, but Kobe's always feel good. Kicking things off here over towards P1. A little bit of a mixy one, but Boston Breach with a few kills is definitely going to work out for them. A couple points now, inevitably going to onto the board awakening now is already going to try and stretch out over towards this side of the map shots from a seam very solid though to stop any overextension over towards these p2 potential spawns coming on through but boston nice little start it feels like they maybe need a, a good start there because there was opportunity there there will be that lingering sense of opportunity but good shots coming in from a seam but the opportunity in, in map number three was definitely there they're looking to try and make up for those mistakes you're in map number four and i tell you what the gunnies are hot so far Plenty of kills coming on through for the bump side of Boston Bridge. Of course, over towards P1. It's not necessarily the easiest to find the time, but P2 looking quite sweet as we're popping over towards that in a couple of seconds. Boston have like the, uh, the the complete clearance around this new P2 hill. You got number four, Asim, spawning in the back so he can watch the flank. Everybody else, it is guns forward. Slasher on a three spree as well, but a bit of a tight setup over towards new. That's number four. Side door going to be open, though. Accuracy finds the timing. He gets through, and he picks up the big two as well. The only opening there on the hill. Accuracy finds it, picks him apart. And for Boston, a little bit painful as well. He loses the spawns, loses this time. I got to make up for it in the kills department, but that is not going their way. Is accuracy on a three spree while collecting the time. Good stuff from Accuracy and <laughs> Lin's coming in to finish Slasher off. Really good break coming in through the Minnesota Rocket, who we want to, to get rid of that zero on their sub-base record. Quite low scoring, relatively speaking, so far. 10 seconds to go. That will go over towards the side of Minnesota Rocket. Just so easy for Lin's to pick up that kill up top. Nelly finds it on the Priester as well. Just about finishes it off. So rotation hit for the side of Boston Breach. There was a rotation for P2. There's now definitely one for P3. Spawns absolutely miles away from Minnesota Rocket. There should be a solid 20 seconds before Rocket can really do anything about it here. That's an interesting uh, decision from Lens as well, right? He's still picking up the kills, but that's a moment where he goes for that Shalom Priest. It dies and spawns all the way across the map. And speaking of spawning across the map, these players from Minnesota going to spawn so much further away because the seam oh, spawns tough. out as well. You read the pressure on the flank. And now it's just, I mean, this might just be a straight up full 60, right? I mean, I'd say for Boston, you just have so much clearance on the map. One good spawn comes through, and for Minnesota, this is just effectively devastating. So Boston, right back in the game. Nice little lead. They're going to be up by maybe 20 or 30 points going over towards noon. If for Boston, that was the story of map number one, right? They found a couple of really good rotations, a couple of 60s, and Minnesota Rock have very much struggled to find a way back into that one. Sound cue's not going to be there. Bit vivid this time around. Asim will just about finish his dinner. Vivid falls down, and now all of a sudden, the push coming through. Good shots from Asim, but not quite good enough to finish the kill. It's going to be making some inroads through the middle of the map, but Minnesota Rocker, equally from what Boston did over towards P3, could do the same here at P4. Shots from Vivid need to be crispy on the Snoopy, but with 45 seconds remaining, Minnesota Rock is still looking good in that hole, but Boston are slowly creeping their way up the map. Lins will find one on the point. We'll need to get back onto that one as soon as he can, but just trying to clear out each and every single one of his bases. It's only Slasher now left in a position to do something about this great hold so far from Rocket. 
And Slasher is not in a position to do something about this, right? He even retreats from top third and jumps down, maybe to bait out a couple extra kills. But they're trying to seize up, get the gunnies down in the back. And the opportunity to get to the hill is there. Slasher eventually finds the play. But it's always just to strip away an extra few seconds accuracy. Not even going to be there to get that time. In the meantime, though, a couple spawn outs come through. Sub base always gets a little bit weird in these moments when you get the sub spawns. But on the rotation, Boston, I mean, execute. It's only a two-point game that will be over towards P5 first. By the looks of it, power position may be in control of Minnesota Rocker. But Slasher takes care of them. Administers death to everybody in near four man white. Now you just got to read the flank coming through from Vivid, and you're squared away. Good to go. Slasher can't quite get it, but at least you know where he's at. Already having a very, very good game. Now 1.94 is looking like it will continue if he keeps going this way, but looking like Rock Around eventually going to find themselves a break it. Boston don't get a great deal over towards the new hill, and Awakening and Co. will see that other 30 seconds that is still available, and we'll say thank you very much. Break comes through. Reads on spawns need to be good here from Rocker as well. Priest it. Already spotted in the middle of the map. This is looking like a good hold from Mont Minnesota Rocker after a decent break. Looking like we're going to be heading into P1, into the second rotation with a Rocker lead. And I, I was a little bit worried for them as we kicked it off here as Lin's starting to fry. It was just down to the previous game on Invasion where it was really about some really solid holds coming through from Boston Breach. Found themselves at a good lead. Never really let it go. Minnesota Rocker this time around. Not letting things get out of hand. We start fighting for P2 spawns with the team finding the kills. That's definitely going to work out. Rocker now spawned out. They know exactly what's going on here. Boston Breach may lose that final 30 seconds towards that final hill. But looking good for the spawns and some time at P1 here. Sl yeah. Slasher. Slasher in front of his chance. Honestly, struggling. I'm struggling. Hey, happens to the best of us. And I think right now in this moment, Rocker struggling as well. Getting absolutely picked apart in the kill feed. This is giving away a pretty good chunk of time on P1. And in the meantime, that's like two different players so far that have tried to flood through this like, you know, P5 side of the map for Minnesota. Linz is going to find the kills and maybe open up the spawns like long term for the P2 rotation, but still on P1. That was a great chunk of time for Boston. Maybe only going to have about a 10 point lead. Priest to the man who flipped the spawns initially. He is talking himself in the back of the map. Talk about playing it safe, making sure you secure the back spawn over towards new. Effectively going to be a tied up game. Boston with a small spawn advantage. Still going to win the gunfights though. And Linz at least gets traded out. How he wins that first one, I do not know. He is built different. And Priest to where his teammates Ball, doesn't even get the back spawns for his team all of that effort to try to lock it down can't get it done he's at least keeping people distracted but it's still rocker collecting the time so all those spawns although not really getting that reinforcement coming in where you would essentially think it was gonna come from 35 seconds remaining here though, over towards p2 boston will find themselves a break looking like a good hole potentially coming through his seam deleting lins i beg he was weak Push now going to come through from a seam. say thank you very much, but it's pretty sad to clean things up. And now all of a sudden this rotation, which was looking solid for Rocker, at least was spawns this side. You have spawned so far away if you're awakening. Over towards this new hill. The rest of the team need to lock it down without him. Priest is going to be able to find one. These couple of gunfights coming up. Very important as the seam will find one more. Linz is going to be caught in the corner. He didn't see him. He didn't see him. I do not believe my eyes. Linz gets away with it. Rocker lock it down. Boston may well have themselves oh a lead. God. The spawns towards the back. You don't read those. It's a free break for Boston. I mean, dude, look, I can't. I'm staring at the mini map and I can't predict these spawns. That is Boston maybe getting away with murder. Maybe that's consistent and they knew it was going to happen either way. Moment of the game. I mean, Priest has played back P2. Maybe never got the spawns for his team, but does enough work on the hill. But they put themselves in a fantastic spot and the gunnies are flowing. Asim has 25 kills. This has been the hill for Boston. It was the same story the last go around. It is the same story now. The close spawn certainly going to help them, but they take that small opportunity and make the absolute most of it. A massive lead now here on sub base. Plenty of time to rotate over towards new as well. Snoopy going to be working with both Slasher and Asim, trying to pierce the P2 side of the map. And accuracy going to slow him down, making aggressive plays on the jump out. Asim, without too much help from his teammates, going to take it slow, reposition, one clean break. Boston should win this game. Can they find that clean break? For all that Boston breach pick on the majority of the time here. This 50 seconds goes over towards Rocker. There's very, very little in this game. 
Linz is trying his best. Oh, can't find the second. Shots coming through onto a scene, but all of a sudden this brick now looking like it could come through. Awakening going to go for the child. Of course he is. Priestley will fall. But the pressure now starting to be put up. Minnesota rocking towards this backside, now being forced to fight out with their backs against the wall. But the break comes through from Boston. That 50 seconds, I said that would pretty much tie the game. Non-existent now. Soon he's able to find three, but it is a break back here from Minnesota. But a lot of time wasted. Hey, keep in mind, though, number eight just spawned up on the pitch. So, yeah, if you're rotating over towards P5, sub base giveth and sub base taketh away. The timing has to be on point for when he actually makes his move, but the hill's about to pop, so this is the go button. Kill the guy at a hill. Slasher, never going to read that, and if there was any opportunity for Rocker to get back in this game, it is here on P5. You know, P-Dog's going to be in the back. If you did it before, you'd certainly do now, and maybe just in the mix of this, maybe Priest continuing to keep their heads on a swivel. Maybe the gift he was given, though, he continues to make the best of it. Looking for number three. He's going to get it. That is kill feed wipe. And now you can control the spawns. Minnesota right back in this game. Oh, but it's going to be playing with a smile on his face after that one. Oh, kills now just not working out for Boston Breach. And things can just turn around so, so quickly in this game. The card got smiling very very kindly on rocker but now snoopy from behind spawns a little bit awkward once again push now gonna start coming out over towards this hill but the kill's starting to come through from minnesota rocker vivid from the top window we'll find one more it's nearly a full 60 for rocker which is what they needed to get back into this game they can't hold down those final 10 seconds which could be huge boston breach now gonna find themselves very very close rocker gonna be forced away one play over towards this next hill is linz rocker needs to find 30 for boston it's only 12. In Boston have been on point on P1 as well. This has been a hill where they have thrived. Now it's a hill where you don't necessarily flood the time. You certainly play for the kills, but you can be aggressive and take away a few seconds here, a few seconds there. Minnesota Rocker, though, winning the gunfights. That's a nice little clearance as well. So keeping things up, make no mistake, Rocker can also win on this hill. They don't have the top third control, but we're about to have a near tied up game. You got to win these gunfights, though. Lynn's the pop off moment, able to give you the big two, keeping Boston off that time. He's still alive. A lot of pressure coming in. Needs to get Boston off it if he can, but Sasha finds the gunny. Oh, accuracy can't finish that one off either, but Vivid finds two. Eight seconds away from Boston Breach now, but awakening from 5 1, and all of a sudden, Priester, you left all on your own. Thank you for him. It's still 14 seconds for Minnesota Rocket, who cannot win it here. Rotation over towards P2 is looking good for Boston, but these gunfights are going to be huge. It's going to be down to accuracy. The fight's starting to come through. A scene will find it. Eight seconds away from either two teams. And now here comes Lens. Can find one. Nothing towards the backside. Boston in full control. If you're vivid, you found the spawns that give you something in this game. You now need to find multiple kills. Or we're heading to map number five. And that's where we're going. Boston Breach. Deservedly, if anything, will find the map win. Spawns on either side of things helping out in different moments. That one from vivid will probably live long in the memory. But Boston, close it out. And we head over towards the search and destroy map number five anybody's game i did not see it going like this ton i have played <laughs> call of duty for i don't even know 15 years at this point i can't read the spawns looking at the mini map the players i can only imagine what they are going through but and all of the stress of what they are trying to contain a you gotta tip the cap i seen 31 kills 5800 damage the man absolutely popped off across the board but that was certainly a nice back and forth battle overall but this is it ton it is the stoppable force in search and destroy versus the ever movable object for the game five minnesota rocker have not had the ice in game fives at all now they're going against the team with the worst SD record in the league. That is as good as it gets if you're a Call of Duty fan. It's going to be a fun one once we get to it. But there's a look at how much of a nail biter that actually was. Rocker really turning the heat up. I mean, a 144 to 1, like, or 217 deficit, I suppose, that they clawed their way back into. But Boston, again, always on point. They always kept the spawns for P2 if that rotation ever came through. So really being on point on P1 for boston paid off long term but i mean that's a map that again just looking at the spawns is going to be the difference maker a lot of the times it seemed like for that map four but that is a, a lot of jibber jabber a lot of yapping on our parts ton it is our job to be fair but we're just waiting for the game five yeah a lot, a lot of yep, yep, from myself in particular and that one but hey look I, I think there's only so much you can say about what was going on in sub base there but irrelevant of all of that we will be heading towards karachi search and destroy to close this series out can minnesota rocker 
turn this around. These game fives have not been going their way, but you are, as mentioned, going up against the worst search and destroy team in the game right now. It'll make for some fantastic viewing right after this break. Don't go anywhere. your competition with the executive chef operator now available in game in the call of duty store upgrade your game with the scuff the official controller of the call of duty league Here we go. Map number five between these two teams should be an interesting one. Boston Breach, statistically the worst search and destroy team in the CDL. The Minnesota Rocket, well, can't win a map number five to save their life so far. So which way it's going to go, we have no idea. I think, we, well, we were just having a minor discussion there, Chance, in between the break, of course. But for Minnesota Rocket, you're never going to get a better opportunity to kill off that game five. But the same can be said for Boston for your search and destroy not looking solid. Are you going to be able to find something here up against a team who notoriously haven't been too hot on game fives so far this season? 
Those stats are insane. Like, I, the, it's the, you got to tell the story from Minnesota's perspective. They go toe to toe against two of the best teams in the game, and they start choking and losing in heartbreaking fashions, especially so in the game fives. Lins has absolutely been the shining light. He has been fighting his heart out. The 1v2 clutches, even for the game fives, like he has been solid, especially on Karachi. Pay attention to him. But if Minnesota don't have the ice against some of the best teams in the game, you just say, hey, they pushed him to the edge, still positive takeaways. If you lose a game five to the team that has the worst S&D record, I don't know what to make of that. That would be terrifying. So Minnesota Rock are feeling the pressure. And of course, Boston also needs some extra CDL points. So both of these teams hungry for it. Nice jump up spot done by Snoopy, but first blood's coming through just yet. These A-side battles between the SMGs, always important. Everything else over on the B-side, very standard. Bridge players pushed out over by Bricks as well. Extra AR players, so ordinary setups on both sides. But the first blood, final rolls through. A seam, gonna grab it. And that was something for Minnesota Rocket. We felt like they really struggled with first bloods up against Optic here. In map number five, which was Karachi Search and Destroy once again. And well, it is going to be the case in round number one, at least anyway. Waking in left in one versus four. Not going to happen. Oh, Clean seam. round from Boston. My word, a seam. Some way to kick it off. A really good start from Boston here to find that defensive round. But I just want to kind of allude back to the invasion as well. They started off hot on that one. It was a two to zero lead. They didn't win a round after round number two. So now can they continue doing what they just did very, very well that just hold a completely clean round on the defense, but a lot of search and destroy to be played. Yeah. And you got to imagine a lot of these like sort of mid round adjustment fights. It's the SMG players that get left out over towards a that as soon as that first blood comes through, Linz gets active. Boston shut that down. So, you know, when these players are going to start making moves on the flip side, if you can contain them you're gonna have a great time. And obviously Boston execute now straight up the middle of the map. Free first blood. Asim's going to get it again. Maybe more kills going to fall into his lap. Accuracy has run straight through to Coop. And it ends up just being free for Slasher. What well, could have been in that round if Accuracy would have found it. But the luck is simply not on their side in the game fives. Awakening for the 1v3. Not a lot you can do in this spot. Not even the biggest of wakes. You can do much about this. B is just a hard defuse at any given time. One versus three does make it even more difficult, of course. Awakening, got to try and find a pick here, but really good play coming in from Boston. Trying to find something, if anything is possible here. Awakening, not going to work out. Priest it. Two rounds in a row from Boston to kick things off. Really good from his team. And I almost feel like that first bud, though, where Vivid running up top, it just felt like a little bit predictable, a little bit slow. It felt like he got there not very quickly at all. Boston. Punish him pretty much immediately. Two to the good here. Chance looking very, very solid so far. Giving away the freebie first bloods. Never yeah. an ideal situation. And again, what we saw in the invasion, as you pointed out, aggressive play calls coming for Boston early on, and then they lost six rounds in a row. You never really get too aggressive on defense on Karachi, but they still shut him down, and then aggression through the middle of the map for Boston pays off. Going to be another standard again. Lanes is going to be the player left on an island over towards A. It is a default push over towards B. Boston heads up for it. Maybe aggressive jumping up pop. A scene might have free first bloods again. He catches vivid. That's the aggression you like to see. Five in a row right now for a seam. The new man on the roster currently making plays. He's going to be looking for the cruise. If he can get a hold of that, that will be huge for Boston. Honestly, I think just the utility was used wonderfully there. Over towards market side, it allows the team to get himself up and not get caught out by any bad timings. Five in a row will very much be playing for this cruise missile. Three players on the Minnesota side of Minnesota Rocker, though. One of them has slipped the net, and that's accuracy. Being ridiculously knows, though, aggressive. Right? Yeah, he's got to know, surely. The way he just turned for that, maybe they heard him, or maybe they're caught completely unaware. Maybe that's just instinct, but Awakening's going to get shut down, and the only player, yep, by the looks of that, they knew. I mean, Asim was turning, looking basically through walls, so either he heard him or someone else got the intel, and how quickly that round collapses. Everybody heads up there in that moment, and I think for Minnesota, they're struggling to get a single kill let alone actually get a first blood, let alone actually do something in a round. Boston, firmly, the game is under their control. Lens kicked back in his chair there, just like, what is going on here? Minnesota Rocker, nothing to speak of over three rounds so far. The only kill belongs to Awakening. 
over three rounds of search and destroy not good enough need to start finding something now over towards the defensive side this is where you can maybe start to get something going for the team hasn't looked too hot so far here chance but realistically you need to start with something another first blood priest that finds awakening who's the only one with a kill from rocker so far I was going to say as well, I think they waited out enough of the stuns that the player that got picked instead of keeping the pressure over towards B started wrapping back and just got caught. So uh, I don't know if exactly that's what happened in Minnesota, but just dodging the stun grenades might have just paid off long term for Boston. And now they've triple stacked over towards A. You see they're leaving a seam deep over on the B site. A seam wants to play hardcore right now for this cruise. And now you're trying to isolate lanes back P2. And a scene, by the way, gets it. He plays it so patient, gets the cruise missile. In the meantime, the aggression over towards B2 on A. Coverage is perfect. Boston can do no wrong because Minnesota can do no right. That monkey on the back of Minnesota for these map number fives is just getting bigger and bigger. Right now, it's just nothing can be found whatsoever they're getting blooded. They're just getting outgunned, outplayed, out rotated. Everything is working out for Boston. Got to give them the credit, though. They are the ones making the plays. Holding tight. Allowing that utility to do absolutely nothing from Rocker. Punishing them for a good spot from you. And really good play from Boston Breach. Cruise missile acquired. Seems got a hold of it. And this has been a whitewash so far. Have Minnesota Rocket got anything to answer yet? It's going to be a big push over towards here. I think some players at least got tagged up there. Now, it seems he's going to be ready for it. This stun is devastating. Awakening going to go for the child, though. And they're going to find the gunfights irrelevant. So, Linton Awakening... Get themselves now into a position where they can potentially do something here. Yeah, A-side control is there. Priester is going to find a freebie. Accuracy will fall three versus two in favor of Rocker. That is a Hail Mary if I've ever seen one. If it does land, it'll be late. Can the retake come back through here from Boston? Priester and Slasher, what can they do? Well, it'll be Slasher for effectively a one versus three. Just does not last long at all. Awakening closes that door and finally an opening break a shining light there from minnesota as you called out the stun might have been devastating but the good news for minnesota at least they were grouped up together so the gunfights come to them they come out on top awakening picking up maybe three i believe it was in that round and i know for some of these game fives we've been saying for minnesota someone just has to step up and sort of like break the mold that they find themselves in to get any sort of momentum that's the round where Minnesota finally able to get it, finally able to breathe. Of course, bad news long term. It's still a cruise missile in the hands of a seam. If a bomb ever gets planted on either site, I mean, that might just be the round. Once again, you see Boston waiting out the sun grenades as well to mess with the timings, but a much heavier stack here over towards B. Accuracy, obviously, the overseer going to get all the intel. Cruise missile called in on the attack here. Breaks it wide open. Who's going to be the one that gets dealt with? Absolutely nobody, but it does give them a little bit more map presence. For all that, Boston don't find the kill. It opens up B nicely. Vivid had the back going down, but finds himself over towards this site now. Bomb still not going down here for Boston Bridge. Just trying to dot their eyes and cross their T's. But it should be a free plan from what we can see on the mini map. Seem well, looking not this exactly, down. no. Yeah, they're no, still don't. waiting to find these players, and I think the patience from Vivid, he repositions wow. in the cruise, and there he go, finds it. So Boston get the bomb down, but it's only going to be a three versus four, and Vivid, he knows that player retreated over towards Bridge. A double stack on Bridge, Priest are going to be around the top third area. You can clutch these in a 3v4, but advantage right now, Rocker. Priest is having to deal with two on the flank. Lindsay's is going to get around the back. Priest that takes down Awakening, no, and Snoopy will find Vivid. So looking good here for Boston as Priesto will hold down the flank and accuracy now. Very little he can do here. Series point, Boston Breach. 5-1 to the good. The cruise missile might not have found much, but just control for Boston was enough to find the round. When that bomb goes down over towards B, it's always very difficult to find a retake. Boston Breach looking very, very good here. And look at P-Dog, so inspirational. Eight and two right now, eight kills in the game five. A player that has certainly been feeling the pressure. A lot of eyes and attention have been going his direction, but here he is in the game five popping off. And again, Boston, a team that has not enjoyed search and destroy on the entire year. Right now, Minnesota making him look like one of the best in the game. Accuracy on a donut, lends the shining light, one in six. Not a lot of life, not a lot of love, and for Boston, might as well run straight at them. A seam. Free kills again for the first blood. Vivid has not shot back in a single first blood engagement. Main advantage again towards Boston. It was the seam who found him in the second round as well. It's been so, so easy for him to find the raids. 
Stupid now holding down the middle of the map, but gunfight against Linz will be important in the grand scheme of this round. But a big push coming over towards the bridge side. Linz is going to have to start to make a move because accuracy maybe needed the help or not. We'll find the gunfight for left in a one versus two. Pinned back where he really doesn't want to be, but he slipped in there. Oh my word, but it doesn't work out for him. Boston, the worst search and destroy team in the game, just made Minnesota Rocker look like a rank play team. Rocker fold again in map number five. And they just cannot get rid of whatever issue this is. Zero ice again. Boston Breach. Huge win for them. Yeah, at this point, the Iceman title might need to get relinquished. Like, this is just too many times in a row for it to not even be close. Like, they got 6-0 in a game five against Toronto, a 6-1 here against Boston. I mean, credit for the other team if you want to stay on the 100%. positive side of things. A seam out of control at the start of these rounds. I mean, he starts off basically 6-0, gets a cruise. The first blood's going his direction. And in spite of the fact that a seam had the hot start, Priest and Snoopy end up catching him, if not surpassing him. 9-2 and two out of there for Priesta. A wonderful game five. And Slasher with his feet up. Don't really need to do too much there other than the occasional calm. That is electric stuff there for Boston in a game five. And... I mean, that simply just answers the question of how we're feeling about Rocker in the clutch. And for Boston, incredibly important CDL points for those guys to get. Going to be a nice little bump up in the standings. So a lot of Call of Duty left to be played, but that is an important match for them to win. We talked about Rocker at the beginning of the game. You know, this is the kind of game they want to be taken quite comfortably to put themselves in a good position. You can't find it anyway. I'm sure the desk have got a lot to say about that one. A very, very Boston breach in the final map there, Chris. Got to say, Minnesota's really good at going to game fives. Yeah. They are. Very good at that. Really struggling to win it, though. This is now a loss to Ultra. Texas and Boston, they are 0-3 to kick off our major two qualifiers. And for Boston, this win is massive. You're in the top eight now. You just passed LAG and Vegas Legion with this win. You're four and seven overall. Right back in the mix with the seam on this roster. Yeah, and unfortunately for the Minnesota Rocker, this is another Karachi that you're going to have to take home in the books and start thinking, you know what, maybe we need to take this out of our map pool because unfortunately, like game number five, it did seem like they were trying a couple new looks on defense, but they just weren't working. The Boston Breach were very much acclimated and very much ready to change their in-game plan. It just felt like they were constantly Constantly in control of the map in any given situation during this map number five. Nameless, this was a big exposure series potentially for Minnesota. Earlier in the week, we said they looked like a top four team after falling to Boston, who came into the day at number 10. Where do you have Minnesota? Uh, they've been eclipsed. I think Minnesota has done a terrible job of expanding their map pool over this uh, stage. I thought that's something they could have been working on headed into this series in the veto process. I think they made some massive mistakes. I mean, you're talking about Boston, the worst search and destroy team in the league, and you let Karachi get through. They're three and 10 in S&D. Two of those map wins are on Karachi S&D. Mind you, it's even more egregious because when you talk about Minnesota Rocker, they are now three and six on Karachi search and destroy. Let Rio get into the map and let it get into the map set. Just a mistake on their part. I could say the same thing about that hard point when you look at it. Minnesota's only on one of the map. We need to be working on that in practice so you can come to these matches and play it. That is a map that Boston is not good at. So I think they made some huge mistakes. And I think it's time for our scout play of the game. It's the man with the happy hands in the bottom right corner. Asim joins us with his performance in search and destroy a cruise missile to open the game and send accuracy's camera flying. Very frustrated Minnesota squad and a very happy young man on your screen right now. Yeah, it's honestly just going to be a high rate reel when it comes to Asim, especially during this map. Number one, which Minnesota Rocker is typically famous for winning these opening hard points over Boston Breach. That was a big map number one win in 250-189. It was really map four where it seemed shine 31 and 26 with over five. 5,800k damage to close out that map number four to solidify the win. It was only eight points. It took those miraculous plays at the very end of that P1 of him finding a two-piece round server and then obviously the game number five masterclass. And we came into the day, we looked at the numbers with caps with the seam. They looked basically even. Everyone had the same KD. What does the seam bring to this game that has made Boston different though? I mean, I just think he makes some cerebral play plays at times. Like their hard point has gotten so much better. I mean, you saw it on that invasion. Like even at times, 
I don't think evasion control as well. When he was just sitting in their back spawn, like he is being a nuisance and he's giving you opportunities. That's something that Capsule wasn't doing for this roster, and they're capitalizing. You got some world champions on here, they're gonna figure it out, and that's what we just saw in the hard point in this series. Joining us in the monster winner spotlight, please welcome to the show Slasher back into the top eight after this win. And Slasher, it hasn't been too many years or even too many events where I've seen you come with below an eighth seed. What's the struggle been like with Boston and how did you guys write the ship today? Uh, I think our biggest struggle has been like in our practice. Um, we're just really inconsistent with doing the things that we talk about on a day to day basis. And that's why you kind of see it just when our matches like I think we're the only team to beat Toronto, but then we can also lose to the lower ends. Right. And it's just about sticking to the, the game plan on game day, like the GP on GD. That's what we got to really focus on doing, because if we can get that consistent game plan down, we're going to have more consistent results. Absolutely. Slasher, I feel like historically you've been on some fairly good search and destroy teams and Boston Breach, that's been your main struggle and you're able to take this map five very convincingly. What's that conversation been like of pinpointing the problems and how to rectify them? <laughs> I mean, I think right now we're doing uh, a lot of do nothing strats, which I mean, we have information, but we're just not playing off it. So like there's so many times where we have good info and we can make a quick, decisive play like on um, where the other team is set up to kind of single guy out. And we're way too slow to do that and giving teams too much time to rotate and figure out what we're doing. And I think like we just need to learn like we have some good strats in our arsenal, like rushes and stuff like that. But we need to learn how to play the pick strategy right. Take that information and work off it quick, because if you can do that correctly, nobody will really know what you're doing. Love that answer. Uh, Austin, I feel like we've seen some great moments from Snoopy. He's had some moments where he just looks ridiculously talented, uh, been a bit inconsistent at times. What's the process been like teaming with him and sort of trying to mold him into a top tier talent? Yeah, so I mean, Eric's like one of the most talented players in the league. Like his shot is actually incredible. Um, I think the big thing for him is, like I said, and what we kind of all sh have struggled with is like sticking to that game plan, simplifying the game, making it to where you, you can just get easy kills. Because if you're constantly getting easy kills, it don't matter who you're playing against, you're going to do well. Yeah. And right now, I think we, we give up some situations and make it a little bit harder on ourselves than we should, rather than just, you know, playing that consistent COD like that, I mean, I've always kind of played. So, Asher, you have to play all the teams in the league eventually. What goes into the prep? Did you guys watch Minnesota's Karachi leading up to today's match? Uh, yeah, we did. We knew Karachi was going to be in it. And honestly, I kind of knew how they played it and even before I watched it. Um, I feel like, I, I mean, I'm good, really good friends with Lamar. I usually watch most of his matches. I know exactly what he likes to do, how he likes to play the game. Um, so we knew what, what was going on, but I think the big thing for us was sticking to our game. And like I said, just playing off that info. Like I think Asim was making a lot of big plays and we got some information, taking like educated risks, which yeah. is like the best way to play SND. Final question for you. Who wins in our next match between Atlanta and New York? Ooh, I got a game five grueler, Ooh. and I think New York's going to win the searches. Oh, wow. I love it. I hope it lives up to that hype. Thank you so much, and congrats on your dub tonight. Thank you, guys. That is Slasher. That's the Boston Breach, and we're two matches done. When we come back, Allie, we got one more to go, and it should be good. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was a banger series, but this one might top it. New York, Atlanta. Coming up next, it's the CDL. Don't go anywhere. Match three after this. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League pack. Grab yourself the CDL operator, weapon blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now.
Talk about aggression, Rocker. Four players over towards A. Zoinks! There's the second from Alex. Third for Alex. Oh! Fourth Alex from Alex, too. We missed it! To make the play, it's been all about him all tournament long. It can come down to a 1v1. Oh! Vickle now. Last one up. He's got a trophy though, He's right? He threw a trophy, a trophy out. Might do he it. threw a trophy, trophy out. Might do it. I think this might be He's too slow. There. He's He's still there. He got it. Oh, he does get it. Yeah, it was too slow. <laughs> he gets it. He just hops it right away. Nobody checks the bomb. A retake from but Dashi maybe oh, just gets oh, given a gift. No, Dashi didn't if see him. You open your eyes. Oh no, he didn't see the player Kleenex lying down in the alleyway. Oh my word, and oh Kleenex! Priest is trying to get the push up. Major is actually able to get a kill. Major, how does he get two? How does Major get three? I've got no goddamn idea. But once again, they clutch up. What in the hell did Major just do? That man's got ice in his veins. Try and work someone on the flank. He's able to find by criminally the Craigs. They're able to get two headshots. They know that formal has gone vivid. Ooh, I think that's a bit of an over challenge. Envoy, he goes to the defensive side. Nobody able to check the bomb. Crim ready for it. Nice shot. Or Crim and Illy now going to find all four kills. This is formal for the ace. Third. Four. Illy wraps back and it's formal with the ace. I have a plan. Crazy with the rage, dangerous and rage. Go for one, go for three, go for three. I ain't wanna take light, look into my eyes. Oh my goodness, coming for the prize. Do you really want these problems? I put you in that coffin. But I'm never charging. You put this ain't to stop it. Hungry for the beef, leave you obsolete. See my life steep, see me in the streets. If you want the heat, yeah.
You're lucky that wasn't on land, Hydra. Taking your heads off, headset off early is disrespectful, and you would get a <laughs> DQ. Uh, they get the win anyway, and Hydra didn't need to know where they were coming from. The man, he always has that feeling in his veins. Yeah, he always has ice in his veins. One of the best players of, in the game, if not the best, so he didn't need it. Taking a look at our matchup. Why is this a big one? Well, look how many teams are stuck at five. Rocker, Surge, and Heretics. There is a huge separation between them and the top four. And the subliners, well, they could close the gap today into a top three position with the win over Atlanta FaZe. But you look at FaZe's record, 11 and two. Those two losses came to the same team, Nameless. They've got everyone else's number in this league. Listen, man, play this new and improved New York Subliners. This is the world champions, the team that Atlanta could not beat last year. This is going to be a banger of a match. I feel like everybody's been wanting to see how New York stacks up against the top teams, and we're about to find out right now because as of late, they have been dealing. Everybody's been playing great. Hydra's been on point. It was a 3-0 over Surge, a 3 over Breach, but remember, this team went down 0-2 against the Royal Ravens, Allie. Yeah, that is true, and to that point, though, there is a situation there where you can say that New York was playing down to their competition in that series, and also simply because New York wasn't the New York we were used to at the beginning of this season, so they do have two 3-0 smoke shows versus Boston and Seattle. Boston just showing us an incredible matchup right before this series that they could be an underdog team, yeah. which is just another testament to how good New York has gotten. Well, we got to talk about why this team matches up so well with Atlanta FaZe. It's because Atlanta FaZe, great search and destroy team, a lot would say the best in the game. New York also top two S&D team, the best at the end of last year. They just have players who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the players that are on Atlanta. And even when you talk about hardpoint, yes, Atlanta FaZe, top three hardpoint team in the game. Still, only a 2.8 differential. New York's is actually better. And you can see in the Monster Energy pregame, respawn struggles no more. 3-1 in hardpoint, 3-0 in control, and the major two quals, a mass improvement from Stage 1, Allie. And there's a lot of opportunity here for New York simply because their respawns have been really good, specifically the hard points if they have any opportunity because on New York subliners, everybody is over a 1.10 on the season when it comes to hard point. Where on the flip side, players like Drawzell is a 0.81. They've been struggling in the slang department. That guy in the top left, 1.7 KD. Basically, he wins uh, two out of every three fights, right? <laughs> the yeah. man's pretty darn good. He Kismet is. has been doing work in Search and Destroy, and we have a feeling Slasher could be right. We could see another Game 5. His former lineup, the Phase Squad, is coming out of Atlanta with the number two seed, looking to show everyone that they're the still the top squad in the game. The problem, you've only ran into Miami. You haven't played your second or third match while the subliners are already on match number four. And respectfully, I mean, they went to a Game 4 versus Miami Heretics. So, again, there is some opportunity for New York in the series. But for Atlanta Phase, it's just about cleaning up the fundamentals and hard point right now. They're actually really average in the league when it comes to rotation. And even their breaks, they're eighth overall in the league. And again, I talk about their slaying. Selling them in Draza, I believe they're only at like a 60% non-trade kill percentage right now. They've got to start playing their lives a little bit better because once they come up against teams like Toronto, possibly New York, those are going to be the areas that hurt them. Yeah, and then also Subbase tanking their hardpoint one and four in it. They kept trying to play it to sort of improve their map pool. I feel like they've had issues in hardpoint, despite being 12 and nine. Like, they've had way too many close games. I brought up the differential before, and we're going to see it in this series versus New York. Another strong hardpoint team. And then also, their s has been unreal. 13 and one in the league, win loss without Toronto, excuse me. And then first in opening duel rate, going up against New York, who's number four in opening duels. So this is truly just the ultimate banger. That is a look at Atlanta phase. They are ready to go. And it's time to get our scuff pickums in. I'm going to kick things off. And as a New Yorker, you know I should go with the subliners, but today it's Atlanta phase. <laughs> Sorry, Atlanta. I'll make it red. It Red, yeah, there, there it is. That yeah, one. There That's is. the one I wanted. What about you, Allie? Honestly, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I kind of wish I went with New York, but I got to stick to it for the sake of production. I'm going Atlanta Phase. Okay, Atlanta Phase. Don't I like worry. That. I got y'all. I got New York. I think they take this series. He's They've trying to pull away. It's a real pick. He's been doing it all day. The fans have been wrong. They've been right. We'll find out if they got this one correct as we jump into the final match here, week two of our major two qualifiers. We got study and shift on the mic. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you, friends. Yeah, Monster Energy matchup here. And like the desk had already framed up, Atlanta is looking like the top two team in the league because they've only lost to Toronto. But on the yeah. same front here, New York 6-0 in maps since coming back into this major looking like a revitalized squad. Yeah, I'm excited to see what New York can bring to us because obviously at Major 1, you get dead last. It's not the way you want to do it. But you come into Major 2 qualifiers and you have been making easy work of every single opponent. But your opponents have been Carolina, Seattle, and Boston, who you did handle pretty easily. And Boston did not no slouch because they just won their last series. 
But all the other teams, they tend to struggle in certain modes. It's just like, this is the true test right here to see where we stack the subliners up. We currently have them at fourth, but if you get a dub like this, you can jump up to top three without question. And I think this, more importantly, kind of eliminates some of the shaky doubt that we had into the DFR that happened in Boston. So, yeah, lots riding here to kind of change expectations for what the league may look like. But overall, you still have to go through one of the biggest powerhouses in the league historically. And Atlanta will at least be able to keep the hard point neutral from the P2 side of the map. Everyone just kind of vying for positioning here, Jay. Yeah, nah, it's all about the positioning already to start off the game as Atlanta phase. They don't start on a preferred side. You're thinking subliners, they're going to be able to sprint right to the hill and get it for free. But Atlanta, they're doing a great job of at least keeping it contested. You have players towards bridge side, players towards top. They see it. They do end up dropping. So the subliners should be able to take control of this P1. But for only 20 seconds, you see Atlanta phase. They are cutting their losses. They're more focused on setting up around that cafe, which could potentially be a full 60. Has been up top. Ooh, had the jump on Sullium, but Cell doesn't miss a shot. That will reduce the threat of New York trying to hit this rotation around the back. So a little bit of scrap time earned, but for the most part, like you'd already mentioned, Atlanta already in prime position. Hydra working on that red up top. That will at least allow some sort of a setup for New York to try to set up this break. Yeah, and the thing with both of these squads, specifically on a map like Karachi, the thing that they struggle with is their breaks. You have ninth out of Atlanta phase, and you have eighth out of the subliner. So this is where they need to start stepping up in their gameplay. And right now, New York, the way that they are trying to set up this break, you already have players behind enemy lines. Hydra finds the first kill. Now you set up the pitch as well between him and Kismet. Can they find these fights in towards the middle of the cafe? They can with a little bit of assistance from the team. That's a clean four dead. They get wow. the break. And now they're controlling the spawns as well. This can get a little frantic if you are landing phase. You are forced yeah. now to hit that early rotation. That is just a master class from the SMGs for New York. It starts with Hydra kind of creating space at Hotel and then the follow-up from Kismet and Sib with the pistol. Absolutely perfect. So you talk about breaks possibly being the difference maker in this map we're already seeing an early instance of that on rotation go atlanta an opportunity for actually two members off the spawn to kind of reduce the presence at old so after not really finding much success over towards market atlanta has created a new route over towards Ooh. drunk oh they've created a new route but it's still hot you're winning a one-on-one -on -one iso on the pinch player in draza and now potentially an opportunity for Atlanta face to find a break. You have a couple players from the subliners who are spawning at least close towards junk, but you have that coop spawn. So you can potentially just fly right on in, and that's exactly what they do. Selly and Mandraza combined for two, but here comes Kismet, his turn to strike. Yeah, it's just been kind of six of one half a dozen of another for both teams. Get into the back, play your life, wait for help. Same thing happens in Europe. They do the exact same result. And now Atlanta have to just work this from one direction for the most part. Selly is playing out towards junk, but New York for the most part, have a good read on this setup from the front side hit through Coop, and it's worked out brilliantly for them. 72 plus 32 here. Atlanta's starting to finally get this break underway, but there's only 15 seconds left. You've already got New York looking towards rotation to new. Yeah, you take that if you are the subliners. You completely disregard the positioning right there of Selium. Switch the soul, focus over towards the chicken coop side, and at least walk away with about 20 to 25 seconds, leaving Atlanta phase the final team there for the final 10. And now you're gifted for a rotation over towards the next. P4 is going to be set up, but a couple players do drop off of the rotation. Now Sib with his hands full, knowing that the players from Atlanta phase are going to be all around him. Just trying to reposition, trying to finesse as long as he possibly could. His teammates eventually get back on the time. Atlanta trying to work this through barrel side. Couple of the trades come out. New York still trying to work in and around the hard point. Good read from Sky. Shots, though, not Ooh. as good as a BZ blows him out of the water. Trade from Hydra up top, but he cannot jump into the hard point yet. Still has to wait for help. Atlanta spawning over towards the backside of this hard point, but kills are still the main focus here for both of these two teams as Selium obliterates Hydra up top, and that's enough for Atlanta to start putting some focus on the hard point. And there's still only 20 seconds left, and New York, they're already going to be gifted off the rotation over towards next. You have a player in Kismet who's been playing back P3 basically a majority of this hill. And Atlanta face a much needed time walking over with the final 25. We're going to make this still a 20 point difference. You are forced to find another break in towards the junkyard. It's not going to be easy. They're all trying to put their focus on towards Kismet. But Draza gets the info. He also has the shot to go with it. So this is an opportunity wow. for Atlanta Phase to work through the back end. Clean from Draza. So yeah, like you mentioned, contested time. But Selim up top could have an opportunity to make sure no one from New York can come even close to this junk hard point. That'd be easy to be the one to step in. New York still spawning over towards the P2 side. Is working on setting up a hit from the front. And they've got Kismet on the pinch. Atlanta looked like they're primed and ready for this though. And yeah. Every single gunfight goes their way. The ARs tee off and Sip cleans things up. We've got ourselves a tie game. And now with 30 seconds left, you see how far the subliners are able to spawn. So they're in a decision-making situation where we're going to give this one up, potentially send a player to contest it from top red, but we're more focused on setting up again around that P1. And at the same time, Draza with the beams, he was able to earn himself a 
a cruise missile towards the later half of this game. That could be felt. But Atlanta fans are going to find themselves up by almost 25 points going into our second rotation of HPs. Subliner is going to be the team early on set up. Just comes down to do they reduce this threat? With the Christmas being called in immediately here. Okay, so not waiting to hold it. This is all Atlanta saying, let's get him out of the point. Let's get in and see if we can keep stretching these points together. And well, for the most part, they've cleared out Hotel and the top positions over towards third, but no one's been able to get to the hill as of yet. But finally, the kills come through. Sim finds himself a really impressive double, and as Kismet gets traded out, it'll be number two at Ibizi, who just soaks up the hard point time for now. Yeah, it's a big couple of kills right there from Sim. He done it with a rival nine as well. He's running some insane gunfights. Opens up that left lane for his team, and now they can hold down that position and solely focus on the middle of the map. And what an investment out of that cruise missile. You only find one kill with it, but the fact that your team is able to hold on the way that they are, you're basically dominating this P1 HP, and Draza has yet to fall on nine in a row. Trying to break his own teammate in Simp's record at 16, even though it wasn't control. He's on <laughs> pace. He's not missing right now. And there's an opportunity for him to bit of a route towards this top AC position. And he's going to get it for free. His teammates cleaning things up on the old time. The only one who's gotten through is Kismet, but he gets found. And now all of a sudden, Draza right at the front door of this P2. Sip from the other side. My goodness, it's just absolute symphony of a break. Hydra holds on. And my goodness, he does incredibly well to get three. Abizi, though, doubles down. And that's enough. He started to chain a couple hills together. Abizi, it's your turn to start turning up. He already finds himself in a five streak. He's not allowing anyone in towards the cafe. With only 30 seconds left, subliners are forced now to hit that early rotation again over towards P3. Salim here trying to cut them off, and now with him being back down the way that they are, subliners could put themselves in a position to win this rotation, but there's still the rest of the cavalry oh. here to help Salim. They take down Sib, but do they read this pinch out of Kismet? I don't think so. Subliners are going to have that rotation over towards next. Huge win there for New York, just trying to get themselves back into the game of easy on five after that heroic break came through for Atlanta on P2. So watch to see if he gets an extra cruise missile. The thing is, this is a requirement that New York gets a 45 plus here. In fact, you, you can pretty much say it. you need to get a full 60 if you want to have a chance to get back in this game. Yeah, you need a full 60 hold. And thankfully, Ibizi has not yet earned that cruise missile. Let's try to not give him a kill, but who needs to rely on cruise missiles when the gunnies are hot? Already finding two, two players from the subliner spawning out. Oh, no. That's going to be Draza reading those plays. The breaks from Atlanta phase have definitely shown improvement. Abizi earns himself a cruise missile. And they're basically calling game already. This has been yep. textbook since the second half of this hard point. I mean, you take a picture of that New York setup and you then tell me that they don't get a single kill defending that Atlanta break, I would have called you crazy. They were in perfect position, but just no one able to lock down kills. You've got 21 and 14 out of Hydra, but Kismet is the only other person who's broken double-digit kills, while on the other side, everyone's just teeing off for Atlanta. 100-point game. A BZ even hit an old because why not? It keeps New York in place as they try to rotate, but the only one who can get there with Sim, and as he's cut down, Atlanta fans can smell a win. And now Atlanta fans are only 40 points away from closing out game number one. Subliners have not been able to find an answer. That's now three HPs in a row. But it's been all of Atlanta. But subliners, you know, around this P4, you got to be willing to put yourself in these positions and try to read these spawns because it's a little bit scattered sometimes. But if you're not finding any kills, it's a lot more difficult. Atlanta fans is doing a great job of just keeping them off of the point. At New York, they're getting those close spawns, but Atlanta are slaying Dude. to bits. A BZ cannot miss, man. No one is winning a gunfight for New York. No. These are all face-up 1v1s, and no one is winning a gunfight. Sky's eventually able to break up this monotonous Atlanta phase kill feed, but it just feels kind of like a moot point. And just the finesse game from Atlanta, it just feels like everyone on the map is the hardest kill in the game. Finally, if easy drop sell over the top will also be taken out, but you get a little bit of scrap time and the margin is still just about 100 points. And now if you are Atlanta phase, you are set up again around this junkyard hill. They held it for a full 60 last time around. But this time the subliners at least prime pressure, have top red control, currently have bottom red. And you also have one player going on a pinch, but Skies does get cut down. So all of Atlanta's focus is on the front end. They might be able to close it out for the next three dead. Oh my, oh my God, dude. Are you kidding me? Kismet finally able to get something going. It's just at a certain point, you call it an SO. Uh, if anybody can help Hydra and Abizi really feeling himself 23 and 12. The break attempt from the front still good for New York, but I'll tell you, it doesn't feel good in any form. And now you've got the cruise missile plus extra kills from the ARs. That's got to be game. Yeah, so Atlanta phase, they can't win it here on P5, but they can get pretty damn close. 
Gonna put themselves at 244, something like that. Potentially what's gonna be the score line, but 244 to 122. Subliners down by a million. They need to make a miracle happen because Atlanta phase, we were questioning their breaks. They've been able to find a bunch on the last couple of HPs, and it's still on the back of the SMGs. They have just been frying. Actually, everyone is frying. We're almost double positive across the board. Well, it's not going to probably be for much, but we've got phase seven points away looking to break. See how the cops are feeling with them all frying out. Oh my god, boys. Come on. Shit, guys. Shit. 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 Uh, wow. <laughs> That's about all that can be said, Jay. I, I mean, everyone essentially 1.5 KDs in the lobby. It's just an outslayed, outplayed spree for Atlanta. You can just tell, like, they're flowing with confidence. <laughs> you could just, like, just see it in the gameplay. No one was making mistakes. Everyone had their moment. It was draws over towards Junk, Abizian towards the cafe, Simp finding multiple two pieces left and right around the map. And you know, Selium is barely going to die around that HP. But that was an absolute masterclass from Atlanta phase. Once we got to the second half of those HPs, just utter dominance at, P at P5, and then they chained it to P1, P2, and P3. That's why the scoreline looked the way that it is. They just simply did not make any mistakes. Even when they were out rotated, they were finding the breaks. They could do no wrong in map number one. I mean... 9 and 30? Yeah. Hold oh, no. on. Wait a minute. I just seen that one. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was hoping you were going to say something. Wow. That's not good. And it's just another long line of things where it's like you start to believe in this New York team. But, I mean, Namo said this in the headquarters pre-show. It's just like they haven't played anybody. Yeah. Atlanta's only lost to Toronto, and they just put them in a blender. Yeah, that's like not the way you want to come out because Sim is a player that you add to this roster to make sure he's consistently slain. 9 and 30. I can understand you're playing from the back foot the entire time, but you simply were not winning any gunfights. If you are the subliners, you got to throw this one away and just rely on what's been getting you through a bunch of these series throughout this entire season, and that's been Search and Destroy. And even when I say that, that's not going to be easy because you're going yeah. up against the number one SD team in the game, man. They have to figure it out and figure it out quick. It's just, you know, and I will say, just kind of looking at the maps that didn't have a lot of time to react to it, it this isn't really a map set that you look at and say, you know, either team is going to be thrilled or really upset about it. Like, both teams pretty even across the board on where we're going to be squaring up, especially these first two maps. But, man, that is not a map result that you would have expected. I think just generally speaking, with how New York looked in their last handful of hard points, winning by an average about 60, 70 points, outside of the first three hard points, I mean, it's just there's really wasn't any sign of life at all from New York after we got through four. Yeah, the, there was no sign of life besides Hydra. Somehow, some way, he was the only one going positive on that whole hard point. And he just some, he just figures it out. I don't know what he does. He does it with the MCW, does it with the Rival 9. But unfortunately, that's not enough to win map number one. And now you need to respond on a high rise search and destroy where Atlanta phase, they're sitting at a calm 3-0 record. Probably one of the best teams that we have on the map, but so is the subliners who are sitting at 3-1. These guys have a lot of similarities. Both great in the first bloods and even better after they find the first blood to walk away with a round win. 85% of the time, for Atlanta get it, they they get the W. 93% of the time for subliners if they find the first blood. So this is a head bash between both squads. And it is, I think, maybe just a bother byproduct of both these teams have very kind of similar ideas in terms of how they want to find the first bloods, kind of trying yeah. to find early engagements often. So it'll be curious I think to see, are they going to try to rely on players like Ibiza that you would expect on one side and Kismet on the other to get the SMGs involved early? Or will we see kind of an AR square up? Because that's really the only other way that this map really plays out. And I would say just generally looking at the numbers, those are the two guys that often get into the mix right off the get-go, which is support from their ARs watching over the top of them. So we'll see if that will be the case, because those are the two that I think in particular that will determine how this map goes. I know, and these are the S&D Major 2 qualifiers. Keep in mind that Atlanta Phase have only played one series and that required one search to destroy. So everyone's stats are going to be a little bit padded. On the opposite side, for Kismet, sitting at a 1.17, averages about 0.9 kills per round. Opening dual whip percentage, they're square ahead. So I'm really excited to see these battles between both of these great SMG players.
yeah it should be a really really fun one and again it's just one of those maps overall that you look at and you say there are a variety of ways that you can play it yeah. but i think just generally speaking trying to see how these two teams like to play it, I, you have to figure it's going to be all about the sub battle as we will be digging into the search and destroy celebration it's the 100 search and destroy of the season small little fun facts moving in through this one and like you mentioned just on the overall records both teams looking good it really just comes down to who finds that first blood you think yeah the first blood is going to be a major part and even after that the similarities between these teams when it comes to post plants or retakes atlanta phase are number one in both of those categories and the opposite side subliners are number three in both of those categories so this should be one of those back and forth SDs. But here's the quick wrap from Atlanta down through blue. Stuns and nades largely get a bit of a tag on it, but it doesn't hinder this phase approach over towards B. To Beezy just walks in to B up the ladder. Long range shots come through through mid. That's Sib who's trying to keep this defense honest over towards B, but that's enough information for phase to say, let's just track back, see if we can get onto A. Yeah, let's just trap back and see if we can isolate Hydra as well. They find the first blood onto Hydra through top heli. Sip trying to get out with his life. He is the bomb carry, but it's immediately recovered by Beezy. It turns into a 3v3. And with only 45 seconds left, Atlanta phase have decided to rat pack and take control of this B site as the bomb is now going to get planted. Nope, the team kill come in, so Beezy got to make some happen. Let's get one around the back. Off the regen, should stay safe. Isolates this down to a 1v2 standing. But New York had seen him drop into the underground, and they're going to reposition back over towards the Atlanta side of the map. Abizi, oh, just able to catch the top of Sky's head, but that's not enough for him to kind of read the information and transition. So New York, outside of the fact that it looked like Atlanta was kind of having their way with the map, they respond pretty darn nicely on their defense. Yeah, that's good work right there from the subliners. Even your teammate getting first blooded, you still stay strong on your setup. You read the rotations coming in from Atlanta phase. You're able to catch Simp as he... Tries to put himself back in towards bottom blue, make it a 3v3. And then once you take care of that player, realizing they're applying all the pressure over towards B Street, you start to get aggressive underneath Helipad. Take that side of the map and close out the round. Subliner strong on the first defense. Other thing to keep in mind here about Atlanta, when they're on the offensive side, this team loves to get the bomb down, especially on this map. The problem is they don't often hold or pretty flip-flop that. They don't get the bomb down off and when they do, they always hold it successfully, essentially 100% win rate when they plant so that will be the focus here for Atlanta offensively on the flip New York not bad either just comes down to can they actually get anything going in that first blood department as Sid will step on in towards B bomb nearby but no not going to be able to quite stay alive first blood goes to Atlanta yeah Mr. First Blood finds the first blood this guy's instantly there for the response but now you're forced to go out of Atlanta face to rotate over towards B it's time for Hydra to strike he's timing his jump up teammate still giving him information as he's already behind enemy lines to potentially find one for free well done does exactly that bomb being planted at a all the meanwhile and he still have skies lurking if he can just keep his life that would be fine isolation from atlanta is quick though so to into the very rapid 2v2 shots from hydra landing but not for a kill sip it easy now trying to work this one together and hydra and kismet are just going to try to stay away from them and maybe get behind the uh -oh. play, but Kismet looks left instead of right, and that's not enough for them to get the info. Abizi does trade out Simp 1v1. 20 seconds on the clock, and Abizi has no idea that Kismet slipped to the other side of the map. Misses the timing on the check. Kismet still checks over the bomb, doesn't see anything, and Abizi may have missed his window to jump on for the defuse, and yeah, sure has. Yeah, it's just no time for a BZ. Trying to locate where Kismet is. He has multiple different angles where he can check this bomb to make sure you're not defusing. At least if you are a BZ, you do end the round on a three streak, but the subliners get another round on the board. Just once it turns into a 3v3, you see their main plan was we got to put a lot of focus over towards B. There are attacks, force everybody from Atlanta face to rotate towards that side of the map, and then you allow Hydra to make an individual play. Takes down yeah. Celium, and you trade effectively over towards the B Street side. Even though Abizi takes down Skies in the 2v2, even Kismet gets some bad timing. Just not enough time for Abizi to locate where Kismet was. So 2-0 start for New York, but Abizi holding his life stays on with three spree. Stuns out Kismet, able to stop the play over towards blue. Atlanta largely stacked over towards the B side of the map, and it's Sib. At pretty good range, able to find first blood. Skies also has selling him into sights, but that fight gets delayed as we continue into the 3v4. And this is a different look right here from the subliners. First defense, it was everyone in the spawn. This time, it's everyone up towards the B Street side. The Skies finds the second onto Selium. BZ and Draza now left in the 2v4. Draza wrapping his way all the way back into his spawn. 
He's trying to open up a lane towards that B side. And BZ still trying to find a timing through the middle of the map. And Draza, if he can make noise towards A, a BZ's hoping that someone will transition his direction. But instead, he backs off. Tries to support Draza in whichever bomb site they choose to go to. 30 seconds on the clock, and well, bz has been seen, and he will drop off the map. Kismet, yeah, that works too. Okay, so how about this from New York? A little 3-0 start for the boys. The adjustments right there on the defensive setup. They said, all right, first time is a little more difficult when we sat in the back of our spawn, but this time we're going to get all out aggressive through underground, up through the B Street, find the first blood, find the second. Then in the 4v2, it's just not enough time for the rest of Atlanta phase. Put himself in a situation. As you see, a BZ trying to go for the fadeaway. Unfortunately, he falls off of the bat. He was going to die regardless. But New York subliners responding with a great search and destroy so far as they find three in a row. I need to know who the culprit of the Wilhelm scream is right then. <laughs> that what are we doing? I wouldn't be surprised if it was Clayster. You know, as many times that guy falls off the bat. Here comes New York through bottom blue. Stuns and nades over the top at Heli. Not really landing from either team's perspective, so the setups will kind of play out the way that play anticipated. But you do have Draza up top at Propane, clearing up the lane. Long angle from a BZ oh. to the pistol and nearly doubles up, but Hydra gets the quick trade and Sib behind that turns it into a 3v2 for New York. Even with the BZ finding the first blood, instant response right there from the Sunblinders, and now they have the advantage. In the 3v2, Sib was getting ready to fall off the map as well, but Sib wins that second gunfight, automatically puts Selium in a 1v3. He is in a great position, though, because they don't know where he is. He might be able to find a freebie here. You see him? Hello? Yeah. Again, he's lit up bright white for us, but <laughs> playing prone on top of that little fence line could be maybe a little bit more difficult. And obviously the result goes the way of New York with the numbers. I've told you, I mean, hey, first bloods, it's been, I would say, inconvincing in terms of how the stat line approached it because yeah. almost every single first blood's been quickly traded. So we're getting early 3v3s. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's like, even with the subliners getting first blooded, they're instantly in a position to find a response. And then on top of that, find a second kill. So they've been an advantage basically every single round. And now that puts them up 4-0. Wonder if Kismet did fall. Because he was on a little bit of a streak. No, him and Simba currently on four. Potentially finding a couple cruise missiles can close out this game. But this has been a response that I was not expecting. Yeah. Very, very clean SD from New York. A couple players possibly threatening for streaks. But Atlanta, first blood this time, not traded back as the date comes out. A BZ inside the site. Mixie with Hydra, but the 1v1 goes the way of New York. So again, we've got another quick 3v3. Now, if you are Atlanta Page, just trying to work up to the B Street, but already subliners take advantage of the map. Kismet pushes his way up through bottom blue, finds another kill onto Celium. End of man advantage now in the 3v2, and you basically have everything cut off. You even have Sib making sure no one sneaks through on their ground. No one's going to overextend to try to go over towards the A side, as you know where Atlanta phase are approaching it. Yeah. That smoke gets invested. Here comes High. That's all of the information, and Sib is there to pick up on the opening damage. Last player down low is Draza. And even though he does find the first, he's got no bomb, and this is a very difficult 1v3 in total, and that's the reason why New York is watching literally everything, and Sky's starting to feel himself a little <laughs> bit. Not sure what we would call that dance move, and I don't know if I want to know. They starting to have a little bit of fun out there. And when you're up 5-0 in s and D, Kismet picks up the final kill to earn a cruise missile. We gotta start having a blast as the subliners are not making any mistakes in this search and destroy. Even though the first blood went the opposite way, it was instantly responded. And then again, Kismet finds the second kill to put them in advantage. Usually at this point, I'm expecting Atlanta phase to show me a little bit different in the middle round adjustments. But every single time they try to make an adjustment, the subliners are there to make yeah. the adjustment. So this has just been... One round away for the subliners to close this one out. Flawless search and destroy potentially on the card. Sim trying to contest bottom blue, but Hydra just staying patient, finds the easy gunfight. Now you've got the streak getting called in by Kismet. And wow, did not have a speed 6-0 on the cards here. But New York are looking pretty darn good for it. Hydra still carrying the bomb, has not committed towards a site yet. Instead, there's a gunfight with the BZ down low that eventually gets finished off. And the last two Atlanta defenders are in a really, really bad spot as Hydra also takes down Draza Selium. Last one left alive. 1v4. Good luck. Have fun. Yeah, GG, man. GG. Let's just move on from this one. He finds the first kill, but it's instantly traded. Subliners respond with a very, very dominant map in game number two.
I don't think I've seen Atlanta Face get 6 0 a lot in my lifetime. Yeah. And that's the first time it's ever looked that clean. New York respond, tied the series up at one. That was a beat down. The yes, only other team that's even really contested Atlanta in search was Toronto. Toronto, so, yeah. Yeah, that could be a very eye opening experience for maybe how this series goes if we get it a little further down the line. But wow. I mean, we're talking six minutes and 36 seconds of the total game time right there. <laughs> Eight and oh from Kismet, six from Hydra. I mean, pick someone to talk about from New York and you're gonna find a successful storyline to sell. Oh yeah, they just dominated the game. No one could do any wrong. Like perfect game plan every single round, but they need to step up the pacing. They were able to do that. And then even after getting first blood at a majority of the times, just their game plan was too strong to instantly respond and then put themselves in an advantage after that. So New York able to tie the series up at one. But when I was looking at the numbers before like we even got into this series, they were really close when you talk about the hard points. They were really close when you talk about the S&Ds. Number sure. one and number two team there. But in control, Atlanta Faze are the best control team that we currently have. New York, they're sitting at seven, but a lot of that is boosted because they just found three easy wins on high rise. So this is the <laughs> mode that they have been struggling in. And Atlanta Faze, you need to capitalize on that. And this could be the map mode combination that may determine the entirety of the series based on how the hard point went so well for Atlanta and the search and destroy the converse side went so well for <laughs> New York. So join us the back side of the break because we're going to be heading to Karachi for our control and then we'll at least have a skid row hard point to follow up. This is your monster energy matchup. We'll be back after this. Upgrade your game with the Scuf, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store.
Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Welcome back to the CDL and our Monster Energy matchup as our friends in Columbus are giving us like production bits with like the Wilhelm scream, people falling off the map, throwing in a little bit of extra effort. It's our boy that? John Fenn with the backwards hat sitting in front of all the monitors. We love that guy. What type of Atari game is that, Alan? Like, I'm, I'm so old, <laughs> but I, I'm not that old. I saw Wait, it on no. six different screens a day. Is that Galaga? What is it called again? Why are you calling me out to identify it? Because you should know, my friend. Okay, that's just something to call for. <laughs> Let's get into the Karachi control. We were kind of talking about it before we loaded on up. Hey, both these two teams do square up on the on the math, the paper, yes. pretty darn well. I mean, both yeah. teams have put on some really well numbers when it comes to their offense in particular. So that could be the deciding factor or just out of who actually defends the zone better. Yeah, I'm thinking it all is going to come out to defense because both of these squads, they're right next to each other. We talk about the attack in rounds fourth and six. But fifth and sixth also on the defensive end. So this is just an absolute square up between both of these teams. But if you are Atlanta phase, you need to be able to shake off that last SD with loss. It went too damn fast. Hopefully yeah. that five minute break does justice for them as they start off initially on the attacking ground already. Sip is gonna be on that point. Yeah, great trades though from Atlanta. So they do not expect the pinch of the backside. Oh Ooh. my goodness, a PZ. Nearly got the Whirly Bird on him, but it's actually Sib who takes Kismet out with the team nade. So everything kind of resets here. 26.26, Hydra aggressive and just holds down the trigger into two phase bodies. So now all of a sudden things come to a bit of a significant pause here for Atlanta trying to work their way out of spawn. Yeah, they're trying to work their way out of Chicken Coop side, trying to take top three as well and eventually complete this A capture. But again, it's Kismet timing that deep flank as his teammates are applying pressure through the middle of the map puts themselves in a position to make sure no one is going to overextend over towards B. They have to only focus on the A point. It's all about time in this flank, though. He is actually a deeper rod as well, and he should be pretty loud because he's not going to have that dead silence. He actually does pop it here, and does this spot the to player towards top three? It's going to be a freebie oh, no. right there for Selian. And that's an opportunity possibly for Atlanta to work their way over towards the A zone. If he also drops right in towards Sib. Trades again, though. Decent now for New York as they hold a three-life lead defensively. Hydra also sees the trophy system. That's alert some next. Selim is up top, but can't quite lock down the shots. Kismet follows up and at least confirms the kill. Only one tick of progress been earned at this point. This has been fantastic for the news of New York. Follow-up shots from Kismet. Good. A 4-1 and one start for the Bulldog. And all of a sudden, Atlanta, once again, reeling, trying to get out of spawn. Yeah, only 14 seconds left. Make it 10. New York able to find three kills around the map. Send him last player up. Everyone else now forced to come off spawn. And that is a dominant, dominant defensive round right there from the subliners just trading efficiently through the middle of the map. Every time someone had to pop off and get a two-piece, it was usually on the back of Kismet making it happen. But New York only allowed one segment. That's exactly how you want to respond after that s &D. Yeah, and I think even more so maybe after the hard point where no yeah. one's getting trades and no one's winning gunfights, Atlanta's biggest motor towards success on offense is by outslaying their opponents. So you just kind of reduce that from happening and you keep contesting all those key high ground positions over the top of A and outside of the initial break off, Atlanta never really even sees the zone again. Yeah, they couldn't get on to the point. And now if you are the subliners, let's just complete the segments any way that we possibly could. And this is already a complete blind counter. Only simp over towards the cafe area as all of New York flying pressure. Can they find this kill? Kismet at least attempts to and sets up simp to find the trade. But New York already in a wow. position to pause that game clock. Kai's trying to do everything he can to just stay alive at this B point. Make this as annoying as possible, but he drops rapidly. And now off spawn New York, not 100% sure how open this A site is. Trophy system will supply some support for Sim, trying to capture as much as humanly possible. Atlanta mostly working on trying to work on the flank here. Two players through jump side. Sim may have gotten a call from a teammate as he kind of turns his head to look for this. And the first tick gets locked in. Second still being worked on. Sib has not been contested yet, but Atlanta are starting to find kills, and Sib will jump on forward, find the kill, and deplete some of the progress. Yeah, BZ with the super deep route flank. He's able to come up behind the players towards top three, find two, and now force all of the subliners all spawn. Only have one segment to their name. How do they decide to attack out? They try to put pressure over towards the junkyard side to take down. Sell him. Great trades are there. 
but there's still only 40 seconds left. Atlanta phase is doing a great yeah. job of just trading efficiently. Just the same way the way the subliners did in round one. A very, very 50-50 game at the moment. New York have hotel control. Trying to use that as the location for their main setup. Selium top AC not seen. Hydra does get enough support from Kismet to confirm one elimination. But the problem is it doesn't allow any route to get onto either zone. Sky's able to maybe provide some sort of an attack over towards B, especially with the help from Kismet a little bit deeper over towards the Atlantis spawn. That's where the clock will stop. Yeah, the clock is going to stop. Still a player here to contest them. It's going to be a BZ. I expect nothing less out of one of the fastest players that we have in the CDL. Puts himself on a five, make it six, picks up the cruise missile. But that second segment is not going to get complete for the subliners over towards A. They're in an opportunity to overextend that time, force an extra minute on the game clock. And with three dead, yeah, Atlanta phase are forced to now give that one up. And Hydra does try to play for a bit of spawn kill over towards the Atlanta side of the map, but only finds one before being traded. Extra 60 seconds will be tallied on for life gap in favor of Atlanta. New York, though, lots of space through mid-map. The only one really to contest this is Sim, and he finds perfect timing. Hydra right in front of him, but he avoids the double kill, and things will reset with New York trying to find entry to beat. That's yeah, a big kill to take down Simp, though. That's a great start. Now you have somewhat red control, but do you read the positioning of a BZ who's currently blocking your spawns by simply being pushed out towards junk? I thought it was going to be Simp trying to commit towards that gunfight, but a BZ might have found another timing on the map. He decides to go on this late pinch, but Atlanta phase, they aren't budging. They are waiting for New yeah. York to make the move. It just comes down to do they know the threat is as close to B as it is. Draws it in trouble. Lots of damage, but can't confirm the second kill, so the clock stops again. This time at 30 seconds. New York would just sieve on for now. Sky's trying to make sure nobody rotates back in Sims prediction. Perfect on door to BZ. 28 seconds of the clock. Atlanta still trying to make a mess of this red push. So New York has to flood this through the middle of the map. There's not an option to get here quick, but the spawn is so far away. Wallbang tags are decent, but Atlanta will clear the zone. Clock continues to tick, and New York going to be hard-pressed to find entry back in door B. Yeah, with only 20 seconds left, everyone coming off spawn. Farthest player post up is going to be Hydra. It all starts by taking these players down towards Junk. Job well done. They find the second kill as well. So now you can still get on the point. Just got to get past Sip. Sip is going to be sitting in towards the bottom of the ticket. He cuts down two with the pistol. Tries to take down the third. But it's already job well done. Atlanta phase holds strong on the defensive end. But they do allow the subliners to yep. get an extra three segments. So that could play a dividend as we get to the later half of this game. Man. It's just so surprising when you see, again, how both of these two teams have fared on Karachi in the past, and it has all been by way of how successful and how quick a lot of their offenses have been. But neither able to really do too much in the first minute and a half <laughs> that they're given at the spawn-up moment. So see if that will change here for New York as they had a really tough time existing on the top third position over the top of this A zone at least initially, but we're good at trying to follow up behind that. Atlanta going to try to take their aims over towards B off the get-go this time with just Sam jumping onto A to keep the focus of the New York defense. Yeah, this is perfect. This is a perfect game plan right here from Atlanta phase. You get one player on towards the A point. Everyone else overextended to try to get over towards B, but Hydra's still in a position to make something happen. He finds two off the rotation. Abizi knows I just can't sit on a cafe by myself. Takes down one, but the skies is instantly there for the trade. New York read that perfectly. Oh, so oh my nice little snap up towards skies he was looking for the entire time and with that follow-up kill from bz mid-map now you've got sip streaking over towards the b zone first tick of progress that a has not been finished but the focus for atlanta is purely here on b double stack in a bz working over towards the dumpster only finds one it does allow kismet to break through but he's gonna have to do a lot more than that second tick of progress in third on the way skies cannot get over the top and atlanta's not just gonna get the 60 seconds here they've already got a bz at a oh yeah that's easy right there too easy for bz they Secure that B point. Now you already have one segment complete over towards A. If it gets a little bit scary, you can invest that cruise missile to walk away with the round win, but the guns are now hot. They find two, make it three. Father's player pushed up is going to be Sib. Wow. A BZ. He and Sib combined for that kill. Second segment already done. Atlanta phase might have just called the round. Yeah, there's that slaying presence that we were talking about. Nade comes over the top, though, and actually Obi. finds two inside the zone. Hold on a second with the follow-up Sib. It's going to be good for three. Kismet pushing up the map. He's gotten into the P3 hardpoint. 
he can just completely flank this whole Atlanta setup, but only comes away with one. And now New York have to scramble to defend against this top fire position. Yeah, a minute and 50. New York only have 11 lives remaining. So if you are at landed phase, you can take your time, hit a couple routes. And that's what you see Selim is currently doing. He's going to jump over the backside of Dumpster, block that close ball for the sublines and potentially set up a pinch. But New York, they know exactly where this pressure is coming in from. Sid holding down a great position towards the top. Fountain can only find one for his endeavors. But now Atlanta phase, all you have to do is just take your time here. Take apart, find the kills. You can either capture this last tick or get the last eight kills, whatever is most convenient for you. Minute 19 on the clock as it's paused with the BZ inside the A zone. Next to him on the other side of the wall is Draza. New York get in for the contest. Team kill comes through and Sib clears. Can he get significant depletion? That's going to be the real key here as Atlanta does not have any follow-up. And yeah, he's going to deplete the entire third tick of progress. Still a chance here for New York's defense. But yeah, it's time to invest that cruise missile. He said this was a little bit too close for comfort. This is a round that we have to walk wow. away with. But his teammates fall in those fights. Cruise missile gets nothing. So already a minute knocked off of the game clock. Subliners have been able to bring these lives back. They're currently only down by five, but still only a matter of moments. Easy finds the first kill. Draza not there for the trade and just keep on staying alive. Like that's what yeah, New York yeah. are doing so great. They're finessing over towards the chicken coop side. You're forcing Atlanta face to overextend every single time. But with those two, make it three Atlanta phase are going to close out the round. Wow. I mean, that cruise was getting called down. You had, what, Simp and Draza both sitting inside a red waiting for New York to kind of flood through Firehole and see if they can find a way to get the free kills. No eliminations come through, and it's actually New York who get two off the back end of it. And then, like you mentioned, it looked like New York were going to be set up perfectly, but still, Atlanta members getting around the back, the big key after capturing that B zone. Yeah, because all you have to do is just allow one of your teammates to get one kill, and then the players who was working on the back end, it was a majority of the time it was selling him. He knows exactly what that player is spawned. So only seven lives remaining. You find three kills through the middle of the map, you can potentially put him in a trap, but just the dominance on that round. A lot of Atlanta phases to win that one, even though it came down to the wire. Now up to one back on the defensive side. Subliners has found a little bit of a success, at least in the segment column. Couldn't walk away with the W. They need this one of voice round five. Yep. Kismet. Ay, ay, ay. Nice little bounce up from a BZ. Three in a row is what he carries as New York still exists on the A zone. First tip will be locked. But a BZ off the reload. He's got Simp on the other side of him. The crossfire is menacing. Sky's top third. Maybe not seen by a BZ here as yep, Draza will at least find one before the trade comes through. So the second tick will not be fully completed. And now New York have to continue to worry about getting out of their spawn. And well, that kill on the simple will make sure they can actually get out and flood over towards it. Yeah, they're going to be able to get out for free now. The second segment is about to be complete. You still know that Selim is going to be sitting towards his top broken corner. That's actually three dead. So this is where you hit that go button. Leave the last player towards top three on towards the point. Everyone else try to take somewhat control of the cafe. But with the BZ finding that kill onto Hydra, you see Sib's focus completely changes. He can't play for a couple spawn kills. You got to wrap back and try to fight that player towards Junk. Fortunately, get some bad timing there. So Atlanta face, they are ready for the push. Pushed out towards the uh, Junk area. Even though New York were able to extend time by a minute, Atlanta face set up exactly how they want to be. They're firmly in control. The only player really in their way is Skies. And wow, Sully, I'm able to catch him from the low ground. Kismet not able to get out of spawn. And this is where things start to get really deadly for New York. I yeah, to yeah. Find kills. You could not allow this to turn into what the hard point looked like, where Atlanta just winning 1v1s time after time. And that's what's currently existing. Sky's able to find a single kill, but this is so punishing towards the life count. 21 play 13. Atlanta absolutely frying. And a BZ, I'm pretty sure, ended that kill that kill feed on a six tree. So he earns himself another cruise missile. Just absolutely dominating the junkyard. And you see the lives remaining for both squads. That put a really hefty margin for New York to not make any mistakes. That's all four dead again in the feed. Atlanta, they said, uh, that round one was a little bit of a shakeup, but we're here to play. 30 and 14 out of a BZ. Yeah, let's start making it rain with some streaks. First one gets called in. So I'm not quite able to get away, but the BZ's cruise missile does confirm the trade. 17 plays, 8. New York has Simp to worry about. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not up. what you want to see in a BZ right behind. Three go down again in New York. Are just fighting a battle of inches where you give up something one place, you try to gain it back on another, but it's just so costly. Yeah, now with five lives remaining, it has to be picture perfect from this point on. 30 seconds as well remaining on the game clock. It all starts by finding the opening kill. Great shots right there out of skies, but it's instantly here. Sip 
survives the trade. No more lives remaining. Sip trying to go for the second. He does get gunned down by Kismet, but there's no more respawns. 12 to 3. This is looking like Atlanta. And that looked a lot more like what we expect from Atlanta. Just absolutely dominating teams in the slaying department. Holy cow. I mean, like you said, first two rounds feels like, okay, we've got ourselves a game of tug of war here. Both teams yeah. very even, putting up good defense. Sure, you had New York kind of getting away with more on their offense, but after that, it was just all land all the time. And yeah, they just made it look easy. Can you imagine coming all spawn on your attacking rounds and you can't get out of your base because Sip is on one side and the BZ's on the yeah. other? Like, yeah. you're usually finding ARs in those positions, but the SMGs were applying the pressure, finessing multiple lives. A BZ every single time at Junkyard. He found himself on multiple 6th Street. He picked up two cruise missiles on the map. 33 and 16, 5k Unreal. damage. And then the opposing side, sit right next to him. His SMG duo of 51 dam 5100 damage. They just took over on the later half of that game. And Atlanta phase found himself firmly up 2-1. It's just when the tiny terrors get brewing like that, it it's just hard doesn't to feel stop, like man. Yeah, dude. And they have to feel like the most frustrating kills on the map. It's just so much finesse. They're so hard to confirm kills on. And then when you match that on top of the fact that New York's just not winning 1v1 gunfights in round three and round four, I, I mean, okay, I just game over, it feels like at that point. It's just so hard to battle back when the team is moving like this. So yeah, the first two rounds, it looked like, okay, you know, we didn't expect that either team would have much of an advantage on the map. Both kind of had similar success stories in the past, but I'll tell you, map three, or round three, round four, is all about killing and Atlanta does that very well. Yeah, they just, in the round three on their attacking round, they just caught him off guard with the game plan right off the rip. You send everyone over towards B. And you eventually stack that point. You close that one out first, and then it's only a matter of time before you're able to close that A, especially when you were out slaying them the way that you were. So now that Atlanta phase find themselves up 2-1, you're going into a skid row HP, and if anything, like, map number one is going to tell us, like, Atlanta phase in these respawn game modes, they have found a different level of play where they're just making the game look easy it doesn't matter if they're not winning rotations they are finding breaks and even after that when they usually tend to struggle in hps it's because they're instantly getting broken on map number one we saw it on full display they were able to fold full 60 holds basically time after time so if you are the subliners again in a, in a situation where you have to forget that last map wasn't even close as you got to the round three and round four but now you're going into a skid row hp where Anyone can win this. You just have to make sure you're the team that's setting up properly to hold down some good time. And well, to speak to that point a little bit more in detail, you're dealing with New York, who by the numbers are the number one rotation percentage yes. win team. Atlanta is the number two team. So yeah. expect to see a lot of this map likely come down to who gets the P2, P5 first. I, I mean, that's often the case as it is normally, but when you've got two teams that are very much so forward thinkers, that is going to be, I think, maybe the biggest difference maker here is when do these teams prefer to try to get themselves set up and can they successfully do it? And as you take a look at the numbers between both of these guys on Skid Row specifically, obviously you're going to have a lot of successes in SMG finessing around, even pulling out the MCW at points, but a 1.37 for Sim, 1.34 for Hydra. I expect nothing less out of both of these MVP caliber kind of players as they just put down the damage. They also soak in time. These guys are Mr. Do-It-All on some Skid Row HP. Yeah, that really is. And... I think so, it just in particular, it's at a league where we see a lot of the high KDs are owned by AR players due to their, you know, maybe at some point, smaller numbers of engagements, yeah. more about rotating and locking down and anchoring up some key hard points like we're gonna see here. The fact that they're able to pull numbers like that really is impressive, like flat out. I feel like the teams that are gonna have the best SMGs by the end of the year are likely gonna be the teams that find themselves, I would say at worst on Sunday, uh, champs, side, champs finals when we get there eventually, so. We'll see if that will continue to be the case here and for those two players in particular. But I will say outside of the SMGs finding success, I think a lot of this is just down to will we see Skies and Civ actually play a good duo game? Because we know we're going to get out of draws and sell. It's happened year after year. Yeah, 9 and 30 out of 7 map number 1. Yeah, that ain't cut, cutting it, my friend. You need to make sure you're spawned in on some Skidder HP because we know how impactful those P2 holes can be. Full 6 yeah. every single time if your ARs are holding down their lanes. Also at P5, another hill where you need those ARs to make sure they're setting up properly, holding the head glitches, sitting towards back crates, just absolutely making the game easier for their SMGs. But yeah, when I was even looking at the numbers a little bit more adept, these guys might be number 1 and number 2 in rotations, but the good thing for Atlanta, out of all the other maps that they have, they are second in hold percentage on a map like Skid Row compared with the subliners who were sitting at eight. You see the numbers right there. Like, if you're not getting holds on a map like Skid Row, you're not going to find success. They are 2 and one New York are 3 and one but somehow, someway, they're getting it done. Just simply putting themselves on the better side of the map. I don't understand it.
It's all about those rotations and holding those rotations, to put it very plainly. So, again, like we already talked about, both teams have been great when it comes to rotating on this map in particular. It just comes down to will they be able to successfully use that rotation as a means towards winning this map. Atlanta spawning on the preferred side, and they're also the first ones in towards the hilt. New York largely trying to focus on working deep around this setup, but Atlanta with the first opening kills can turn their focus back to make sure P2 stays safe. That was such a beautiful play right there to draws. I'm definitely taking that and putting it into my rank play arsenal. The fact that he was instantly going to play for anyone trying to overextend, playing for that P2, but he doesn't spot anyone. He actually pushes up to the God steps and allows his teammates to put their sole focus on the double doors. Even though it does lead to the break for the sub line, as you allow the rest of your teammates to not put any focus on towards P2. But as I say that, you see the sub line yeah. just laying all around the map. They're getting a lot of P1 time, and they were already able to flip those spawns. Sub line is in control right now, P2. But Atlanta will be able to break through the old time. This will make this rotation not feel as punishing. Finding 30 plus seconds worth of time or so on P1. But the problem is, like you mentioned, New York fully established and ready to go here for the second hard point. Atlanta will try to at least get through this crate's position, but Hydra's just kind of playing an easy corner here, just watching people to cross in front of him. Yeah, he's just watching two ankles at once. His teammates are giving him the comms of anyone crossing over towards the P5 area, but he's also holding down Garage. So subliners. 20 uncontested seconds so far. Setup has been great. Hydra, his position finally gets known. And now the rest of Atlanta phase. Once you take care of him, you try to send it, and you get pounded right there by the subliners. They find all four kills in the feed. Kismet also is on a five streak, so full 60 hole from response right here from the subliners. It's a great, great answer. And even better than that, they get a perfect read from Hydra topside fire on where Atlanta is rotating and how many have already pushed through. So Sky's very alert that, yeah, there are face players that are already set up for P3. On four to row. Simp in the corner, dealt with through the wall bang. Now just one off of a cruise missile, which could be huge for New York to try to blow this game wide open. Yeah, him and Kismet are both one kill off. So as long as it's not a baited switch between them, it's actually a baited switch between Sip and Skies, the trade is going to be there. And Kismet, I don't know if he was able to pick it up. Yeah, yes, he, they, did. he yep. did. So that's two cruise missiles to work with. New York are in a great position to make this game go in their favor. But Atlanta Faye so far been holding down this P3 to the T. When it got a little bit scrappy, a couple players from the New York subliners tried to attack from Laundry. They read it perfectly. And that's a break, though. Subliners right through the front end. They find it. Draza up top. Ooh, team shots come through in perfect amounts of time here for New York. Selim knows he's got two players weak in front of him, and but only can find the first. Still, Atlanta working their way forward, and there it is. Final shots will land. Hydra wants to give it one more good crack, though. Draza just trying to hold his life, and that will be just about it. Hydra setting up over towards Laundry as New York is going to default to playing for rotation again. Yeah, off the rotation. You already have a player towards back apartments as well. But he does get sifted out. That's already a two-piece off the rotation. The both those players from the subliners are going to spawn all the way at P5. So you have the numbers if you are Atlanta. Just got to apply this pressure, win these trade fights, and you've got the easy break. Well, New York is in first, but they're struggling to get their setup. Prime time for us to jump over to a subliner. So listen in. I got to reload. I got to reload. I'm on the dead. I have your lights right here. Got me. 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 Yeah, I'm crossing it. Yeah, I'm crossing it. 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 I'
Well, to this point, New York looking clean on our money. Hills rotating over and then giving themselves the space they need. And Atlanta just has not gotten past this ticket position at all. Yeah, the Sunblinders are not having as much fun as they were in the listener versus Boston. If they are versus Atlanta, they got to make sure they are locked. And their backs are also against the wall. But Atlanta, they just haven't been able to wait, work their way in towards the P5. So you have to chalk that one up. You got to set up properly for this P1. And it's still Hydra trying to contest from the back alley. He gets cut down. So currently a 50-point game. Atlanta facing get right back into it with some great time. But you also got to think ahead at P2. If yep. you can get a full 60, you can take this lead. Yeah, Atlanta has done a great job on 1, 3, and 4. I mean, if you yeah. were to tell anyone that, hey, you're going to get full 60, essentially, on P2 and P5, but only be down 50 points, I think you take that every day of the week. Hydra still putting focus, though, over towards this second hard point. New York need to keep some focus, though, on the actual current hard point, though, as well, because, again, Atlanta's just been soaking up so much time. So as they commit back over towards old, you'll look down to the mini-map, and you see Draws is already in position over towards new. Great moment here for Atlanta. Yeah, this is an opportunity for Atlanta to get themselves right back into this game. But keep in mind, the subliners have two cruise missiles. Yep. So they can try to open it up towards this P2. So now you're forced to play indoors. Guys are going to invest the first. Nothing is going to be able to connect. But just the repositioning out of the place from Atlanta phase to put themselves inside. Now you allow the subliners uh -oh. to try to apply pressure. But that's three dead. Atlanta phase, this is the opportunity with a full 60. They can take the lead. Yeah, hit just wasn't super well coordinated. And they're going to call second cruise okay. missile in here. Wow, this is bold. Does this find any value? You've got three members stacked up over towards ticket side. And yes, Kismet does connect on the Cellium. So the only one inside the hard point is Draza. He's going to have to do it himself. First kill good. Abizi coming out of tunnel. And oh no, both cruise missiles come up essentially empty. No full secured break. Still 30 seconds to fight for. And Draza still alive atop. Yeah, you just can't scam. Just don't scam from P2. Your teammates are going to be able to flood through tunnel. And you also have one player off the rotation as well. And Sim thinking to step ahead. He knows I'm going to rely on my teammates to get a full 60. We're going to be able to tie this game up. And we get two investments out of a cruise. It's basically a wash. Starting from 0-0. Zero, zero. As we are off to the P3. It's going to be the subliners winning a couple fights. So they're going to be the team initially again to win that rotation. Not often you see Selium being the bottom fragger for Atlanta phase. And he's having a tough time getting in position at the moment. But if that were to change, New York could find themselves kind of awakening a giant. But for now, they do open up Mural Alley to their name. Hydra up top, just making sure no one hits through mid. So New York should have an idea of where this hit is coming from. But Atlanta are taking their time here. They're looking to isolate these kills at mid before they want to really fully hit this from the front. But they kind of get both at the same time. Kismet over the top of the stairs, able to find the first and simple not be entertained. Not looking for the gunfight yet, trying to wait for help. And as he does Kismet low, Abizi will try to follow up behind him. Yeah, he just wanted to make sure and see what's going to spawn behind him. No one was going to go on a pinch, but it's still Kismet. And now Sky is holding it down. They hold it down so strong that you're going to set up Hydra on the pinch. Unfortunately, only thinks that there's one player there. Simp has been alive for such a long time, but he has not been able to get on to this point. Finally, with the final 15, Atlanta are able to get the break. But off the rotation, yep. 200 points for the subliners. They can win it at this barbershop hill. Just got to hold this first push, and it's going to fall into the hands of Skies. They're applying pressure through the backside of apartments. Oh, but he gets absolutely gunned. Just doesn't know which gunfight he wanted to take. So New York just holding on to cabinets, sink faucets, whatever they can inside a kitchen. Here comes the play through Barber. Atlanta all stacked through, but it's Hydra from the front. Just holding down the trigger, oh. but a team name takes down two. Sip can still get into contest. He's able to find a lot of skies, but not enough for the full kill. But Atlanta get a full surround on the hard point. The contestant once again, and the unfortunate team Nate eventually leads to an Atlanta break. Yeah, that's such a tough team Nate because subliners would have had a full setup with a clean four dead. But at least you're still in the position to set yourself up for the W. You already see Skies is taking a step ahead. We're going to contest the hell out of this barbershop hill, but we're going to win that rotation over towards B5, where we were unbreakable. This time around, it's going to be Selim working through the back end. He gets naded. He's the first person to fall. Can Sim find the second? No, he cannot. Sim actually takes down a BZ. Sim wins both. So it's going to be the New York subliners. An opportunity to close out the game here at P5. What a regain map from Sib. 23 and 17. Kismet at 22 and 15. And they have shut down Selium almost completely. 220, 196. Atlanta able to at least gain P2. A chance to fight this back. But they have no view whatsoever at Sky inside the hard point. But 
problem is Kismet is the only one trying to assist them. That's going to be enough for the first kill. Sky's tagged up. There's the break on in. 229, 198. Atlanta in the hill and looking to hold. New York trying to break this from the front. Hydra lines up a couple and a chance to still have New York win the game here. <laughs> Oh, some big shots out of both SMG players. Still an opportunity to win the game. We just got to get a trophy down. Hydra's probably not going to be running one as he's a dead silence player, but it's only 10 seconds away until the subline is able to force game five. Atlanta finding a couple eliminations. They could still contest. It just comes down to can they take Hydra out of the hard point, and they are able to. 245 is where it stops. Kills from Sid make this transition for Atlanta a bit more hard pressed. And Gizmet inside the new hill, able to find the first. Someone's got to go. They need to confront this trade, and Drossel gets caught on the mantle. There's 246, and the kills from Skies surely send this to a map five, and they will. Oh, after a couple of blow up maps, we finally get a good one, and New York extend the series the full distance. Oh, Subliners just came out swinging on that map. Even though they didn't get anything out of their two cruise misses towards one hill, they were just so far ahead of the game. When you talk about rotations, being patient, knowing exactly where Atlanta phase are trying to break from on the majority of those hills. I think the turning point was that P3. The fact that you had Atlanta phase basically tie the game up at the end of that P2. But when you get over to the P3 side, you take laundry side. You win a couple gunfights on that side of the map. It's a 2v4 in the point. Kismet just stays alive so damn long that you saw Atlanta phase even simp could not contest them to get them off of that hp when you get to that 200 port mark you keep barbershop hill scrappy and then even off the rotation you were the team initially to start off with it atlanta phase were forced to break on in but they could not win it at that hp yeah. subliners knew we can rotate over towards top p1 catch all of atlanta phase late off the rotation and close out the game at the final hp new york such a back and forth yeah. game, but the difference is those P2HPs, at least the first one was great, but the second P1, the fact that they were able to walk away with a majority of that time, Atlanta phase to respond with P2, but they were just so far ahead of the game the entire way, and they were able to force that game number five. It really is the bumps at the P2 and P5 levels right there on the game flow chart that decide things. And you want to talk about again about the difference that, that makes. How often have we seen Atlanta play this map? Selium's the first one in and he just doesn't get moved. But this time not to be as New York find a way to get us to map number five. It's an invasion search and destroy. And uh, I don't anticipate a 6-0 affair no. here. So we'll break everything down as we send things off to our final break of the weekend. And we come back with will hopefully be a banger here at map number five five between Atlanta and New York. We'll be right back. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store.
got a map five to close out the weekend after the first three maps were pretty much blowouts for one side or the other. We have a banger, the Skid Row Hardpoint, Take Evasion, Search and Destroy. And I think for New York, you're looking at this saying, hey, we looked good in the first Search and Destroy, but Invasion is a totally different story when it comes to playing Atlanta here, Jay. Yeah, this is their only map that they don't have a positive record on. Every other map, Subline is a great in S&D, but this is the only one they're sitting at a one and two record. And you're playing against Atlanta Phase, who are the best Invasion Search and Destroy team that we have in the game with an overall record of six and one as you take a look at the game five staff from sim in the game with an overall record of six and one as you take a look at the game five staff from sim yeah this is mr takeover 1.67 you do that in this game five you're walking away with this w yeah absolutely the case in again it's just one of those situations that you look at some of the breakdown statistics the opening duels not as evenly dispersed as it was on high rise overall i mean like you mentioned atlanta is so good at this map and they're doing it everywhere the only real beacon for success for new york is that hey they're good at not allowing the bomb to get planted defensively and getting retakes but Outside of that, it's been a little bit more hard pressed. As skies will open us with first blood, Abizi seeing a lot of information through that front lobby over towards B, and that alerts Atlanta that the hit is on. Yeah, and that's a big first blood as well, because subliners they are 12th overall on the attacking side of getting that opening duel. The nade is going to get the job done. So already in the man advantage in the 4v3, They're trying to isolate at least this player over towards B. Still maintaining that map controls. You have Skies making sure no one overextends, but he might get some bad COD timing or some good COD timing. He's mm. able to spot a BZ on his deep pinch. This 1v1 could be pivotal for both sides. Cell able to find one Hydra does get the isolation towards a BZ. That means the bomb can freely rotate back over towards A. And Hydra's not done here at B. He wants to see if he can catch anyone from Atlanta on the rotation over, and he may have perfectly predicted Draza needs just another. Oh! Draza comes back out at literally one HP to find the kill. Still hard pressed though. This would be a 1v3 bomb planted. Yeah, Hydra does not lose gunfights like that that often. But now it's a 1v2 left up to Draza. 30 seconds left. Players from Subline is so far pushed out. There's no way in hell he's able to read this setup. Kismet. He does see him over the top, but the shots don't confirm the kill. Skies on rotation over. That was also red, but wow. Beams from Skies absolutely destroys. And that's enough for New York after the first blood to find the conversion and smiles already coming through. Okay. They started to have some fun, man. They started to have some fun, but it all started with the first blood from Skies. Gets it with the nade, and then they ISO a BZ on that deep pinch. Even though Selium finds a kill through the minute map, once you take down mm. a BZ, you know there's no one defending that A site. Let's get the bomb down, play our numbers. And then in the 3v1, eventually turns into a 1v2. Just too far away from that site. Too much ground to cover right there from Jaza as New York take the first. Three kills in the round from Skies after the first blood. Huge. How about this? Quick rotation. Double defenders making their way through dark and up close and personal. Sim has been seen. A BZ shots. Not enough to confirm again. But Kismet, completely unknown, is just holding over the top of the B control point. And uh oh, not like this! Sim's <laughs> able to find both. Kismet tried to stamp around, but just too late to the fight. Selium gonna get isolated here, but the bomb should surely be planted. Yeah, you get all the info right there if you are Atlanta. Selium drops, at least you know both players are on that side of the map. So a free B bomb plant. And now you're gonna force the subliners in a 3v2 retake. They're slowly trying to work their way up through Ice Cream side. All of Atlanta base have all of their bases covered. You have mid dark. You have the over extension as well. You're just playing for some info and they got it all. This is a tough breakdown. Have to try to isolate somewhere somehow, but no, no one's getting through this door. Skies will at least get his fourth elimination, so he'll stay 4 0 as he will concede the round. We'll go 1 1. Maybe a chance he could find a BZ on the exit, but you don't want to overstay your welcome here with a potential cruise missile to be earned. Yeah, you just want to get one, get out with your life. And unfortunately, a BZ with the beams. Wow. wow. See, that definitely caught Skies off guard. He was not ready for him to be in that positioning. But a BZ, doesn't matter what guns he has. Oh, that was actually Draza. He had the snap right there with that MCW. Even the nade was probably going to connect, but just great adjustments right there from Atlanta phase, more specifically on Simp. The fact that Kismet put himself in that position for a free death is kind of tough, but Atlanta phase, walk away with an attacking ground, tied up at one. Okay. Reset the tables again. I mean, it's one of those situations you think back to the high rise, how convincing every single round was for New York. 
you gotta be feeling confident in what you brought to the table in search overall even though this map necessarily hasn't been great for you in the past as the bomb this time makes its way over towards b double stack set up defensively on a this is a heavy loaded a defense actually for atlanta with selium watching the deep water out and i was really curious to how scott was able to hit that nade all the way through mid courtyard i'm pretty sure a majority of the subliners players are running ordinance gloves so they're able to throw those nades throw those stuns a little bit deeper well it's still a four root four subliners trying to think how they are setting up around this beat point. It's actually not a single player on the site. They're just playing for the crosses and all information gained now. If you are Atlanta, let's make sure we shut down this play. But New York hasn't fully committed to this yet. I mean, Kismet's up real far, but he doesn't have to stay here. He's got enough support to back up if they want to. The problem would be the clock. And Kismet now will commit into a position to where this has to be a B play. Yeah, but only 30 seconds left. Just had to try to keep him off bomb as long as you can. Try to see if anyone has any tacks to take him off of the site. Great shots from draws to at least not allow him to get it down for free. But here comes the smoke grenade to cut off the angle. And it's actually Sip who invests it. This is what he usually does in the beginning of the season. He just runs right through the smoke. Him and draws a combined for three. And Skies is so far away from the rest of his team. With only 10 seconds left, he can't even get the damn bomb down. This is Atlanta phase. Clean on the defensive setup. Yeah, really swift rotation. And maybe more importantly, it's the simple fact that even though Kismet doesn't necessarily fall to the opening shots when he tries to plant, it pushes him off long enough for the rest of the Atlanta defense to get yeah. here. Huge. Wow. And I think it's, again, retrospectively, New York's going to look back at that round and said, we did have opportunities to back up and delay, but I think it just simply comes down to, like you mentioned, the clock just became an issue too quickly. Yeah, it just became an issue. And then you allow Sim to invest that smoke grenade, basically shut down all the players on tank who were trying to watch that back end of ice cream. Just runs right through, finds the first kill on Draza with the second. So a great defensive setup right there from Atlanta face to read exactly what the subliners were going to do. Now they're back on the attacking side, and it's Selium again on the island, watching that overextension as Hydra tried to be aggressive, but you're going to be able to back them down and force all of the subliners to basically play back in their spawn. Yeah, lots of early info, though, that no one was playing up in towards that A lobby. So the defense can kind of gauge a little bit more focus towards B. Draza, BZ, long range shots, tags it, backs him off just a touch. This is all just pixel peaks until Kismet is able to convert first blood on BZ trying to stretch forward. It's a big kill onto a BZ. And it's already 40 seconds knocked off of that game clock. So another play knows from our Atlanta phase. We cannot waste a lot of time trying to isolate Kismet. We have to bring it back towards Cafe. It's now with only 40 seconds left. Some liners have read this perfectly. It's time to get aggressive up through the B streets, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Tank, big win for Simp. Gets us to a 3v3. Time still becoming an issue, Skies. Stops Draza from getting any more control over the A site. Now Kismet's on a flying freebie onto Simp. That's your bomb carrier down and a nice follow-up gunfight over the top of the A site as New York keep us level. Yeah, it's just strong on defense, man. The fact that Kismet is able to walk away with that first blood, it basically shuts down all the game plan from Atlanta face to try to isolate him. And then in the 3v4, it's just not enough time to work up on this A site. You did not clear anything towards Cafe. You didn't clear anything towards the mid tank. So you're just checking every single corner as you work your way up. Just wasting that game clock. And it plays right into the hands of the subliners as eventually Kismet goes on that deep pinch, finds a freebie, and then Hydra closes out with the final. All tied up at two now. What's the call here? Both teams have shown a little bit of everything to this point. Atlanta going with two defenders, draws in Simp over the top of B and maybe even a bit further. New York trying to play a little bit more passively, get a read on some of this aggression, and they're in a pretty decent spot to make sure at least nobody gets too far forward in any part of the map. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. That's why they have this set up the way that they have it. No one's going to push to the right street, no one up middle, and definitely no one off the B side. So, I know all of Atlanta phase is going to be playing towards the back end, but BZ did put down a couple shots in towards Cafe, so you're slowly trying to clear that one out. A couple sound cues come in, so Abizi knows that they are going to be in the cafeteria. How long do they decide to play a patient before they sniff him out? Pretty much a one-for-one one position for Abizi if he does get challenged. Door opens. Smoke comes through. Abizi doesn't get baited to take any shots whatsoever, so he still has a chance to, again, at least have some sort of a gunfight here. Smoke dissipates. New York have not committed, but again, Atlanta's defense is still so confident in their setup. Now a BZ gets activated. He does go one for one before the trade comes through. 25 seconds on the clock. Bomb gets collected. Has not been committed for a plant yet. Disguise is trying to isolate onto Selium, but a difficult decision to make. And now you've got Cell pushing forward. Held back though by Kismet, and the bomb does get planted. 3v3. Bomb gets planted, but now you allow Atlanta face to already be on your heels. 
As they find the kill on to sell him. It's all about wow. the trades, but Kismet on the pinch. Makes it happen through the midside of Cafe. Finds the final two on the round. I would have liked to see Scott just instantly go for the mom plan, but once Selim had him one shot, you saw Selim was trying to commit towards that fight. Great cover fire from Kismet to keep his teammate alive and then the reposition in through Cafe to line them up perfectly. Secure the attacking round for the Subliners. Now take advantage up 3-2. It really is that play. Stopping Selim from denying the plant everything for New York. Wow. Okay. Five in a row for Kismet on top of that. Sib still trying to get on the board, but doesn't take away from how thrilling of a map this has been to this point. Atlanta coming passively off spawn. Kismet just a couple of the tags, just trying to call out how many players have crossed. He's also playing for one kill, man. If you could earn that cruise missile on a map like Invasion, you're attacking over towards B, you can basically shut that down whenever the hell you want. But it's already 25 seconds knocked off of the game clock. Atlanta face slowly working their way up through B. Just checking every corner. He could potentially be cages. He could potentially be on the backside of Tractor. All right, Abizi's getting all this info. So now you know there's probably no one on the site if we check out this close corner as well. Yeah. Smoke thrown deep. There is a trophy system on point for New York, but there are no members here. So Atlanta will take a little bit of extra caution clearing out backside of B. Kismet, deep cross. Abizi trying to contest him. Bomb still not in a position to get fully planted yet. And meanwhile, Hydra clears off everything at A. So New York have a multitude of options when it comes to trying to set up their retake. Yeah, because now you're forcing Draza to overextend and pick up the flank. And Hydra finds his second on the round. So the Tiny Terra's left in a 2v4 down. Whoa, clean shots from Simp immediately after the plant. Can he stay alive long enough? Does he get enough support from Abizi? Sure does. There's another elimination. Skies denies the extra push through and then Kismet finishes things off. That's the cruise missile earned as well as New York will go up to 4-2 overall. And that round all falls into the hands of Hydra. Hydra, man. The fact that he was the island player playing the sole position over towards the cafe. He wins the one-on-one -on -one versus Selium. And then no, and then he knows there's only 30 seconds left. They have to be going towards B. Catches the timing onto Draza. And in the 4v2, even though the Tiny Terrors are able to pick apart two of them to make it a 2v2, everything that you wanted was right in front of you if you were the subliner. Skies finds one. You set up Kismet for the final. And now you have a cruise missile to work with. Towards the later half of this game, Subliners are starting to pull away. Even though Sib is sitting at 0 6, they're playing 3 4, still dominating. Yeah. Kismet close, personal. SMG in hand. BZ denied. First blood tallied once again. Stun also tries to break down the doorway. And oh my goodness, the hit fire nearly good enough. The wall banks from Skies cannot confirm the trade. We'll stay at an even 3v3. 3v3 now. And Hyde just starting to work his way up through B. He is going to be the bomb carrier. Might have got some great COD timing as Draza's not going to be able to spot him. So the bomb is going to get planted for free. And this is where you would want Kismet to be alive. Because just in case anything hits the fan, that cruise missile can save you this round. Stun's out. Selium denied at dark. And now Sky okay. knows he can rotate back over. But Sib, it's a heck of a way to get your first two eliminations. Want to make it three? Oh, sure. <laughs> over the top of the concrete barrier. No worries. Wow, clean, crisp shots from Sib, and now you've got map point from New York. Yeah, he must have heard me say, yeah, Jay, don't worry about it. I know I haven't put spawned in yet, but I'm going to close out this round for my team. Straight beams coming in out of young Sib. Finds three on the round, all gunny, all snapshots. As now the subliner is able to chain three rounds in a row to put them at game point. And keep in mind, they still got that cruise missile. So if yep. you are Atlanta phase, you can't go beat. We got it. Try to take cafe control. That seems to be the case. But all the team shots. Draza able to convert onto Sim for her first blood. Hydra gets mantled up top. But the numbers so good here for Atlanta. Sky's down low. Kind of watching almost the same thing. Just a little high-low setup here. And Atlanta's going to read that, hey, this is a wide open site. And they all see the door pop. So they should know that someone's playing inside. And yep, there's Sky's drops. The only player they don't see is Hydra, who I don't know if he actually saw Draza sneak through yet or not. I definitely don't think he saw Draza, but at least finds a freebie onto Simp. Draza's there for the trade. And now it's Kismet left in a 1v3. Makes it a 1v2. So has a lot of time to work with. We're just going to hop the bomb. Surely Cell checks this. Surely. Okay, he does. All right. Like the idea, but Atlanta not going to let that one go by. So they get a third round, but like you call it still, when do we see this cruise missile called out and will it have more success than it did on Skid Row?
Yeah, now subliners need to figure out what they want to do on their attacking round now. Because you can open up that B site. Atlanta Phase have the info that you have a cruise missile, so they're going to be playing in towards the ice cream, potentially towards the back wall. But if you can invest that cruise missile nice and early to at least force the repositionings from Atlanta Phase to open up either site, that might be the play call. Not even try to get a kill with it. Double stack through dark. VZ crossing angle. Familiar from a couple of rounds ago, but it's just damage tallied. Simp up top. Can they find a way to maybe catch New York a bit off guard from this forward position? Abizi still playing over the top of A and selling him. To, like you mentioned, not going to opt to play over towards Waterside. He has to play inside Cafe. Yeah, you got to play indoors. And keep in mind, that bomb carrier is going to be towards the Water Street side. So how long does Kismet wait before he decides to invest this cruise missile? As he's working his way over towards the treehouse side. All right, it's time to go. go. It goes all the info around the map. You're going to force all of Atlanta face indoors and this might be the opportunity where the subliners can do exactly what they just did, but they're going to actually take their ground, push up that left side street. And they're going deeper, but oh, Skies nearly gets caught. Gets over to Patio, fine. Sib over the middle of the map also, kind of keeping Atlanta at bay, but maybe the bigger news here is that FaZe has stayed completely alive until Draza tries to reclaim some lost ground, and it's Hydra who gets first blood. 23 seconds on the clock, and there's still not an entry to either of these bomb sites yet. Sky's still working for it. Shots good by Abiz, he tries to slip away. Hydra. Looking for more. Selium inside cafe. Shots are perfect in Atlanta. Survive through the cruise and stay alive in the map five. That was just a perfect setup right there from Atlanta phase. They knew that that cruise missile was not going to get a kill. But the ground that was not being watched was Water Street. They instantly take from cafe right back to ASD. You basically trap all of the subliners on that side of the map. And with only 25 seconds left, you saw the subliners. They had to get a move on it. It's just the only fortunate thing. The site that they wanted to go to, that's where majority of the Atlanta Flays players were. As Atlanta Fays withstand that cruise missile. Stay alive in this search and destroy a little bit longer. And now you're starting to feel it if you are the subliners, man. You're Absolutely. starting to feel it. You need to try to close this one out. Absolutely. Stun lands. Kismet gets right in this early cross. A BZ tagged up, though, at range. It's Sib shots that kind of keep him off the angle. And that means that there could be some mystery of Kismet backed up or not. Still playing forward though, but Atlanta need to dissect this situation they commit to be. And because they did spot Kismet on the cross, so you don't want to get aggressive in towards Broken. Potentially lose that trade fight. They're just trying to keep him at bay in that position, but play call might be just to wrap back over towards the cafe area. It's already 40 seconds knocked off of the game clock. They're still just trying to figure out where yeah. Kismet is. Yeah. Nades out. Abizi trying to check. His mid not going to get surprised by this push. And yep, he gets first blood. Could he get more than that? Wants it. Dancing with the devil here, but stays alive. Support from Sib. Make sure that this is not a concentrated effort. Hydra now through mid map. Oh my, this could do it. Sib and Selium, last two left in a 2v4. Kismet just finessing forever. Oh my goodness. Hello. There it is. Pistol for the kill and Selium drops. New York wins both search and destroys and takes down Atlanta, the only other team to do that, Toronto. And now all of a sudden, we definitely have a clearer picture of our top four. And the subliners just came out swinging in the S and D game mode. 6-0 in map number two and then nice little mid game adjustments going from both these teams, but a 6-4 to close it out. Walk away with the series 3-2. And I don't know about you, Alan, but Slasher might be the GOAT. <laughs> he literally called it on his interview like New York are going to win this series by winning both search and destroys and they completely iced up man we're talking about a team who barely plays invasion the only SD that they have yet to find a positive record on you take down the best team in the game at it and it was all on the back of what Hydra and Kismet were able to do yes. man like they were just making so many plays around the map. Hydra threw the pinches. Kismet right up close and personal. You even seen it in that final round. He made the adjustment on the defensive setup. I'm not going to have my back turned to you this time. I'm going to be looking at the bottom broken push, and he finds the first blood. Just wastes a lot of time for a land phase to work one of those sites and just eventually run out of time as the subliners solidify themselves. as definitely, definitely, in my mind, a top three team in the game.
reduces all doubt that may have been creeping in post kind of the major one qualifiers and then in particular what had happened at Boston. So looking like a new threat has now established itself as we throw things back to the desk to close out the weekend. The world champions are back. Subliners are officially a 3-4-5 team against the top dogs. They take down Atlanta in this one. Let's talk about this matchup here, Allie, because uh, this New York squad, they seem to turn on late. Atlanta had them on the ropes, though, throughout this match. Oh, yeah. What a hell of a series on New York Subliners. For them to start the way they did at the beginning of the season, to now be here putting Atlanta to a game five and ended up closing out two search and destroyers versus our arguably best search and destroy team in the game, other than Toronto Ultra, was it extremely impressive and if it was it was off the back of Kismet I have to give him my MVP for this series simply I mean that map two eight and no you go into that map number four 26 and 17 he was the guy making the plays and then you move into this invasion he gets the streaks he's 10 and 5 I mean there's nothing the Bulldog cannot do name was last time you saw the subliners they had to get the reverse sweep against the Royal Ravens this time they were in control of both of the searches with a dominant 6-0 in that game yeah. too what is the difference between them and Atlanta because Atlanta is a very good squad. Very good squad. New York is clinical at s and I mean, I was geeking in the back watching these guys play. Just the adjustments that they make. So, like, they're good at every single search and destroy map. Invasion was the one that gave them a little bit of problems setting into this qualifier. Well, they played it back-to-back -back series. They win it both times. And they made adjustments from their last win that they had because they knew FaZe had watched them. So, what did we see? One of the most beautiful rounds in this game. It's 3-2. Uh, to two. It's the swing round. We see they give up B-Site entirely. Kismet's watching in the cross and they throw they do these little things like they throw a trophy behind tractors so they know if phase goes to throw a trophy it's going to blow up yeah. we're going to nade it retake pinch at the exact perfect time hydra is going to be the guy leading the charge they just put their teammates in the perfect pos for positions to find success they're a very good search team man and this is why they won a world championship you saw it throughout the series ali none of that would have been possible without winning the game four on skid road to get that second search in the yeah. mix what was the difference maker on that map because i feel like these these two teams were so evenly matched in gunfights. It was the fundies, honestly. It was just New York was always on that consistent rotation. Atlanta Skies, Bays had yeah. the back foot throughout the entirety of it. You saw in that first graph that we watched as the hard point moved on, it was that one, that first P2 that they early rotated, yeah. to, as well as one of those P3s in the second half. All right, so New York doing all the right things tonight, and they've got their bulldog on the line. It's your monster winner spotlight with the one and only Kismet, who I have now named that location where you lay down on B Street. That's the Kismet spot. Whenever I'm playing, my friend. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I got a spot after me. That's yeah. Good. That's good. How's it been, my guy? Because it seems that in Search and Destroy on the day, I saw you at a 1.7 coming into this match. It might be even higher at the end of this match. What has been different this year for you in particular in Search? Um, I think I'm just going back to my my roots. I'm an S&D kid at heart. That's where I came from. And I think the biggest thing for me this year is I'm just like, taking timings i'm not really playing scared i think before i was playing a little bit more like okay guys like i'll hold crosses let me play slow like this game i'm making a lot of more plays with paco and it's it's showing i think absolutely okay staying on the topic of search and destroy mount number two high rise could you walk me through sort of the game plan because it's not often you see two titan teams like this go up and one of them six out the other one yeah, I mean, game plan wise, I mean, I'm not going to give away every little thing, obviously, oh, yeah, yeah, but we yeah, just yeah. we just studied their game plan and we tried to make adjustments to our strats to theirs. And I mean, I think it just played well. I think regardless of we six of them, they were playing that map really good. We were just catching them, like catching the scammers and stuff like that. And we were scamming less. So it showed way more, I guess, in the score line than like the actual gameplay. But I don't know. I just kudos to us to like how we're playing right now in SD. I think we're playing really well off each other, which is the biggest shift that we've had lately. Like why our SD's like been improving from like already good to really good. Uh, Kismet, you guys have been getting so much better throughout this stage. Congratulations, especially on a big win. Uh, in the past, you guys have found a lot of success against Atlanta FaZe. You know, they're a tough team for people to beat. Only Toronto has beat them this year, and now you guys. Why do you think that is? Why do you match up so well with them? Uh, I mean, we just like playing good teams. I think they play the game fundamentally correct, and it just makes it less chaotic, I guess. Like, they're obviously good, and it's one of those things where I love a bang out, and that's what we, you know, when we play them, it's just chows and chows and chows, and, uh, I don't know. It's just a good. It's a good match with them, and I don't. I don't know why it's meshed well. Just I think it's just two good teams, and we're just going at it. Hey, Kismet, I just want to shut what's going down in the chat down immediately. Sib had a rough game one, only eight kills. He only had three kills in that final search. They all came from the same round. Can you explain to the chat how sometimes you just have to play your role and not worry about KD? Oh, yeah. 
I mean, we, we that's something we, we strive around here. And we try to tell Dante that too. And it's like, if something goes wrong, it is what it is. Like, just bounce back. And like, I told him after map one, and I said it kind of said it, it was map one, they beat us and we kind of got smoked. But map two, I was like, just punch them in the mouth. Like, if th this is where championships are like, championship teams are made, and we just have to answer. And we did that. And I mean, I'm not going to lie, in the, in the map five, like, that three piece he got, I was like screaming, I was like, get the three piece, slam him, slam him. <laughs> and he's like, he looked at me, he's like, yeah. Yes, him up. So it was, it was good. Sick. It yeah. se seems to work when New York is hyping their teammates. They do big things. Kismet, we'll let you go celebrate with the squad. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. At the start of the week, we had them outside of our top four. I think they're officially into the top three as New York gets a win over our number two seed, Atlanta. Only their third of the season. Let's break down the whole day, though, as we had three matches on the day, starting with a very young-looking man named Clayster and the Royal Ravens, who are just able to... Get the job done today. Alex. That's a world champ that you're talking three about. Time, three, three time, time, time world three champion. Three time world champ against the Seattle. Under Spurs the age of 32, by the way. An elite point. leader as well. And great hair. Leader. Yeah, great hair. I, I mean, great nails. Looks I mean, good in necklaces. Yeah, I mean, he was on one of the best rosters. I had a BZ and Simp on it back in the day. I mean, they had a fantastic showing versus the Seattle Surge today. The biggest takeaway for me was the fact that they were able to win every single respawn in this series. Of course, the yep. Surge Destroy could use some work. They allowed RCDs kind of to do whatever he wanted. <laughs> went 14 and 3. To hats off to Alec, another world champion. But I got to say, for Carolina Royal Ravens, they've now expanded their map pool and their feeling more comfortable when it comes to respawn. Is it so, blow? Oh, sorry. Is it what? Is it blow it up mode for Surge? That's what someone in the chat just said nameless. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Really? I mean, they, they clearly Illy was a big factor towards their success. Uh, the Surge and Destroy obviously still look pretty decent on that terminal, but the respawns, I mean, they are very far behind the rest of the league right now, especially when it comes to that hard point. The last iteration of this roster wasn't particularly great at hard point, and this one has only gotten worse while everybody else is improving. So Surge Camp has a lot to think about. Surge definitely missing Illy. Boston, though, coming out with a win over Rocker, as Rocker is still winless in our major two qualifiers. And I have terrible that. news if you're a Rocker fan. You play Friday, first match of the day against Atlanta Face. Well, good luck uh, on that one, Minnesota Rocker. Uh, you know what? They did get top it's four, game though, five. So they're still a top team, so maybe it could go to another lengthy series. But on the flip side, I do want to tap my hat off to Parisa specifically from the Boston Breach. We go into this series as a .64 in Search and Destroy. They get to that game number five, and who is it? p Dog going 9-2 and two in that Karachi Search and Destroy. 6-1 and one victory over the Minnesota Rockers. Parisa still got it. Boston and Slasher celebrating a much-needed win. This is just their fourth on the season, and it should be good enough to jump them up the leaderboards. The admins have been cranking the numbers behind the scenes. Let's display them for everyone at home. Where are your top three? And where is my Boston Breed Squad? Number eight? Show it to me. I dare you. <laughs> they moved up. No, they're still at 10. It says that the Gorillas at four and nine oh, is better. Up. But I go by match count, which would put the breach above Gorillas and Legion. So I need someone to explain how this all works to me. I mean, listen, there's going to be a lot of movement in this leaderboard, right? Like, True. Yeah. It's Seattle oh, Surge are probably going to fall a little bit more. They just don't look great. Heretics as well. And then you talk about teams like Legion, Breach, and Ravens. They are improving. So this is going to shift a lot in the coming weeks. Uh, if you guys weren't as smart as I am, uh, there's a points column, which is actually how the teams are sorted. If you use that in the future, it would make sense. You oh, yeah. look like yep. an idiot on camera. <laughs> All right, that's how the standings are working out. But if you're wondering what the schedule is, as we mentioned, Rocker, phase first match. Surge doesn't get easier for you either. Oh you're playing God. Toronto. We got Boston versus Vegas, though, if you want another game five and maybe a Woo! great series between Clay and Texas. Surge faces off against the Gorillas before we get to the subliners. Toronto and Minnesota a second time there on Sunday. Toronto versus Atlanta phase, though, definitely the monster matchup for Ooh, me. Yeah. What else are you excited about on that screen? That is the only one I was looking at, and you stole it from me, so thank you for it's that. It's a very good one. Yes. Agreed. Okay. Is that how we're going to wrap today? <laughs> yeah. That's how we did it here in the studio tonight. Thank you all for tuning in, and remember, week three of the Major 2 Qualifiers kicks off. It's just a two-match day on Friday. We'll see you bright and early at 2.45 p.m. Eastern, just before noon on the West Coast. Set your alarm. Yeah. yeah. AK, okay. let's go. Let's go. Estoy cansado de lo fácil.
falso si les puedo ser sincero oh Por God. eso mi enfoque es solamente en el dinero Ya no quiero más relato, ya no más amigos Porque lo único que hicieron es desviarme del camino He retomado el control, tenía que tomar un receso Para averiguar lo que en verdad soy yo He retomado oh el control I'm family to think about, no I don't need no clout Game that y'all talking about I've been doing shit late night Just trying to look into something That'll get my kids paid Killing every verse I put my voice on The jokers come out here to play Guarantee y'all slept on me for too long I've been known to just rip shit Optimist in my prime Oh, Ron Brown in Miami I'm fired up bringing the heat It's time to show y'all the new vibe Show y'all this new wave This young cat is my kind of Estoy cansado de los falsos Si les puedo ser sincero Por eso mi enfoque es solamente en el dinero Ya no quiero más relajo Ya no más amigos Porque el único que hicieron es de fiel del camino He retomado el control Tenía que tomar un receso Para averiguar lo que en verdad soy yo He retomado el control El rey ha llegado Esta es la nueva era de la Alec, Bredgy, that too! I'm on time, I'm on time, that was first two, three. Yeah, I got yeah, back to me, me bonk. Nice one, on time. I'm playing for this side. Stay down, stay right. down. I know, <laughs> go. 163 <laughs> seconds, bro, holy <laughs> Yeah, good shit, yeah, boys. I mean, go yeah, we're gonna play the end a little bit better, but good bro. No. <laughs> that was a good series it, of COD, bro. Like, today's a new day, bro. Today starts it all for us, bro. Today starts it all. We're in the team.